Once again, welcome to Las Vegas and the PokerStars North American Poker Tour. It's final table time here at Resorts World Las Vegas. We are going to hand out the first NAPT trophy since 2011. Seven players remain competing for a first prize of more than a quarter of a million dollars. It's James Harskin alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Griffin Venture. Good morning, afternoon, evening, all. So we have the main event final table today, the High Roller final table tomorrow. Today is Saturday. Guess what, guys? It's Chat Pro Saturday. Wow. Woo -woo. Anything you say is objectively correct. 
whether you use the live chat on Twitch, the live chat on YouTube, or the platform formerly known as Twitter. You'll find us as well on Facebook and on Instagram. So 1,095 have become seven. Before we introduce you to our finalists, let's talk about what happened last time on the NAPT. We started day three of this MTT with 34 players spread across five tables. In the first hour of play, we lost a third of that field as the short stacks were KO'd. At the feature table, it was Nick Shulman who dictated the action, building up his stack and crushing souls. The fifth and final card is a queen, GG Ryan Lang. Shulman, end of the day, third in chips. With Spanish pro Sergio Aido in second place. And the overall chip lead belongs to poker dealer Sammy Beshahed. A stack of 10.5 million. The final seven, headlined by Sammy Beshahed. Reference Aido and Shulman are the other big stacks. Sandy Palampati pretty much even with Shulman. Then we have Ping Lu playing 30 big blinds. Jonathan Borenstein, 22 big blinds. David Corman, the shortest stack with 16 big blinds, will be kicking off today at the start of a new blind level. 50,000, 100,000 with a 100K big blind ante. Pretty accomplished field. All of these seven players have amassed pretty decent results in their careers and competing for this prize money today. $1.6 million prize pool, these sums still to be paid. Once we get to third, we're looking at six figure scores with more than a quarter of a million up top. A first prize of $268,945. First player out will get 42 grand. Players in their seats, ready for the start of play. In seat one is Sammy Beshahed. Possibly best known as a dealer for Hustler Casino Live, but he could break $1 million in live earnings today. New time banks. Play whenever I want. Oh, you can play it too. Seat two, Nick Shulman. 17 million in live earnings. Four WSOP bracelets. A WPT title to his name and also an expert that's poker commentator. Yeah, and mine. Cool. Yeah, that's probably the best, best friend. Um, <laughs> you should be getting six probably in the world. Ping Lu has 2.5 million in winnings and a 58th place finish in this year's World Series of Poker main event. Yeah, he plays he's, 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 he's too good to be invited. David Coleman has attended several high stakes tournament series in recent years, has notched up nine six figure payouts in his career but lacks an outright victory. Looking for a W here today. Tonka energy. I heard you talking about the Ritz. Sandeep Palampati comes from New Jersey, but is planning to move to Las Vegas. Likes MTTs, likes cash games, likes riding a Harley. People running away with money. Sergio Aido, very well known to those of us from Europe. A regular on the European Poker Tour, a UK IPT champion, $16 million in live tournament earnings. Won a super high roller in Monte Carlo four years ago. And then there is John Borenstein. I looked at the stream because I'm, I was like... Got eighth in the World Series of Poker Colossus, outlasting 21,000 players. 2.3 million in cashes throughout a decade. I think I know who took it, but... Someone took it? Wow. And I know who took it too. Confirmation. Who took, guy who's no longer at the table. Uh, yes. The players are going to get additional time bank cards I mean, for the, the start of the final yeah, table. They received six at the start of play yesterday. The they bagged the cards they didn't I use, I and now they're getting an additional just, six just, cards at the start of play today. These are mine. I know. I'd like, I like, those are not your time banks. No, he's not even a slow I agree, Kale Barton, watching on YouTube. This is a strong final table. It might have been on accident. He was. It was not. That's right. I mean, you know. How many time banks you have? That's true. Uh, but two or four. He was hammered. 
It was. It, it, was, it was the coffee cup, but it was all like. I know. It was all dead. Oh, now it makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they, but the, the, they went to that man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we are ready to go. So blinds are 50k, 100k, 100k big blind ante, 75 minute blind levels. We play down to a winner today. I was like, I was going to say like you felt it. You didn't. I, I felt it. Like, you didn't know hard no. Yeah, no, but this is hand one. I knew by yeah. hard no. Knew. Uh, that's where I was at too. But it was. It felt pretty obvious to me. Even though I wouldn't do that, I, I kind of respect it. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Pocket tens for Sergio Aido, starting this final table, second in chips. Opens under the gun to 200,000. Yeah, Sergio, definitely going to be one to watch on this final table. Certainly a very familiar face from the EPT circuit. We're used to seeing him a lot out there. A lot of deep runs, high rollers, main events. Queen Jack suited for Ping Lu. Flats on the button. Jack four. Sandeep Palampati in from the big blind, and we're going three way to the flop. Oh my god. Jack ten four on the flop. Looks like we have a cooler at the very first hand of this FT. Palampati with two pair, a set for Sergio Aido. This is so sick. This is the actionist flop they could have possibly put out there. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for Palampati not to go broke here. 40 big blinds, you know, <laughs> this is going to be played as a bet call from Lou on the button here, which is going to create this opportunity for Palampati to check raise in the sort of area of around a million plus. Yeah. And then with three million behind, you know, you can't really get away from two pair. I guess the four of clubs is the only way this could have been sicker. So yes, Lou with one club, but has paired his jack, does indeed call Aido's continuation bet of 300,000, giving Palampati the opportunity to make a move here. Yeah, it's just a scenario where it's going to be so important to protect this particular kind of two pair on this texture against two opponents. You know, all those king-queen, ace-queen, eight-nine suited type hands you don't want to just give a free card to. It's a very exposed two-pair. Yep. And uh, Edo's just licking his lips knowing he has... Oh, literally licked his lips. Yeah, effectively the stone nuts. Probably would have seen a squeeze from the big line with pocket jacks. So is going to be aware this is going to be... Something like pocket fours or maybe jack ten a lot of the time. Probably doesn't think a lot about jack four very often, but when it is suited, would be something that players will be third man in for the one big blind. And since Sergio probably thinks that he's going to be strong a lot of the time here, wants to probably get it in. 1.6 million. No point in trying to trap. Ping Lu is going to be like, what? <laughs> Top pair, no good, I guess. Later. So, Palampati made it 900,000. Sergio Aido has made it 1.6 million. Probably so excited to start this. Final table, a great opportunity for Palampati, and just the first hand is just being put in it right now. I mean, it's not really the sort of board people are going to be semi bluff re raising with. Mate, does he ever get away from it? Well, the other thing is, is Sergio, what Sergio is repping is. Is frankly always better than than what Palampati has. That's what I mean. Ado wouldn't yeah. be three betting this flop with aces, kings, or queens, or ace jack. Would just be calling the check raise. I think isn't just going to want to get in forty big blinds. So Palampati is a little concerned here. Certainly. Oh, Palampati moves all in. Gets snap called by Sergio Aido. And there is a 95% chance that Palampati is KO'd on the very first hand of the final table. Yeah, remember, a jack was folded by Ping Lu on the button. So big, big trouble for Palampati. No backdoor spades. Yeah. Single out. This is an ICM nightmare.
Maybe when he wakes up, the real funnel table will begin. <laughs> Maybe we're just a part of his nightmare right now. Spin your token. <laughs> Only the Jack of Diamonds on the river will save Sandy Palampati from elimination. I think the Eight of Diamonds means the Jack of Diamonds could potentially come. That is how it works. It's on its way. It's in the vicinity. Are we going to get a one-outer here? No. And Palampati is eliminated. Cash is for $42,000. Seventh place finisher in this NAPT Las Vegas main event, and Sergio Edo taking the chip lead now with 11 and a half million. The taking of Palom, one, two, three. And I guess one thing we should highlight is the laddering for David Coleman, Jonathan Borenstein, and Ping Lu, who were all shorter stacks at the start of the final table, Griffin. Yeah, ideal start yeah, for those short <laughs> stacks, but a very unfortunate oh, turn it. of events for Sandeep Palom Patty. Very, very unlucky. Never how you want to start a final table. Good. Best. Well, by finishing the final table. <laughs> Hand one. All right. Good for everybody. Yeah, I'll take it. I got Jack, too. Which I'm, box is From I'm this distance, David Coleman looks like Ryan Reese. I'm mad at it. Yeah, good sure. I'll give you that. But you know, you know the rules. Oh, yeah, I guess. I'll give it to you because it's Chat Pro Saturday and you are a glorified <laughs> Chat Pro. <laughs> that's why, the, that's why the, the people like me is because I, I represent them. You are them. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Ash ahead, going to open under the gun, plus one here. The ace-10. Did request to deal the final table. We said, no, you got to play. <laughs> Round two, Aido in the big blind with queen five. He folds, raise, and take it. Oh, this is okay. boring. Sorry? Is that okay? No. One whole hand without an all in. For sure. Two, four, six, eight. Wearing the hustler shirt. Good company, man. What is it? How much you got? Uh, ten. Eight. All right, guys. Let's do some shit. So we've got a 112 big blind stack, a 107 big blind stack. Everyone else below 50 bigs, with Lou and Borenstein hovering around the 20, 25 big blind mark, and Coleman playing 15 bigs. Can I read the first Chat Pro Saturday comment? Would love to hear it. Alejandro Abad Pablo says. And that's why you don't call Jack Four at a final table playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars, kids. And we have to say, yes, thank you for your comment. Yeah, he's totally right. I also feel like a child now because he called me a kid. Is that working? <laughs> it's strange. Powers of Chad Pro Saturday. Folded um, to Coleman on the button, ace six of diamonds. Out of 15 big blind stack, Griffin, what do you do here? Yeah, I mean, it's just such a plus EV shove. 900. And that is effectively what he's doing by putting in 900. Whoa. And it gets through. The only one that has the rail? Am I the only one with railbirds? Uh, my wife on the way. I got, I, got, I got like two or three people on the way. People on the way. Didn't you see what happened on the first hand of the day? They need to get here. It's only got 19 bigs. Ash and uh, Lynn. Maybe George. Wow. You're just claiming Ash for like that? Yeah. I am. <laughs> Ash is Swapman. He's got the only piece that that's out. Okay. I don't even know they had these. I'm going to do this to make it easier for counting stacks. And we thank you. Action starts with Nick Shulman. <coughs> oh, what a boss. Look at him. Look at that jacket. Face 10, body 200. 10. Fashion sense 10, poker sense 10. Charisma 10. 10. Voice 10. So it's a raise from under the gun with ace three of diamonds. Looks like it's been forwarded to the blinds. Orenstein giving up the small blind. Sammy Beshahed with queen eight in the big. So Sammy's wife, who is nine months pregnant, 
has driven in from LA today along with his father-in-law to watch him play this final table. He started as chip leader, but on the first hand of the day, he moved into second place by virtue of Aido knocking out Panampati. Really hope we don't hear a splash coming from the rail today. Yeah, is it nine months to the end? Uh, it, it, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it does mean that she is imminent. Uh, Nick Shulman wins that hand with a continuation bet on the flop. Four hands played at this final table. One elimination so far. I want Miracle River cards, not the Miracle of Life. What you got, Ping? 2.6. I have just under two. Do we know that Sammy's family already drove in from L.A. today? Because if they're just starting now, they may not get here in time. The traffic can be a little rough on the weekends. And I hope there's no reason why being stuck in traffic would be difficult for you. Like being pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I have been informed they are already here. Very Nick, good. You got like 4.5? Yeah. Everyone now guaranteed the better part of 55K as we see David Coleman fold. Sergio Ido is out. Borenstein gives up the button. Besher head in the small blind. Ace four of spades. I like this passive check here from Shulman, respecting the ICM implications of being in hands with Beshahed. Would hate to be limp raised by the Frenchman pre-flop here. So instead, staying under repped. This is a post-flop flip, Griff. Beshahed ahead right now with top pair. Shulman with second pair and a diamond draw. Calls the continuation bet of one hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Not really a continuation bet, just a bet, right? Because it was unraised pre. Eight of spades, pairing the board. Pretty great card here for Besh ahead. Sometimes your opponent will have something like 8x with a diamond, but the times that they do have king x, they've now lost their two, two pair outs. Is going to provide that free card, and I would imagine go for some river value against the perceived king of Nick Shulman. And it will be difficult for Nick, I think, to get away here. That is Especially a pretty reasonable size of half pot. Nick's not loving it though. It looks like an ace and smells like an ace, but you're this strong, you gotta pay it off sometimes. of all six players. Pretty much tied for the chip lead between Aido and Beshahed. David Coleman still the shortest stack, but not that far behind Jonathan Borenstein, both players with fewer than 20 big blinds. And that is a three bet from Sammy Bashahad. Re-raising to 575,000. 
Action back around to Aido. Yeah, you know, this is going to be a pretty important clash because the two of them all those chips are going to need to start establishing sort of a dynamic between the two of them which is the one that's going to pull away whoever has the chip lead is going to have such an advantage in the pots they play against each other so so far big advantage to Aido Fifty K from Bashahead. Pretty dreamy flop for two nines. No, not you're not thrilled about it. You know, usually you expect to see maybe a smaller continue. It's a very sort of cash gamey half pot bet, which is inflating the pot too. I mean, look at the pot now, it's up to three million. That Ooh. that makes up for the stack sizes of, you know, no, there's three players that have less than three million. So you don't really want to be in these kind of pots. You would have liked to have seen a smaller bet. Of course, nines is going to be strong on this board. But, you know, if the turn was a queen or a king and Pesha Head comes out firing with anything over a million and a half, it's going to be tough to continue. And I really like this, this lead from Sergio saying, you know what? This favors my range more. <clears throat> it's going to make it difficult for you to continue. Sam and going to greet the best ahead is just furious. Runs out. <laughs> <laughs> I lost the chip lead. He's, out, he's off to get some pickles and ice cream, probably. <laughs> exactly. So we have a table captain now. Sergio with nearly 13 million chips. Well, 128 big blinds. And Sammy dropping to under 100 bigs. Looking at this lineup today, Griffin, it's very clear that you can point at Nick Shulman and say the most accomplished player in the at the FT. But Aido isn't that far behind. I would say that, that you know, Sergio is probably in some ways more dangerous, like just, just a lot more well, Sergio's tournament playing. experience in the last five, year, five, five years and just playing, you know, really high stakes. He's going to be playing final against tables, yeah. harder players for the most part than yeah. Nick is. Yeah. I mean, not when Nick's playing, obviously, you know, the high roller stuff in the poker go studio. That's pretty tough. But as far as yeah. the average field in America versus the average field in Europe, yeah, uh, it, they are. Sorry. Sorry, America. It's a little softer here these days. Yeah. <sighs> I would be more intimidated and have more well, butterflies be playing against <laughs> Shulman, but I would be more intimidated and from from about Sergio's play. to check down Oof. all the way, I imagine, here. Yes. Mm. You, Griffin said he's not going to check down. No, I mean, he, he, now finding himself at the bottom of his range, he doesn't want to just lose the two sixes here. So I would expect to see a bet, and I would be very surprised. Oh, is that a check? No, it's not. Oh, it is a check. You gave up? Sorry. Okay, okay, I'm wrong. So we get what we wanted, Griffin. Mm. This is a chop pot, and you know what they say. Everyone loves a chop pot. Especially Sammy. Look what this man is doing. So 20 minutes into play. Saying fuck you, Coles. Check down. One okay. elimination so far. He got post flop. He didn't know what to do. He just said, "I'm afraid. I give up." 
saw him make eye contact with me before he opened. He's like, there's a bitch in the big one. <laughs> <laughs> Come for that ass. Yikes. <laughs> I lost a few chips trying to bluff a, a few chips, like nothing. Pocket tens for Nick Shulman opens to 230,000. It's really three tens if you include Nick in the equation. <laughs> Sergio with 8 6 in the big blind. Gives it up. Eight hands played so far at this final table. A reminder, the 5K high roller. Players returning for day two of that one, playing down to the FT today, and we will stream that event tomorrow. Amongst the field in that 5K high roller are 30, count them, 30 gold pass winners. Oh, wow. And not just any old gold passes, the Vegas Special Edition passes. Wow. Which were worth 20K each, so their package what? included a high roller buy-in and tickets to the Formula One Grand Prix next week. Stop. And that's your tickets to rub elbows with Joe Stapleton and James Hardigan. In my case, you can rub other stuff, too. Are you going to go to the F1? Yes. Oh, well. I'll be there. Sweet. I, I've... I haven't watched much of it before, so to prepare, I watched uh, last year's Daytona 500. Uh, I also watched the Indy 500. Hours and hours of car racing I have watched preparing for F1. I'm stoked. <coughs> and Talladega Nights. Talladega, I mean, I've seen Talladega Nights before. I just hope I get to meet Dale Earnhardt Jr. Okay, so big spot here for Coleman. Have to imagine these... 15 to 16 big blinds are going to go in over this raise. The real question is, how is Ping Lu going to respond? As he has the kind of hand that, you know, would be sort of considered the maybe bottom of your call range, top of your fold range situation. You know, if this is ace-jack suited, I think you kind of have to go with it. Ace-10 suited is going to be right on the line. Probably still a call because there are going to be those, you know, King Queen type shoves here, maybe some King Jack suited. But is he really putting in the? He's never really putting in the Ace Nine off, is he, Coleman, in this spot? No. Or Ace saw Eight off, maybe Ace Nine suited. It's Wait, really is close. it never? Is it never Ace Nine suited? I think Ace Nine suited is, is certainly possible. Absolutely. Yeah. But Lou is also not raising super wide in this spot, right? He's going to be be pressured a lot by the players in the blinds. We have another Chat Pro Saturday bit of analysis. Kazile says, my favorite hand is eights. He should go all in. <laughs> That's right. That is correct. It is your favorite hand, and he should and has, more or less, gone all in. This is not a three-bet fold situation ever, is it, Griff? No. Um, what Coleman is effectively doing with this 950 instead of putting in the full 1.5 is in the unlikely event that two other players go all in and then Ping Lu goes all in and suddenly there are three people all in you could consider folding for your six big blinds and finding a nice little pay jump players just do it every once in a while as this sort of small protection against that unlikely event happening and it never happens <laughs> yeah I think that's cheating <laughs> my chat pro Saturday comment you, you should be all in or nothing there's the fold chips for Coleman and now producer on the floor, Lizzie, caught up with David at the start of the day and asked him how he felt about making this final table. Feeling good. I uh, haven't slept too well. Like, I normally don't when I run deep in tournaments. It's kind of hard to sleep, but feeling confident, feeling good. Uh, feeling like I have a lot of experience in these spots, which will help me a lot. So, feeling good. What would winning mean to you? mean a lot. Uh, I actually haven't won a live tournament ever, so I have a lot of experience and 
uh, a lot of success playing online, but live poker has been a little bit frustrating for me. So winning this one to be my first tournament win would be amazing. So just give me chills thinking about it. So yeah, it'd be great. So Coleman no longer the shortest stack, now tied with Ping Lu, 20 big blinds each. Jonathan Borenstein, the low man at the table with 17 bigs. Well, we know Aido's at least got a pair of fives. Yeah, for all intents and purposes, we should expect uh, Besha had not to have a hand to continue with here unless he somehow has the 9 or 10 4 suited. And that's why we do some quick fold. 1.7? Mm -hmm. I noticed you didn't say 4 or 5 suited. Yeah. Smart. Blockers, baby. Oh, smart. Yes. In that case, I do believe oh, okay. 4 or 5 suited was blocked by the 5 on the board. Does someone in the, in the chat, do you mind just writing blockers are real so we can keep that established Ooh. for the rest of the day? <laughs> just, I just need really one. Really testing just, Chat Pro Saturday. <laughs> just, I just need one of you. Come on. The veracity of it. And if you do it, I'll follow you on Twitter. Oh my god, other chat pros are countering saying blockers aren't real. Oh no. Oh no. They're all correct. <laughs> the collider. They're all correct. <laughs> and that's what destroyed reality. You started with 2, 2.1. And the Bornstein bear, the King Jack on the button, wanting to get involved, would have liked to have just gotten a chance on the button here. But instead, with this Lou open, I think rightfully finds a fold, but keeping him in check a little bit. Just checking in on him. How much you got? Okay, I got my eye on you. Got my eye on you, Ping. Oh, is there first rodeos here? They're not putting the cards in the right place here? I got a, I got a question about that jacket. Ooh. Action board, no matter what Nick's other card is. So this jacket that Nick's wearing. Hey, do you think I could afford it? Um, it looks based like on that could be how varied. much I think you, you money you have. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Frankly, no. <laughs> Frankly, no. Two. Is it weird <laughs> if I buy it and then I wear it? Is it as long as I don't wear it like in Vegas? It's probably. Fine, how many right? Foo Fighters tickets do you think it's worth? At least one. Yeah, at least one. I think I'm thinking two to three. You think this jacket's like around fifteen hundred bucks? Yeah. I bought a fifteen hundred dollar jacket a couple of years ago. I bought it a late night with David Letterman jacket, like an authentic one from the crew for, in a charity auction, and I've worn it exactly zero times because I don't. Yeah, wear but you jackets. show it to people when they, they come over. I do show it to people when they it's come over. It's paying for itself. Like, come on. <laughs> And this is bad news for Lou because this check raise range from Shulman is not a bluff. It's going to be, um, you know, better hands in the, the form of King Jack and Jack Eight, and then combination hands that have great equity against the Ace Queen. You know, your Queen Jacks, your Jack Tens. So it's trouble here for Ping Lu, and he's really been put in the blender the last few hands here. Had to make her a really, yeah. Tight fold with the ace-10 suited. Hit a full top pair. But Lou rightfully just calls here. The SPR is not good, but, you know, instead of just getting in it, and that's going to be the card that he's going to have to call off with. Oh, and my hope goodness. he's up against that. The combo hands I was discussing. These runouts have been super wet. Wet.
Love it when we have a mystery card in a hand like this. Okay. Wow. Okay, so maybe Shulman was electing to take that jack and play it as a bluff. I'm a bit surprised. You would think that, you know, having unblocked the rest of the board, it's it's going to be difficult to get a lot of folds when you check race here. So I'm surprised to see him pull up now. But maybe he does have the, the ah. jack-10 hands and the like, hoping to get a free card instead of just blasting into a hand that's going to call. To be fair, we don't know exactly what he's unblocking. Yeah. But I'm just saying, let's say he has jack-5 of hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would have been nicer to just maybe call the 150 instead of, you know, check-raising and finding yourself in this position on the turn. Four fifty. That is four hundred and fifty pounds. Oh. Ping. Dot com. Ping up to twenty six big blinds now. And Shulman dropping to thirty five. Mikey on YouTube says, it's a good day when I'm entertained by three of my favorite commentators. So who else besides Nick Shulman? <laughs> Nick Shulman has dropped down to 3.5 million, 35 bigs. Sergio Aido continues to be on the ascent. 130 big blinds he's playing on 13 million chips. One Stern on Twitch says, Joe promised that Pokier stars would see edit my account with $1,000 today. And because it's Chat Pro Saturday, Chat Pro Saturday Pokier stars will see edit your account. Check your Pokier stars account. And see if it's been see edited. We've already taken care of it. Thank you for your comment. CPS, baby. Chat Pro Saturday. That is a walk for Ping Lu in the big blind. Yes. <laughs> I like how uh, Nightbot on YouTube is holding this comment in case Very it's transphobic. Fun, it says, Nick is the man. We can let that one through. I want to look, but I'm going to see it later. So. Rossinator43 thinks we should have a rebrand. Like Pokia yeah. Stars yeah. sounds Before. better than yeah. Poker <laughs> Stars. Well, by nature, Pokia is Pokia than Poker. Effect every time I want to, instead of saying Ping's name. Lou. Quite like this raise here from Ping Lou. Just really putting Coleman the pressure on him. This sort of high card, mid card combo. It's going to be tough for Coleman to continue with a lot of hands. This is not one of those hands. This is going to play very very easily as I mean, really a call or a shove, but, but much more often a call. And Coleman rightfully does that. 9-8-6. Open-ended straight draw versus top pair. Do you think when they invented poker, they knew they knew it was just always going to be 
top pair versus a straight draw. Top two versus a flush draw. Who invented poker? I think they think the it's French. Andre Pokel. <laughs> right, like all the cards are French royalty, right? Right. And I do think it was pokier at first. Maybe I'm just making that up. I think it was like P O Q U E was the game. Yeah. Poke. Oh, so that's Poke. why he's that on Pokier yeah. Stars. Exactly. It's an old French site. I got it. Coleman sitting on the 18 big blinds to start the hand. 16 behind here. Oh. Curious to see if he plays this as a sort of let's just get this in. A lot of bad turn cards for Coleman's hand. Like that Ooh. one. Like the glove. That is a bad one. It's always coming seven, unless the seven is trying to make it straight. Then it comes to five. I mean, I know it's Chapro Saturday, but this sounds made up. <laughs> After the game, no, it's spread. a new thing. Can someone write it down in the chat, please, and canonically uh, add it to the. After the game is spread through Texas, Hold'em was introduced to Las Vegas in 1963 at the California Club by Corky McCorkadale. <laughs> Poor Coleman. Just when he thought he might win a live tournament, that five came on the turn. Is gonna call here. I don't blame him. Oh. Too high up in your range here. You're just hoping for a brick river and Ping Lu to shut down. Oh wow. And that is a brick river, but I don't see him powering down. It's a shame that Lu doesn't have 10 sub because then he'd get paid the ultimate fortune bonus for the seven card straight. <laughs> You need the seven card straight flush, don't you, for the for the big one? For the really big one, yeah. Now, do they count a royal with two more cards as the seven card straight flush? They must, right? I did. Oh. That is so, Ping Lu doesn't go for the jugular. No. And this is going to be very difficult for Coleman to fold because, you know, had Ping shoved here, I I think Coleman would be able to find a big fold at a decent percentage of the time because it's kind of it's difficult to just find three barrels here if you're Ping Lu, right? Because Coleman could just have a seven and you could just be blasting in to, to the effective nuts. So, but this bet right here that will leave Coleman with, you know, five and a half big blinds, you know, an opportunity after going through the small blind to have a rotation, if you're wrong, to, to try to build it back up. It's just, it's very inviting. So it's a very, very intelligent, very measured bet here. I think a lot of players would often just shove here for, you know, 60% stack to pot ratio. But Lou says, you know what? My opponent's going to have something like a nine a lot of the time here. Maybe I can just give him a chance to call. Coleman has played one time bank cards so far. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds per decision on the shot clock. You have to play time bank cards if you need more thinking time. I would fool this. People love playing a seven. Thanks to us, really. We popularized the seven. Yeah. I think seven's guy might have something to say about that. No, we popularize sevens guy is what I mean. Yeah, we're like the good place, and the sevens guy is like, you know, the guy that we put the thing on the wall there. Doug? Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah, I think so. So a fold from David Coleman. Great fold. He'll now be playing just 10 big blinds. Ping Lu up to 38 big blinds. Officially third in chips. But most of this final table with below average stacks because we've got two monster stacks. Sammy Beshhead playing 9.5 million. Sergio Aido playing 13 million. Lines going up in around 35 minutes' time. Oh. 
Bowles. 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 And 14. Action fold is a Pinglu on the button. Coleman now, really fortunate for him actually to get this open shove spot from the small blind. This is close to 100% going to be a shove for the 10 blinds. And instead, just limps in. I'm very surprised by this. You know, when you have that nice sort of big blocker, you're going to increase your stack by 20% once you get folds. But instead, might make a little more money as long as the jack or three doesn't come. Man, oh man, are you happy to hit top pair here when you Sergio, do you play it this way? You think Sergio's playing above the rim right now? No, he's just there. His demeanor is so um, it's like a predator or something, you know, like a hawk. But he's staring down the players. Coleman's going to be very comfortable on this ace turn. Sergio has pretty much zero aces in his range, except maybe pocket aces checking back um, pre-flop. So Coleman starts to go for some value, but Sergio wisely gets out of the way. Now, 10 minutes till the top of the hour. And I know that there's a lot of people, specifically in the states of New Jersey, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, who are very excited Ooh, that the three. NAPT is back. Uh -huh. And all I would say to people watching from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Michigan is that it's great that we have the NAPT back. NAPT back. That's right. If you were to take those four letters, NAPT, capital, combine it with the four letters B-A-C-K, capitals, you'd have NAPT back, or one word. I'm... Incredibly glad to have the NAPT back. 225. So, Dog Dog, watching on YouTube, as we've just said, it's great to have the NAPT back, but combine those two words, capitalize it. NAPT back. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to have the NAPT back. And certainly it's a dream of people watching in those three states as the top of the hour approaches. You bluff me, huh? 1.5. Right. <laughs> I'll know before then. Stop talking about the NAPT being well, back. And time, yes. Give us the damn... What? I didn't think that was particularly subtle, but clearly there's always someone. It's always coming ding-dong. But, yeah, but it is Chat Pro Saturday, so... Maybe that person's playing back with us. I have to respect that comment. I don't know what's going on, but I love it. I love what's going on. This is great. I told you, Griffin. Vibes. Griffin represents the average viewer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like just being a fly on the wall with a bit. Eight 
Sorry. Sorry. Jack 10 versus Jack 9 going to the flop. Open ended straight draw for Bechahed. Gut shot for Aido. So funny to me how strong a chance we have right now of a European taken down. <laughs> the NAPT back. Oh, yeah, especially because it took forever <coughs> for someone from Spain to win an EPT. There have been, like, more than 100 EPTs before we had a Spanish champion. There's been, like, six NAPTs, Ooh. and Sergio Aido comes along and, like, he's like, ah, gracias. Um, so that nine on the turn, Griff, it is the straight, the best head, a pair for Aido. And it has gone check, check. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. And Bechahed might check again here. Yeah, on the river. Try to get some bluffs. Once that ace comes. That was a good check. So, God forbid, and I hope we don't find out, but you mentioned that his wife, nine months pregnant, coming down here. If she goes into labor, what does he do? That? What do they do anywhere? Well, no, you, he'll be on the final table, I mean. There was a, I mean, uh, <laughs> this, this tournament has been a roller coaster. I started the, the day one with, like, a lot of disappointment. Made it to day two. Or went, day two went quite well, but finished the day with four big blinds. Came back to 50 big blinds an hour later it, and watched short the beginning of day three. Back the cheap lead at the end of day three. Like, it's a big roller coaster, but that's how tournament is. It's great. I love it. As a part-time poker dealer, what's it like to be on the other side of the table? Uh, it's, it's great. That's what I love to do. That's my passion number one, playing poker. And dealing poker is also, it's a job, but it's also something I enjoy a lot. So both, both sides I'm very comfortable with. So yeah, it's, it's, being at the poker table is what I like to, to, be, to be, no matter where, what side I am. And what do you think of the NAPT event that they put on here at Resorts World? And NAPT did such a great job. Like the structure are great, the staff is amazing, the dealers are amazing, Every, the production is amazing. It's just like just a very well-run tournament and happy to play any Poker Stars event ever, all, all the time. Yeah. They should ask that question of someone that went broke in the first level. <laughs> yeah, he is and just not lovely. someone who made the final table. <laughs> he was just lovely, even production. That was Sammy we speaking uh, earlier before the start of play to our producer, Lizzie. Um, to answer your question, Griffin, I mean, he, I could, think, he could Sean Debit and just play. I think yeah. Griffin's confused which parent is required. I, <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. It is possible. It right. is possible for a woman to give birth without the man being there. And when my daughter was born, I was nowhere near it because I couldn't cope. There so, you go. Okay. Four, four two, four. I would happily have had a final table to play that day. Gotcha. Uh, James couldn't go. He had a lot bets. of TV to watch that day. There <laughs> are four bets happening. Amazing work from Ping Lu there. Um, finding the four bet to 1.4 million. Good candidate that uh, Sourdough suited. The crunchiest of them all with the clubs. So that's a, honestly, that's a really important sort of uh, aggressive play there from Ping Lu. Trying to establish with Sergio. Like, listen, I know you're uh, some sort of Spanish big shot, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm coming here to play. And he's all the way up to 45 big blinds. Not really playing by the rules is Ping Lu. You know, they always say, like, when you're that sort of middling stack, if the chip leader goes after you, you got to get out of the way because you need to worry about ICM. But Ping says, you know what? I got ace-five suited and I'm four-betting you. So, nice hand. Two short stacks at the table right now. Jonathan Borenstein with 14 bigs. David Coleman with 12 bigs. And then there is Nick Shulman sitting in third place right now with 3.5 million. Calling in the small blind here with King 10. Ping Lu, four deuce of spades in the big. Uh, 
and we are going to see a flop, which is king, queen, three. Shulman really gives me sort of sexy angry, his, his kind of like demeanor, you know what I mean? It's just, it's not the most affable presence. It's scary. Once he opens his mouth, you yes, realize yes. it. But yeah. I guess I'm just used to Int seeing him on like cash games where it's more like, you know, not sunglasses and... Bossinator on YouTube says, the problem with me watching poker is it makes me want to play poker. Anyone else relate? That's ridiculous. How that's, can you even multitask in that capacity? I mean, that's wild. I guess we should consider broadcasting poker. Are we starting an online poker site? <laughs> Shulman with King Nine suited on the button. Clubs are really suiting him right now, do you think? And he's got the dog. Well, he's raising it. 225,000 has got rid of Ping Lu in the small blind. David Coleman, the short stack in the big blind. Trey oh. Deuce throws it away. David Foldman. This is what a badass Nick Shulman is. Anyone else wears poker-related gear at the poker table, they look like a tool. Yeah, it's really elevated, actually. Yeah. Way he's wearing it. He can just do it. He just, yeah. Any More other person wearing, like, a spade on their jacket or, like, on their hat, like, any crazy folds. It's like wearing a Foo Fighters shirt to a Foo Fighters concert. Uh, which I'm sure you'll be doing in August. <laughs> I don't have any. I wore this exact the shirt I'm wearing right now to the Muse concert. Really? Yeah, I'm wearing a Muse shirt right now, and I did wear this at the next one, which I bought at the previous one, like a sucker for 60 Canadian dollars. I bought a $75 hoodie once at a Muse concert, so I, that was in 2009. You've worn, you worn it since then. I, I wear it almost. It's the only hoodie I've worn since. Ping Lu, King 10. King for Ping. 2.30. Everybody's favorite time of day. 2.30. Yeah, I actually have to go around there. I have a, I have a dentist appointment. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. 2.30. Tooth hurdy. Tooth hurdy. It's my dentist appointment. Better go. When you did the joke initially, it was like mildly amusing. When you then had to kind Thank of you. underline it in bold italics, it's it stopped it's being amusing. Like, especially because you, because process. you were joking the joke already. Yeah. Listen, people are going to start laughing <laughs> when this comes in. And then what? You'll be vindicated. And then I get a raise. <laughs> and then what? Then you'll be shaking my hand. And then what? <laughs> 1. 1.25 back. He's Jack suited. Last time I had four, I had and I folded. Sergio Edo here. I, yeah, yeah, you don't. The cut off. What? Out cut flopped off. here oh, by yeah. Sammy Bashahead. Okay. Top pair, top kicker. Hi. <sighs> well, this stinks. You can't fold the one bet. Not at all. 100,000 apiece. Eight of clubs pairing the board. Aido oh, may still feel he has the best hand. Yeah, Besha had not wanting to. Um be victim to a check raise here on this turn. Certainly, Aedo could represent an eight better than Beshahed could. So 
so you really don't think you're going to get more than two streets of value here once the board pairs the non-jack. So Besh ahead feeling more com uh, comfortable finding that value on the river. And Sergio is going to bet a blocker bet and sort of designed to, you know, get value from something like pocket nines that would call a very small bet like this. And you're also setting the price against a hand like Ace Jack, but Besh ahead might. Yeah, very, very wise to it. Wow. And going for the big value raise. Wow, how? Well, because of the things we talked, it looks like a, a blocker bet of, of something in the nature of something like tens or nines or a weaker jack, right? And it's it's very rare that your opponent's going to have a better hand than you have here, and you and, and you want to get some value. It's it's a little it's a little risky, of course. You know, as as far as I guess ICM rules are concerned, maybe you're just supposed to call here, but also because you're probably not going to get your raise called by worse a lot of the time. Happiest man in the room. But it's also going to get Sergio cool. guessing a little bit, right? To, to to get this aggressive action on the know. river from your I'd opponent, like to not know what he has. I'd like to be it. You no, know, I'm happy too. I'd like to not blind out of this tournament. <laughs> Orenstein and Coleman, the at-risk players, 12 and 10 big blinds we respectively. Have. We're lucky. We all are. Ace, queen for Lou. Two thirty. Ah. Mouth pain. Two hundred and thirty thousand. But it doesn't work if you say two hundred and thirty. How much do you have, Coles? One point oh three five. Orenstein in the small with nine eight of clubs. Folds it. Reverse last longer. Wait, is that a thing? I can be rich. <laughs> uh, I didn't understand. It's a stupid joke. I'm always keen to repeat it. He okay. said 230. He said I got two more bigs than you, bro. Oh. Is it 130, it's, though? That's a, that's is, that the, is that the time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, two more bigs than you, bro. Right yes, yeah. I have no idea what time it is. It's time to go to the dentist. I, like, I thought it was a solid joke. Yeah. I think I'm Sorry. good. I thought I misclicked. I'll swap with you if you want. <laughs> a few of us uh, <laughs> after the end of play yesterday went over the road to the pepper mill. Where really? they have a policy where they put up their prices I after like midnight, and I love the fact they call it reverse happy hour. That's what I like to You will never know. I guess I'm announcing every bet now forever with weird colors. Yeah. As long as you're not announcing I mean, the NAP, I do it all fine with it. Yeah, like I know some guys are always announced. I mean, it's weird, but now I guess if you do that, you. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't. Yeah. Sorry, if you do that one. I saw exactly what you did because the hand before yeah. you did, you know, you did this. Grab the wrong check. Coleman yeah, these, these doing that these thing. They're similar. Like dyslexic. Five bigs, five bigs, five bigs. Jacks, ten bigs is so nice and finds the min raise. Pretty unconventional. Usually, you want to just shove this in to be balanced. Because you're also going to be shoving the over ace tens oh, cool. and the king queens and the suited aces and the like. Now, I hope Nick Shulman is aware that this hand, a seven offsuit, known as the Spraggy, is a disaster zone. Yeah, I mean, this depending on what Nick does here, it is going to be sort of an, oh my god. Yeah, depending on what Nick does here, it means I'll be changing my attitude moving forward. This hand is amazing. What the hell is going on here? I'm sorry. This is like Griffin. It's... Explain. You seem you seem consternated. <laughs> just, this, this, this hand is so dumb. <laughs> I mean, I, okay, I, I can appreciate the min raise with the, with the the jacks. You can sometimes do that with like the very top of your range, but just like I guess. Okay, I guess Shulman is trying to. He's prepared to play for the ten big blinds, but he'd prefer to over wrap how strong his hand is to maybe get out some folds from something like, like ace-10 that was like min-raising and 
It's just weird. Or like a king queen or something. Like you can't put in 400 and fold for 600 more. Oh, so right. Whoops. I, uh, oh, I, 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 I thought someone would be priced in there, Griffin. No. That was outrageous. <laughs> I wish. I'm sorry, that's a little bit fancy. Very fancy. Say it to my face. You want to talk about my best friend? <laughs> I didn't go for the uh, shove. And Nick went for a I weird re race. I thought at least. You had a fringy one. They're going to be fringy writing a book about that hand. Two big ones. Okay. Got it. It means on the cusp. <laughs> it can go either way. Okay. John yeah. Lee, what's your new <laughs> has a question for you, Joe. Addressed to Stapleton. Uh, John, that's Mr. Stapleton to you. Stapleton, didn't you say yesterday they never show folded hands ever on the stream? So how do we just see the Borenstein folded 8-9 of clubs? No, I actually had a A7. But, um... Rolled very high. Whatever you said is right, John. Sorry, Chat Pro Saturday rules dictate. All right. So it's interesting, Santa, overhearing the chatter um, on the table from, because that's obviously a very interesting hand from Nick Schulman. And he rem remarked about rolling high, talking about sort of randomizing the different I'm ways he was going to play that hand. So, yeah, very fancy kind of play. There is something calculated about it, um, but it. It definitely, when it doesn't go your way there and you put in your opponent, 40% of your opponent's stack with an ace, I, I just, I don't know. I, I think it's the, the worst of the of the three options um, there. This was two. Between, you know, call, I think fold, shove, and that. I guess four options. Two, three, three point three. And now three coming six. out firing with a 3.2x raise with... Not a very good candidate to do so against a player that covers you at the table. I, I don't think Nick's playing particularly well, if I'm being perfectly honest. Too much friendliness. It's, we're playing for $269,000. Can you see the pearls? The what? The, the pearls I'm clutching right now. <laughs> Are they still suited? What is I mean, Nick is so incredibly successful and accomplished and actually literally better than my at me than my own job i just think that uh i haven't liked how he's played some of these hands on the final table and, and frankly a couple of the hands yesterday well you ever heard the phrase that opinions are like uh bum holes <laughs> and you are one <laughs> Lou, yeah. Continuing here for 250k, just the one over card for Lou to worry about. Yeah, playing these tens a bit defensively, which I think is is okay when, when you do consider ICM. Um, four outs for Shulman here. For another bet, and I'll tell you what, if he does happen to find a couple more barrels here, this particular hand for Ping Lu could be a fold by the river. So, a check. okay, so it is going to be a check, you know, a bit difficult to continue here with the 10 8. Opponent's going to have a lot of tens, pardon me, a lot of jacks, and then. You know, you don't block any spade draws or anything like that, so a lot of spades will want to continue as well. Four hundred. This dude on the rail looks like he's waiting around to collect money. Whoever cash is next. Little thirty percent protection bet here from Lou. Just wanting to fold out hands with the high cards and no opp more opportunities nice to bluff <laughs> for Shulman. No, fair enough. <laughs> he wants to ram it. The viewers want to see a river? Huh? So the viewers want to see a river? So do I. I wouldn't mind. Draw to the nuts, believe it or not. Could have made the nuts. Non spade nuts. Don't give me too 
much credit. <laughs> And 25 action will start with Sergio Aido, who still holds the chip lead at the six-handed final table. Action was folded to Sami Beshahed, who's made it 200,000 with Queen Seven of Clubs. Ping Lu, 6-5 suited in the small. Folds. David Coleman, 10-5 in the big. No. Passes. 10 minutes until the blinds go up. 10 more minutes at the 50K, 100K blind level. You die every time. Yeah. Griffin. Bossinator wants to know. 1.385. I want to get in there. I want to get 10-5-0 and 3 do so every time. I'm not here to try to get fifth. I want to win this. But Wants to know. Oh, good speech. <laughs> no, I just like to be quiet if they're talking. Okay. Boss Sander wants to know what makes a punt different than any other all in bluff? Um, if you get called. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Aces for Coleman in the small blind. Here comes a punt. Yeah, and what's great about the, the King 5 limp earlier, small blind to big blind off 10 big blinds that I was a bit surprised by, is that Coleman has now established that he does have a sort of pretty big <coughs> 10 big blind limping range, right? So he can now do that again with these pocket aces. And if Sergio looks down at something like, you know, a King 8 offsuit even, might just shove in these 14 big blinds um, whereas otherwise maybe would be playing a little more defensively, but Coleman's actually going to go for the raise. And I think Queen Jack would have been interesting to see how Sergio would have reacted to the limp, whether he would have shoved or just checked behind. Sergio too strong to fold on the preflop here. Defends with the Queen Jack, and we have a King 10 6 flop. Open ended draw for Aido. Coleman still ahead with aces. Three to one favorite. And Coleman's got, what, 11 bigs behind? Yeah, about two to one stack to pot, pot ratio here. Great spot to bet. You you don't even really have to bet right. that big. Really likely, actually, that Sergio is on board, on base in some capacity with this particular texture, being prepared to call a raise preflop. Going to be a lot of queen jacks, you know, your king nines, ten jacks, hands like that. And is this always just a bet and not uh, a shove? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's two to one in, in the pot, right? There's 600K out there. He has 1.1 million. No reason to shove. You don't want to fold out a 10 or something. You want to bet that 30%, keep him in there. You know, if Sergio even has, like, jack nine of diamonds here, he's going to fold to a shove, but he's going to... He actually shoves it in. Yeah. And, yeah. Aido shoves on Coleman, who calls all in with the aces. And it's going to have to fade an ace or a nine. More spots. Anywhere but Joker stars, I'd say the aces are probably super safe. Six outs for Sergio Aido, six cards. But David Coleman's going to have to fade because he's officially the at risk player here. Four of diamonds on the turn, that's safe. Just a 14% chance that Coleman gets done here. Cards to avoid, aces and nines. The river is a deuce. That is a double up for David Coleman. And it sees Sergio Aido drop down to second place on the leaderboard. Coleman now playing around 30 bigs, pretty much tied with Nick Shulman. Sergio Aido now has fewer chips than Sammy Beshahed. And the dream to win his first Live poker tournament. It's alive and well for David Coleman. Jonathan Borenstein firmly the shortest stack with 10 big blinds. Blinds going up in six minutes. Borenstein in the danger zone. Danger zone! Oh, Griffin, he stole your line. 
I gave it to him. To be fair, I stole it. From Archer. No, 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 no. Your version is a homage. Griffin's version is stealing. <laughs> I didn't even say it, and I'm getting <laughs> eviscerated now. The worse nine, shape nine, my voice nine, is nine, in, the harder it is to do the danger zone. Yesterday was non-existent, so. 230. A lot of ace queens today, and I think a fair few of them I'm sorry. I'm sorry. being dealt to Ping Lu. This is a suited ace queen. The strawberry flavor. The raise is to 230,000. Come around to Borenstein in the big blind, who, as we've established, is the short stack at the table. Borenstein, more like Borenstein. Yeah, you know, not someone Ooh. we've... Oh, wow. I was just going to say, not someone we've talked a lot about on this final table because he's been incredibly card dead. And to finally get this massive hand here for 10 big blinds just in time, it's going to be thrilled to see what Lou calls with. So... All in and a call and a domination situation He's in queen. Borenstein's favor. Oh my god, how can he Why call there? Borenstein hasn't played a single hand. He's a professional poker player. <laughs> you guys have screens over there? You got screens? <coughs> Five Not a good flop. Domination confirmation. Domination average continuation. Mm. Opportunities. Ace, king, holds. Domination, finalization. Borenstein gets the double up. And this is girlfriend Linnea on the rail. Asher Corneth. Corneth there. Don't be so upset, Sergio. Related to Chance Corneth? <laughs> That's Cor Asher Corneth. Kniff. No, I, don't, I mean, I'm getting it. No, no I'm just not There is sure. Asher Kniff as a person. Conniff, C O N N I F F. Is that who it is? How's the call? All right. It is? Okay, thank you. Let's, Let's just call him Asher. Okay. Wow, great First VPIP of the day. It's all you play, is Ace King? It's all I play. I think it's Kniff, you're right. Uh, I'm For some okay, reason, now. that's why I said Corniff, and I was confusing my, my brain. And then I immediately got Ace King. So Asher Kniff. Yes. I've done commentary with him before. Oh, yeah. And his uncle is Frank Kniff. Of Mystery Science Theater 3000. No way. Yeah. I've never watched that, but I oh swear by Oh, my it. God. Griffin. Yeah? It's so good. Yeah? Even the new version of it's great. Usually when they reboot something. 210. And they dust off some old format that was a hit way back in the day and then decide to do it again a decade later. And <laughs> Sound familiar? It's usually not that good. <laughs> But this one is. Shulman's opened under the gun with sixes. Sergio Aido with ace queen on the button. Flats. Yeah, I really like this call here from Sergio. The reason why you don't want to be three betting here is in the event that Shulman four bets all in for uh, the 28 three. big blinds, you're not doing about three. that great against that range. You know, six handed here. Um, and also you get to keep in those dominated hands that are you know, raising like ace jack and ace 10 and king queen, queen jack suited hands like that. In this case, of course, Nick Shulman does have pocket sixes, so it's an effective flip. And Sorry. we are going to have a third Besha head in there. Oh, it's going to come back. Seven six. A good hand. Queen jack deuce. Top, top Faido.
wisely checks, recognizing that this is going to be all over the flatting range. Sergio. Hand of the day, ace queen. Yeah. Yace queen. <laughs> Let me get one of those hand chips. If you don't mind. I can't believe that took me so long to come up with. OCD. Yeah, I understand. What was the what was the mystery I'm cash game used. one that, that I liked so much that I messaged it to you? When you did the same thing, it was like F Fabian uh Fabian, Maybe. no. Fabio, Fabian, yes. yes queen, queen eight. Because <laughs> he had queen eight or something. And he hit, like. I got you. If you guys haven't seen the Mystery <laughs> Cast Challenge, it's a fun show. Check it out yeah. on YouTube. Do it. Tied you over till the big game comes out next year. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll just randomly text Joe some of my favorite lines of his, but he never knows what I'm talking about because <laughs> he forgets them. That was one of them. This will be the last hand. Uh, 50k, 100k. We've just ticked into level 31. Blinds going up to 61.20. Actually, I believe we've changed it to 62.124, uh, James. Good luck with these chips. Holman thinking about doing something with this king three. But decides to fold. There's certainly some consideration. What a fold. Of, uh, well, one no one, one, no fold. one folds with more. Yeah, with more class swagger. Yeah, that was. That and was, more swag than Nick Shulman. Yeah, that was pretty Maybe. great. Just a dollar? You know we're on stream, right? All right, give me a five. <laughs> give me a hundred. Whoa, in case you missed it, PokerStars VR recently became Vegas Infinite, and it has had a major upgrade, offering not just free-to-play poker, but also casino games. And it looks incredible. A virtual cityscape with player suites, luxury casinos, rooftop escapes, and now available, not just on MetaQuest and PSVR 2, but also on Steam without a headset, Griff. You love to hear it. It did look really cool. I saw that trailer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Would you mind? Thanks, thanks. 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 Cool. Big deal, O'Neill says, Vegas <laughs> Infinite Meetup game, when? You know what? I need to get my headset out of the drawer. It's been in there since I moved. And I need to get back into the virtual streets of Vegas Infinite. Quite curious how Shulman's going to react to this button open. Um, it's a pretty disciplined fold there. It's, uh, it's easy to get a little tempted. You can see a little bit of frustration from Nick right now. The final table hasn't exactly gone his way thus far, but I think that was a very disciplined fold. And in this particular situation, I think some of the time, if he did decide to three bet, um, would have faced a shove from a hand like pocket fives. Queen, eight, four. Bez head out flopped. Top pair for Lou. Advantage Lou. That is 160,000. Where'd David go? Where's David? I wouldn't mind one. 
Lou now a 95% favorite. <laughs> there it is. Best you had not going to be really incentivized to bet this turn card. You're going to be ahead of some draws, ahead of the 4Xs that are calling the flop, and you're not really going to be able to fold out a queen or 8X. So a few other straight draws on that flop, like the 6-7s, 7 7-5. Seven, so if Lou decides to go for value, there is a chance Beshahed finds a call when you consider all of those lower straight draws and then your jack nines and jack tens. And that is a very tempting sizing of about 20%. Beshahed quickly folds, recognizes that small size is more often going to be value of a better hand. So we played 30 hands, Griffin. We lost a player on the very first hand of the final table. No elimination since. Just started level 31, second level of the day. Blinds are currently 60,000, 120,000 with a 120K big blind ante. First break in just over an hour. 2.9 behind. What do you have? Good question. Uh, 4.8. Oh no, we're losing the bossinator. He says, my poker buddy just came home. I think I'm going to play with him. It's been fun, guys. Have a good day slash night. So long, bossinator, and thank you for your support. Oh, it's nice to just get a hand like pocket sixes in the big blind where you can just throw in a chip, be super under repped. Well, the action she's seeing is making Stella doubt her strategy. I don't think I three bet enough. It's her contribution to the YouTube chat. He's Queen Jack on the flop. Aido with the best hand. Uncle Jonesy on Twitch says YouTube chat is the upside down. Whoa, 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 Twitch. People in glass houses, dot, dot, dot. No super short stacks, Griff, but we have got Coleman, Shulman, Borenstein all bunched up around the 20 big blind mark right now. Obviously, being at the final table, we've reached the point in the tournament where there is a jump in prize money with every single elimination. Next player out, just shy of 55k, and then 71 grand for fifth, 92k for fourth. Then we hit the six figure scores for third, second, and first. The winner getting just over a quarter of a mil. 280. Four, that's 280,000. <clears throat> Sergio, yeah. He's going to call here, of course, with the ace three. Probably was considering maybe just three betting the ace three here. Putting pressure on that th third inch chips stack of Ping Lu. Does flop best. Two 
240. Certainly think there are some sizes on this flop that Aedo would fold to. Yeah. But 240, I think he's going to be very happy to just continue and hope to get lucky or see some checks. It's actually quite a nice result here for Sergio to be up against a particular hand that is very hard to barrel with. 5-4 suited here. So even though Sergio doesn't particularly like this turn card, he is going to like when he sees a check from Ping Lu, who's waving the white flag. Nine on the river, pair of three still good. And now Sergio kind of finds actually himself at the bottom of his range. So even though he has the best hand, he might find some bluffs on this river. You know, you'd still be beating something like A7 or A6 or, you know. So that's why we see him bet here, trying to fold out something like, say, a King Jack that is going to be very difficult to call here because of all the tens that Sergio should have in his range here. Even a queen isn't thrilled about this pot size bet on the river, right? So I think this is a very smart bet from Sergio Ito, even though it was, in this one instance, uh, particularly unnecessary. Just goes to show the edges that he's going to be prepared to, to push on this final table as he extends his chip lead now all the way up to 11 million. I'm going to test your NAPT trivia knowledge, Griffin, which I appreciate maybe non-existent. Vanessa Six. Selbst. Well, that uh, 2 is a, one of the answers to my question. My question relates to the fact that we haven't had an NAPT three. main event champion since 2011. Two, my uh, question to you is how eight, many yeah. NAPT seven, winners can you name? And I'm going to give you a bit of help. Remember that for two years, in 2010 and 2011, the PCA was part of the NAPT. In 20 what? 10 and 2011. Okay. So how many NAPT winners can you name? Main event winners. You've named one. Vanessa Selbst. And I'm going to give you another clue. There was a former champ in the field yesterday. We had a player who won an event in Los Angeles back in 2010 who was in the final 34 yesterday. Okay, Vanessa Selbst. Yes. Um, Two-time NAPT winner. Jason Mercier. Oh, Jason did not win a main event. He won the bounty shootout event in Mohegan Sun two okay. years in a row. And you can see the power of ICM there. An open shove from King Deuce exactly offsuit for 20 big blinds. <laughs> I had a pretty hand too. Did you have? Yeah, I'm, uh, I don't have the answer, I don't think. I'm trying to think of like maybe some of the people that you, we featured in the <laughs> in the montage at the beginning of, of the players showing I fold, back I up for day three. I opened the three bets in. <laughs> <laughs> what about those P the PCA yeah, those the years? Same. Who won the PCA main event in 2010, 2011? Mike never won the PCA. Yeah. He came second back in 2007. Yes. Okay, that was ages ago. Well, that was an unpleasant fold to hand. 2011. At least you had like 10 9. Same shit. 10 9, nice. I just call. Three okay, tell me. Jack 10, you might have to. Galen Hall was 2011. Uh, Harrison Gimble was 2010. Uh, Tom Marchese won at the Venetian in 2010. Okay. Joe Tehan in LA. Five, We literally watched him play yesterday, Griffin. <laughs> Queen nine for Borenstein in the small blind. Starts the hand with 16 big blinds. It's a bit tricky here. You know, far too many chips to shove. Not a hand you would feel comfortable raising in this situation. And you are limping into one of the chip leaders who can put max pressure on you as far as ICM is considered, with those two other stacks around your stack level. But Bejahed happens to have a hand that has really good playability post. And he's just going to check back, and we'll see. Oh, baby. Wow. Baby. Borenstein flops a boat. Bejahed with a no-good straight draw. 
I guess the less than 1% is running cards to make a straight flush. Very good. And I do not fault Best Ahead for betting here. This is a pretty favorable flop against a lot of ranges. And for Beshahed's sake, I hope he doesn't hit a king or an eight. 125,000 each going to the turn, which is the three of clubs. Take the free card. Rut row. That is 425k. 425k, chunky bet from Bashahead with his no good draw. And not surprised to see Bornstein putting on a little dog and pony show here on the turn. Now that it represents, you know, about 25% of his stack, really wants to make it look like it's a tough decision here. As we established yesterday, Griffin. Slowly, slowly catchy monkey. You established that. <laughs> yeah, one of those spots you're prepared to burn one of those time banks. Not every day you flop a full house on a big final table. Morenstein calls. River card coming. It oh is an eight. God. Yeah, this is really bad news for the Frenchman here. Because you have to think your opponent is going to have a lot of 9x, the occasional queen x, some flush draws. So maybe you don't want to shove. Maybe you do just want to bet six, seven hundred thousand and make an incredibly brutal fold facing the check shove. No, nah, he's, he's, he's going for the jugular here, and he's going to hate life when he sees him go all in for that extra 200,000. <laughs> he best ahead knows that he's just giving away two big blinds here. Wow, indeed. Double up for Jonathan Borenstein. Borenstein like now playing pop. 35 big blinds, and that is a bit of a dent in Beshahed's stack. He drops it's down to 64 one, big blinds. We now have an overwhelming chip leader in Sergio Aido. Yeah, Eight. that's the smile of a man two, who just doubled up on a final table, 1. right? 1.2, uh, 1.39, yeah. Really tough spot on the turn there, huh? I had to think it through. Nick Shulman becomes the shortest stack of the final table. Just shy of 20 big blinds. Yeah, he's going to be a tough out, though. He made a full house. Six three off. Round two, the blinds. Sammy giving the walk. Shaman winning it with nine deuce. That's kind of you know, it's it's a little it's needed. It's nice to to get that, I think. That is either. Haven't been winning huh? many pots over the course of the day to get a walk with a hand as miserable as nine deuce from one of the chip leaders, no less. So it's a big win. I mean, I've had. <laughs> Thank you.
Children with a bit of an awkward high card, low card here with the queen four. It's just going to limp in, which I think is probably the right way to go about things. Just hope to get that Two free flop. Okay. Uh, Lou does have the kind of hand candidate you're going to want to sort of raise three, three to four X because it has such poor playability post. And there's going to be a lot of limp folds from Shulman. And a lot of limp folds of hands that are dominating you, like the queen four, but doesn't go for it. And instead, we see a flop of jack 10 three. Start the call. That and a fold. Yeah, I know they're small pots, but these these little momentum jabs are, are, are really going to help Shulman get back on track. You know, a walk, and then winning a small blind, a big blind battle. You need these little pots to get things going. Back up to 2.8 million. Steam with ace four of clubs. Ten bets two hundred and fifty thousand. Four point two. Let me explain how things work, BG. If you want to make an accusation, you have to back up your accusation with evidence. No one should have to prove their innocence. It's your job to prove guilt. Not everything flies on chat pro, Saturday, Griffin. I don't know what he said. Bash ahead. This is a nice little three bet here, putting pressure on Bornstein, not shaken at all by the fact Jonathan's been tight. And that's a nice little pot to get after, you know, getting cooler yeah. quite hard <laughs> to find right, a late fair. three bet against the opponent fair, that fair. just doubled up through you. What do you want? Sack gray. Yeah. Get Lucky Ass wins the game. Big game going to be televised. 2024, thank you for your question. Obviously, we'll be able to provide more specific information nearer the time, including broadcast outlets around the world. Uh, yes, I do know if there was a roll flush in an APT, Schneehund. It happened in Vegas in 2010. I believe it was during the Bounty Shootout High Roller event. A player called Chris Moneymaker, and someone tells me that's actually the guy's real name, although I refuse to believe it. Come on. He made a roll flush. The only reason I believe that that might be his name is because people that are named Schumacher, it's because they're shoemakers, right? They're from generations. Yes. So. I believe Geldmacher is the original name, Moneymaker. Okay. And yes, you're right. It was a, a Germanic name that was then anglicized, and that's what the family did in Europe was actually make coins. That wasn't a bit, by the way. That's true story. So why'd you just wink at me? <laughs> Griffin. <laughs> Fifty. 
Oh, Steve Brody. I can't help you, buddy. I'm sorry. Ooh, so this is quite interesting. Hijack against cutoff here. Shulman with the quite strong six-handed hand with the ace jack. Lou going after Shulman with the very weak ace five. And this is going to be a really big sort of inflection point in Shulman's final table experience. This is really the most important hand of the final table for Nick. Can he find a four-bet shove with the ace-jack? If he doesn't find a four-bet jack shove, can he find a flat for, you know, a pretty small three-bet size? Right, three and a half would be 750K. So this is effectively about a two and a, less than a two and a half X three-bet. Two and a half x three bet. It's tough, man. I've been in spots like this, and, and it's hard not to make tight folds because you would just hate to bust here. And I think that's what's being le leaned to. And nice uh, spot selection there from Lou, able to fold out as good a hand as Ace Jack. I don't think that Shulman will be folding the Ace Queen, so really found the top of Nick's full range. Uh, really nice result there for Ping Lou, and just unfortunate that. Shulman couldn't pull the trigger, but it is easier said than done. Why well, things are going, Griffin? There's a strong chance we get to the end of this level in 49 minutes time. Still six-handed. I defer to the widget. Whatever the widget says. Someone did a printout. There it is. There is a printout of the widget here. So where are we? We are at the 60k, 120k blind level. So that's here. So right now, we should have 5.5 players. We have six. We have six. Wrong. So at Wrong. the start of the next level, we should be down to 4.4 players. Wow. Shulman hoping for a little more luck with the ace-10. Raising under the gun. So far, so good. What's up? Eight, deuce, deuce. That's right, Tom. The widget has no time for rounding. By leaving it to one decimal point, it sounds like there's actually some real hard science going on rather than someone just guessing a number. One sixty-five. Do you know what Ping had against you? Hot mic alert. Shouldn't he ask a fair question? And as it's Chat Pro Saturday, we'll address it. Monkey's out the box. Look at that. Where? The BVB pod. You see Nick Shulman. Move up into fifth place on the leaderboard. We're on the widget in just a moment, but first we're going to check on the 5K high roller. It's day two of that tournament. Did you enjoy when he was betting? And among the players the at the tables on day two are Poker Stars pro Maria Konnikova. And who's that talking to? Her? It's the bearded wonder that is Tonka. <laughs> Legend. Sean Morgan. Sean Morgan. Not, doesn't like being called an old man by the guy next to him. Faraz Jacker in a very fetching hat. Hey, that's my hat. Actor and poker player Arden Cho, who competed in the big game a couple of days ago. Love Arden. Great actress. Great player. And one of the big game OGs is in the field. Loose cannon, turn poker pro, turned... Big game judge and coach, Nadia Magnus. Spice. So yes, Shanihund, your question about the widget, it's simply a mathematical formula. 
Number of chips in play, assuming a 50 big blind stack, how many players should you have? It is literally uh, how yeah. tournament directors oh, like a, try and protein. estimate how long I tournaments will take to play. It'd be cool if they had a graphic just like on the, on the table that showed everyone's stack. Just... Yeah, we get one. The next, um... It's coming. It's coming, yeah. Can't be that hard. Not even until, just like on a screen behind us or something. They show the stacks on there? No, I'm saying if they had that. You know what's weird? Like Triton is so good with the hand histories. But also now you can't just punt it off in peace. It's like <laughs> instantly everybody like reading every hand. <laughs> That's a good point. I, I love takes away some value. Huh? I love punting it off on. I love to punt it off too. Discreetly, discreetly punt yeah, yeah. it off and discreetly. be like, you know, they got me. Yeah. <laughs> make up a hand. Yeah. Aces yeah, versus yeah. king. Ace king to aces. What are you gonna do? I'm lucky. Yeah. Sergio just likes to listen and smile. Punt it off in peace. In you know He's mean? right though. I mean, this live stream discourages us punting in peace as well. This is one thing, but the Triton is just every Well, yeah, yeah every table. Real time. Yeah. Like, uh, kind of amazing, actually, that they can do. It really is amazing. Sounds like the most miserable job of all time. So, I'm sure they get paid. They ground. I right. think they get paid. They seem pretty happy. I think they're doing all right. If you like poker, it's a nice sweat. I mean, you're on your feet all day. But... Watching poker. I mean, dude, there's so many like, reporters that love this shit. Good for them. This one's tough, though. They got the <laughs> iPad standing, like, yeah, every, I mean, hand. every hand. Every hand. Every single hand. There's somebody at the table who puts it in. Yes, and they, they really don't make mistakes. Like, it's, it's pretty sick. Have you played a Triton? Yeah, I played I played one recently, and then, you know, not before that. Which which stop? I went to London. I played the VIP tournament with Wasps. Oh, nice. And I played the main and some others. Do you it was damage? fun. Did you I, damage? I was chip leader of the main deep. Then I came in 11th, so I sort of fizzled, rifled off three in the 60. I, I didn't really do damage, but we, but it felt like you I. You were did. on the precipice of damage. Yeah, but then I counted up and I did not. <laughs> Action has been folded to Sammy Beshahead in the cutoff. Ace 10 offsuit. Just a tad better from the 10-9 offsuit he raised and took down last hand. Nick Shulman with ace five on the button. Oh, Shay, you know what? He's getting a little curious, but uh, yeah, good discipline there. Crunchy Michael Jordan. 23. Coleman in the big blind with these small suited connectors. Defense. Yeah, why not? You already have 240 out there between your big blind you and the ante. She's suited, yeah, she's sure connected. Were you ever living in Let's Miami? see if she can sing. You are. Yeah. Yeah. Two clubs on the flop. Ace high. Playing she's online. warming up. Top pair in the straight draw for Beshahead. Flush draw for oh. Coleman. What's your name on my? The Jets fan 14. Oh, that's you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing fucking Sorry, every Jets tournament every day for years. You're just another just good player. <laughs> that's kind of you. Doesn't even matter <laughs> anymore. <laughs> and loving that 25% pot bet. Makes it nice and cheap for you to just peel off that club. Clubby. Jack of clubs. On it's the straight <laughs> you for Beshahead. It is the that flush for Coleman. Oh, yeah, yeah. What an incredible action card. Yeah, I, I think you. You're kind of play cash. Best Come ahead on, yeah. might find some check backs here because you're going to fold out a lot of hands that you're beating board, here, and then a lot of hands are just going to continue are the ones that after. are ahead. And so actually, we're like going to see a lead from Coleman here, anticipating a check back a lot of the time and a very cheeky. 25% bet. 
of 240,000 chips. Any six card or no? I tried six card, bro. I lost like 30 buy in. Six like, cards. Yeah, it's like this is the dumbest. It's kind of cool, but it's it's crazy. It's yeah. so dumb. Like, I, I thought it, like, I started playing it because everyone's like, you gotta play six card. I was like, all right, I'll try. And I gotta say, yeah. David really, Coleman I'm getting certainly it with, like, plays a pretty interesting style. style. <laughs> really, like, trying, trying to make sure he rabbit, gets value like, from his hands. 49%. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Not necessarily like, this so making dumb. big, polarizing bets, but just I, I, so really I, I targeting. Lost, like, 30 buy-ins in, like, three and getting these nice little jabs in. How's so I, I would be surprised if we see a massive, you know, 1.3x shove here from Coleman. Maybe more expect something in the range of 500 to 800,000. Really targeting those straights. And two pairs, 950s, specifically really hoping that Beshad has a straight. Very difficult to call here with just two pair. And yeah. Sammy's not happy. Oh. This isn't the kind of line that a, a 10 would really take very often. Not this big on the river, right? So Sammy's got to hope that Coleman's just bluffing. What are the hands that would bluff? Would queen nine with the nine of clubs elect to take a bluffy line here try to bet no it's tough yeah and there it is great hand from from coleman with Beshead making the call coleman will chip up to a 36 big blind stack third on the leaderboard as we welcome Joe Stapleton back. Hello, my babies. And say goodbye to Griffin for the time being. Yeah, I'll be back uh, later tonight. And as long as um, someone more interesting and accomplished isn't replacing me right now, it's, um, I'm very happy to, to say goodbye. Well, we have to say goodbye to Griffin because we do have a very special guest standing by to join us on the stream. Hello, my babies. Goodbye, my child. Still six-handed in the NAPT Las Vegas main event. 40 minutes to run on this level, 40 minutes till the first break of the day. Sergio Ido retains the chip lead right now with just over 10 and a half million chips and 89 big blind stack. Nick Shulman brings up the rear playing 22 bigs. And yes, we are thrilled to be joined on this live stream by the GOAT a player with more World Series of poker bracelets than anyone else in history. Phil Helmuth Jr., welcome. Can you just pronounce that uh, Sergio's last name again? Aido. Aido. Do I have anything in my nose right here? It sounds Can you like pronounce it? Here. Aido. Okay. Aido. Okay. It sounds like a like part scream. Yeah. Oh, good. Aido. Exactly. Yeah. It sounds like the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> Come on, man. Phil, you have been here at Resorts World Las Vegas most of the week, spreading hashtag positivity. You played in the big game. No you big played game in the main spoilers. Event. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank just you in, for reminding me. Just in case, yeah, no big game spoilers. <laughs> I will say this from the big game. Okay. Okay. We can talk about my lineup. Yes, you yes, can. Absolutely. Arden Show, um, Jennifer Tilly, me. Um, and I only mention those three just because I want to say that the hand occurred. Okay that the whole world will be talking about and it will have a hundred million views at YouTube. I have a couple that have a hundred million views. I don't disagree. Views. And it's gonna be incredible. Unfortunately, they have to wait till February. Something, something like that, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna take the over on February, Phil. I'm gonna say it might be kind of like maybe spring of 2024, but, but yes, I when people eventually get to see it, I agree with you, that hand is gonna go viral for sure. Now, a lot of people that are watching today with us, uh, remember the hand with Negranu uh, I was it against Gus way back in the day, and uh, and then someone turned like it was a set over set quad situation, and people yep. still remember that hand. Yes, they do. And so you know this isn't this is not the same, but it's it's just going to be a memorable, you know, fun hand. I don't think that'll be the only hand from that that'll be memorable. <laughs> I have to tell you, I mean, I've shot uh, you know 150 live streams and whatever I've been doing this stuff, and that was one of the best. I have ever played. Oh. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not talking about just me playing, but just the fun. Jennifer Tilly just lighting it up, just like she's 
and and just like the, the the vibe at the table was just incredible oh boy oh boy indeed Nick Shulman who is the shortest stack has opened with ace 10 and has walked into the aces of Sergio Aido Sergio A Aido you yep. make up your mind guys 4.2 So how many big blinds do we have Nick on right now? About 20. So he, sh I think, can get away from ace-10 here. We know Phil would get away from ace-10 here. And he got away from it already. Well done, Nick. Snap hole. Thank you. See you. What about your main event, Phil? Thank you, Phil. I had fun. Um, you know, I got... I got exhausted at 6 p.m., which hasn't happened to me. You know, there's been all this, like, I've been busy. And then at 6 p.m., I just got really tired, <laughs> Stapes, and, and, I, and I, I slammed some waters and just kind of gutted it through, made it through day one. Um, and then we filmed. And then right after the day end at 10 p.m., they're like, we need you to film for an hour and a half of interviews. Mm, right. Uh, and then, oh, the next day, like, oh, we need you there at 11.15. We finished at midnight. Long days, yeah. Yeah, some, some long days, and I probably didn't play my best on day two. I didn't play horrible, but... Um. I know the buy-in doesn't exactly matter to you, but I guess at least it was a 16.50 and not a 10K or a 5K. It still hurt. It sure. still hurt. I was surprised because I hadn't played a tournament since the series, and it still hurt busting. I was, you know, maybe 30 people away from the money. But I just, I love tournaments so much, and it just, I'm like... I, I went to the press, and I'm like, wait a minute, why am I in pain? It's a $1,600 buy-in, but... It but is. that's you, right? I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's 100K or 1600. You're always competitive. You yes. play every tournament you play. You want to win. Yes, and it was the main, it's a main event. Yeah, you know, and an NAPT main event's pretty cool. We haven't seen one of those in well, 12 years. Yeah, 12 years. Yeah. I feel the way you feel, even when I bust a charity event. I have to be happy and smile ever, you know, shake everyone's hand and go, yeah. ah, but I'm thinking, oh, I'm so bad right now. <laughs> this was supposed to be mine. Oh. Oh. Okay, so I don't mind uh, I don't mind Nick defending here to the dealer button. He could almost have raised, um, you know, take an aggressive line. If he thinks, like, for me, I would stare at the guy, and if I think he's weak, I'd just move in. Weird scenario, you know. ICM to the wind, you would move in on 20 big blinds there? 18 big blinds? Or at least put in a raise to sure. half my stack, you know. I'm not purely, purely, you know, I mean, I play to win. And, yeah, you got to play to move up, but I think I think a lot of people are playing too much to move up lately. And, and I've been, that's what I've been thinking. Things have, play has been handcuffed quite a bit at a lot of the final tables we've been covering. A lot, very ABC, where this happens and that happens and we know the hand's over. This yeah. happens and that happens and we know the hand's over. I mean, this is, you know, this is, I've, I've been down there in the mix. And so, you know, I was I was fighting in, a, uh, in the, I didn't play the last month of high rollers, but I played a bunch of high rollers in April. I won one. And when we got on the money bubble, I literally raised 24 hands in a row. <laughs> I just kept making it five big blinds, five big blinds, five big blinds, five big blinds. After about 11 hands, somebody finally made a big re-raise. And so I finally, I'd pretend to look at my cards each time. So I finally looked at it. I happened to have Ace King. So I moved <laughs> in. And he was so sick. He put like 500,000. It was 800,000 in this pot. And he had to call. And he just could just see like, and, and you know, and he ended up bubbling. Why are you pretending to look at your cards? Because if you see them, you might not pull the trigger and follow through with the raise you want to do? Two reasons. I don't want to give anybody a read on me. Okay. Um, number one. And number two, I don't want them to know I'm in the, in the, in the blind. If they know I'm in the blind, uh, they might say, oh, all right, Jack Queen's good enough. But, sure. you know, there's just that little extra. Even though you know someone's raised 15 times in a row, 18 times in a row, you, you, you never know. And then I'm a guy that always has it. So, Well, that time you did. Yeah, those 26 hands, uh, 25 out of 26 that I raised that day, I won 25 out of 26, I think. And uh, it was kind of nice. Um, and, you know, was, they were all trying to just move up and get whatever. It was um, $30,000 So versus bubbling. Phil, do you know what a chat pro is? Kind of. Okay, so we do live streams. We've got live chat. And uh, as a treat... We do something called Chat Pro Saturday, which means no matter how dumb a comment a Chat Pro makes on Chat Pro Saturday, mm -hmm. 
They are correct. There, there is a limit, and often we will revoke <laughs> their privilege and ban Chat Pro Saturday. However, I happen to agree with this. Okay, one. I just want to show you. Sure. Nick just folded Queen Jack, and uh, that's a lot more standard these days. Interestingly, though, that was not standard. Um, you know, literally four years ago, everyone was calling races with Jack Queen. Um, even in some of these final table spots, but Nick folded it pretty quickly, pretty easily. Um, just a thought. All right, what, what are we doing with the chat? Program? So Johnny Finger says, listening to Phil makes my body fizz with excitement. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even one that I need to let through on Chat Pro Saturday. That's just a true statement. Well, there's probably going to be some. So that's on the plus side. There's always somebody out there that says, I don't like feel. This helm you've got, I just don't know about it. Now, it's been weird, Stapes. I had in one day at the World Series, 28 people came up to me and told me, I love you. Only 28? I was, But it was incredible. I, I mean, like, where has this come from? And it, it just blows your mind a little bit. And you're like, oh, don't let it in. Don't become an egomaniac, you know? <laughs> I, mean, I think the ship know, has sailed on that, buddy. Say, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know what can be done on that. What I want to ask, what I want to say with you guys is, it looks like maybe I'll spend a little more time with you guys in the next year, or maybe in the booth, maybe a little bit more time. And uh, at the end of that, I want you guys to say I have a big ego. Well, well, you'll know then because there's because there's the bravado Phil that everybody knows, and then there's kind of the Phil. The I get Phil. I get asked about you more than any other player. People find out what I do for a living, and more than any other player, people ask me about you. And I always say the same thing. I go, Phil's a confident guy, and Phil likes himself, but he's not the same guy off the table. He likes himself. It's okay to like yourself. <laughs> I like myself. <laughs> Look at you two laughing at me now. Wow. Oh, he James, immediately. <laughs> no, no, immediately. no. Immediately, it's a two-on-one over here, James. James Phil's side. <laughs> laughing at me. No, no, no. No, we're it's... laughing with you, by the way. Yes, but I know, I know, me. I know. Yeah. There, there is a difference, though, between kind of being confident in yourself, yes, and being, I guess, the Phil Helmuth that some people see in front of the cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say the name dropping stays the same whether he's on or off the table. The rest <laughs> okay, of it. Okay, let me defend the name dropping and just say this: If you're hanging out, if you're giving the Winklevoss brothers a lesson. <laughs> Are you going to, like, tweet that out? Or you Look, just, oh, no, no. If you're at no. Oprah wait, wait, wait. birthday party on Deepak Chopra's boat, you're going to tell people about it. I mean, are you going to not? I mean, <laughs> of course not. I just don't go to those things. I, so do I, have some, do I do have some really cool stuff that I can't even talk about coming up. That's going to be fun. Um, it's got to be really cool if you won't talk about it. Can't even talk about it. 240. Yeah. Here comes Nick. He's four clubs. Seems fine. Of these players, Phil, I'm guessing Nick Shulman is the one you know best and probably the one you played against the most. I played a lot against Nick. Um, fantastic player. Uh, at every game, really. Um, yeah. He also plays high-stakes poker, you know, in the biggest room at the Bellagio. So um, he'll play in Bobby's room. And Nick, he's and Nick a cool is, cat, man. We've been talking about it for the last two days. He's just, he's a likable, cool dude. He's a cool cat. Everybody really likes Nick. He acerbic is a good word for him. You know? Yeah, that is a good word for him. Uh -huh. Also, I just I wish he would quit doing poker commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves it. It's always like Steve's my favorite, except for maybe Nick. Ah, Nick's the best. And then maybe I'm like, get him out of here. Go play. <laughs> go win more bracelets. Well, come on. We got to give uh, Nick. We got to give Nick and Ollie credit. They 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 do well together. Yeah, I hate them. <laughs> it makes me so mad. Should I translate that, James? <laughs> They're too good. They're a threat to me. I don't like them. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. King Deuce okay, Deuce. Nick. Fire, please, Nick. Fire, Nick. Please fire. Yes, I would also like Nick fired. 600,000, Nick. 500,000. Look, just something. Ah, yeah. He needs those chips, man. Coleman with the best hand right now. I'd like to see him bet it here. I mean, Ace Jack is likely good. Oh, okay, he's going to check. And definitely has the best hand now. Oh, boy. Oh, Yikes. Borenstein. Borenstein. So you guys have seen a lot of these other players before? Not really. Only Apart one. Apart from Sergio, because 
EPT reg, won a high roller in, super high roller in fact, in Monte Carlo four years ago, was a UK IPT champion about a decade ago. But these other guys, not really, no. I played with Sergio quite a bit. Yeah. Um, like, I'm a little aware of who these players are, being that I am American and I live here. So, you know, I've heard of Ping and seen him a little bit, Jonathan hey, listen, a little bit. I'm going to say this about Ping. Uh, I, uh, I, 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 Nick. I staked a friend of mine the other day in a tournament. He made the final table and Ping won it. So Ping just won a tournament literally five days ago. All right. He won a tournament at the Poker Go Studios. Uh, Ping did, so I, I think, you know, I mean, as, as they would say, as they would say overseas, he's in form, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Please never do that again. <laughs> Phil's practicing for some time in Europe, it sounds like. Uh, now Nick Shulman is betting. Oh, man. I just, like, look, um, I'm not going to say I hate his bet. but um, Oh, no, shoot. Sorry. No, he bet. He bet. He bet, and then Coleman called. But it, it just was a good spot for it. Nick should have just bet the flop. I mean, it's a king deuce deuce. They don't know what he has. If no one has a king, they might even fold eights to Nick, you know. So I, I would like to bet on the flop. Oh, boy. This could be by my Nick. Nick knows no one had a flush draw, right? Because the f they, they checked on the flop, right? So, and it's unlikely that Coleman called him with a queen and a ten. He can rule out queen ten. He can rule out a flush. He just hit an ace. It must look like the nuts to him at this point. He may well move in here. Very unlucky card. Literally has pot behind. I don't like pot because you want to get called by a king, but uh, I'd like 500 or something, 600. Oh. It goes super small. I really like that bet. Um, I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. The, the the merits of that bet is uh, is I'm saying I have an ace um, or I have some hidden hand and you don't want you really don't want to get raised um, and oh, really well played Nick I mean really well played I I mean the bet on the river is just genius it's just like you know, I love that bet because you can get called by worse and if you're up against better you're probably not going to lose much more right it's pretty unlikely there's better out there. <laughs> By the way, um, I would like to have seen a raise, by the way. Um, you know, make it like 500 or something or 600. I mean, it's just so rare that someone leads out for the minimum size bet on the river, you know, and actually has a big hand, right? So what's Nick down to now? 11 big blinds for Nick Shulman. Yeah. We'll seeing him on pretty soon. Is the single short stack at the table right now. Sergio Aedo is still chip leader with close to 100 big blinds. 22 minutes until we hit the first break of the day. Man, Nick, I, I guarantee himself right now, he's he's got to be thinking, why didn't I bet the flop, you know? And that's the kind of stuff that bothers you for a few minutes after you make a mistake, you know? And to him, he probably feels it's a mistake. I feel it was a mistake. And he's probably thinking to himself, you know, I should have bet the flop. Why didn't I bet the flop? And then if you're Phil Helm, you're thinking, God damn it, that ace was unlucky. <laughs> 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 it actually scares me how often I have similar thoughts to you when I'm playing poker. You know, and not the good ones. Not the ones that are good decisions either. Just the raw emotions. <laughs> People don't like to admit that. Are you, are you going on record admitting that? Oh, absolutely. That makes you normal. Like, people come up to me all the time and they're like, Phil, the things you say, that's the way I feel when I lose hands. And oh, like, I definitely yeah. feel them. I don't say them, of but I do not. feel them. Yeah, no. You're too classy to. Oh, never mind. Did I just call myself <laughs> unclassy? <laughs> I just have a job I can get fired from, and you don't. <laughs> well, ace 4 4, Jack Kai ahead. How many chips does Ping have? Where's our Where's our sheet? Okay. I'm gonna predict that. I'm gonna predict that. I'm gonna go with the hot person, and I'm going to just 
off the cuff just say that Ping Lu is going to finish first or second. Well, okay. All right. Bold prediction. Phil, we think that uh, Sammy, who we were just on, not Coleman here, but Bashahed, we think he may have dealt to you on Hustler Casino Live. He's a, he's a dealer for the live stream. Oh, that's so cool. Probably did. I played on Hustler a bunch. And then uh, I brought, I think I brought, I think they brought a bunch of the same dealers from the bicycle to the Hustler. And I used to shoot on the old bicycle stream there right. as well. Live at the bike. Coleman up to 46 big blinds, five and a half million. Yeah, start the day as the shortest stacks. It's third in chips right now. You can hear Chewy from across the room, huh? All time laugh. It really does have a good one. What's your prediction over here what on what's going to happen to Sergio? Chewy's laugh is just oh. Sergio? Yep. He's, He's got 96 big still. lines. Yeah, and with, and with his experience, like I'm going to, in the same way that you called there's Ping Lu for, to finish in the top there's, two, there's I know it's no not idea. particularly there's original there's to pick the chip leader, but I can say Sergio about, finishes about, first right, or yeah. second. Right, yeah, but forget original. I'm not going to say it. It tells you, like, a lot of times we see guys with chip leads. He has 96 bigs, and they manage to somehow finish fourth or fifth, or they yeah. blow it. Um, it. Just having experience isn't enough. Knowing, but I think probably he knows all of the ICM and all of that. Oh, yeah. You know, so, so, yeah, he's going to be tough to, you know. Two and a half hours is a long time. To uh, well, this is Sammy Beshahed shoving on Nick Come Shulman, on, small Thank to big. You. And Nick's called it off. Nick Shulman is all in and at risk. King seven is the hand for Beshahed. Wait and see Nick's cards. I just shove uh, King seven in the course right now. <laughs> oh, it's a flip. It is. It be flippy. It's a flip. We are flipping, right? Yeah. Like Phil Hellmuth versus Magnus Carlsen. One of these two top of their fields has a slight mathematical advantage. What does Nick's hat say? I haven't made it out. I, I, my guess is it's some. It says 160. I guess it's some. My guess is it's some kind of brand I can't afford. <laughs> One six zero oh, IGO. Oh boy! There is a king on the flop, and Shulman is going to need a four to survive. Well, if we lose Nick, we lost some style. Anybody have one? <laughs> I don't think so. Do you remember Ping? Any four? Okay. Right. Four's alive. Well, Two outs fours. in the deck for Nick Shulman. <laughs> That's your story from yesterday. You're fast. You picked up on that. I'm not that dumb. Sometimes I am, but... Needs to hit on the river. And misses. So we lose Nick Shulman in sixth place. He cashes for $54,680. And we are down to five in the NAPT Las Vegas main event. Oh, and now he's coming in to do guest commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I guess I'll just go take a nap. You might not be in a good enough mood to do that. All right, so um, it seemed to me that his hat and his jacket matched. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier, about how if I could afford that outfit, I would want to wear it. But is that lame to see it and then just, like, steal his um, style? Which no. I definitely can't pull off either. 4.2. No, 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 no. Is that okay? I, mean, I think it's okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Four. I mean, Taylor Swift wears I mean, something and then like, you know, 20 million jack people jack wear what she wears. Jack I do feel the way about Nick Shulman that most people feel That's about Jackie. Taylor Swift, actually. So, Actually, I believe you. <laughs> there was some sincerity in his eyes there. I was talking sure. all day yesterday about how I wanted to become best friends with Nick Shulman. <laughs> but it would have worked. I don't get through you, David. I would have to check my ace again, see if I block the ace too. Oh dear, getting it done, watching on YouTube, not happy. I just tuned in and watched the best player get bounced. Ridiculous. <laughs> um, it happens sometimes. Welcome to tournament poker. Yeah. Well, again, going back to the ace four clubs. 
He bets the flop there. He's going to so win it because everybody's yeah, afraid of him. To and that's understanding five, that everybody's and, uh, afraid of you, right? Thirty seconds. So you make that bet. Us one seven, hand, six, and, then mm -hmm. and he's going to win that pot. Everything Over changes now. He's up to what two and a half million. Good player. So really, he lost that pot because of his humility. If you think about it, because he didn't know everyone feared it. Yeah, it's it's there is, yeah. I mean, like, I know that Got people one. fear me in hands, right? So, no. It's this is not an Raise ego thing. It's about I don't play hands. So when I'm right. playing super tight and I, I finally start blasting, uh, I'm here, here, likely right. to have it. Yeah, very unexciting. I remember folding. I played a hand against you many, many, long, long time ago, in like a this back when they had like doubles poker. It was like a tag team event or something. Yep. Long time ago, and I folded uh, two jacks to you on like a 10-10-9 board. You just like bet, and I folded two jacks. And my partner was like, you did what? <laughs> I was like, but there was, there was two tens on the board. <laughs> A lot of people curious to know when future NAPT stops will be announced. I'm pretty sure you can expect news of the 2024 schedule before the end of the year. By the way, this NAPT has been... A lot of fun uh, outside. Uh, people from all over the world. You know these, the stars qualifiers. Um, just all these groups from all over the world makes it fun. And I was a little surprised that so many top players are here. That's what happens when it's in their neighborhood. Hmm. I was going to say I've definitely got the impression, Phil, seeing you around this week, that you've been enjoying yourself more than anything else. I've been smiling a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's for, it's true. Yeah. I generally have fun everywhere I go. You guys always catch me. You, the public always sees me at a final table where, where it's super well, we intense, where I played three days to break. get there. Yeah. We do get access. Where I'm playing for a lot of money, you know? And then <laughs> kind of the joy that my, of, of my daily joy of my life doesn't show through as much. But then filming so many live streams. The, the one thing I'll say, if 28 people come no, come we'll up to you back. and they tell you that you love that they love you, you can't let it in. But at least you know that they know that you're a good person. Criminal's strong, but I agree. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. You don't come up like if someone's a real asshole and they know you're real. You don't come up and you say, I love you. So the one thing I'm happy about is they don't the message. <laughs> the message that I'm receiving is, hey, they don't think I'm they know that I'm a good guy. And so that I'll take that positivity out of it, you know. Let me let me ask you this, and I'm not asking you this to stitch you up. I I, I want it stitch to be like, you up. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not trying to like, trap you into an answer here. Okay. I, I'm genuinely want to know, and as an exercise in believing in yourself, when you register a poker tournament, what percentage chance do you give yourself to win it when you sit down? Like, what do you think the chances are of you winning a large field poker tournament oh, okay. when you go play? It's weird. I don't think like that. You don't. No. But you think obviously you believe that you could win it. Yep. It's 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 so basic. You know, it's make it through day one. You're, you're okay. That's that's all I think on day one. Um, you know, and then make it through day two. It's a very simple process. Now at the end of day two, you know, whatever. There's 28 left going into day three. Probably better than most dealers. And now it seems like I'm, I'm accessing my best Philham youth. For that, that third day, year, I would trade players. Still not thinking about I'm winning. He's got now a good gig. It's another step. Make got a the good final gig. table. I play. Make the final table. Then it's oh, another step. Make okay. the final three. I know you're gonna play a lot. I mean, and then at figure, that point you can think I love about winning. Options. Okay. I got a break right. in 12 minutes. It sounds boring. It's like a golfer, you know. Sure. I'm I mean, just a lot thinking of poker about the next shot. A lot of poker players uh, are genuinely shocked when they go out on day one and they were like, "Yeah, I thought I was gonna win this." Yeah. I woke up this morning. And I really had a strong feeling I was going to win this poker tournament. I've never felt that. And it sounds like you don't either, not until you get to three-handed. No. And I think you're right. I think it is perfectly reasonable at that point to picture holding up the trophy. There are times where you think you're going to win a tournament. For sure, that happens to me. And I'm surprised when it doesn't happen, too. I'm like, whoa, wait. Or my wife and I am at a final table, and I just wake up, and I'm like, I'm going to win. And the number of times I wake up and say, I'm going to win, and then I win, it's like, a good 80, hit rate. <laughs> yeah, like 80% of the time. That's not just thinking you're going to be lucky. That's knowing that you're on form, knowing that you have other good reads on the players. It's a combination of things that allows you to feel that way. Um, unless you talk to Mike the Mouth Mattiso, and he'll tell you that <laughs> I have this, like he's told me literally 20 times, I know I'm going to win. I know I'm going to win. And yeah. 
and he, you know he's just trying to trying to create a narrative for himself, and that's okay too. So picking up the action here, Coleman raised pre. Borenstein defended the big blind, and this is a very simple check bet fold situation on the flop, taking us to hand at 58 of the final table with 10 minutes on the clock minutes. until we hit the break. What a treat getting to have Phil in here. I was going to say, Phil, what do you got planned for the rest of the day once you're done with us? Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I've really been having a lot of fun uh, with. I really having a lot of fun this year with the NFL stuff. I've been yes. I've been really hot, and, and it's just been fun to watch the games. And so, that's tomorrow. Um, today I might play the bounty. I love these bounty tournaments. Oh, the mystery bounty, yeah. But I have to be completely ready to play. I, I don't like to show up even 80% ready to play. Either you're excited to play and you play, or you don't. And so sometimes I wait till the last minute, and then and then I'm tipped over to go play. And sometimes I'm, ah, you know what? I'm just going to get up and watch the NFL tomorrow. You know. I'll be playing a bunch more NAPTs, though. I can say that for sure. Okay, Lou's open under the gun with King Ten suited. Sergio Ada on the button with Ace Queen. Sergio, of course, is going to raise, right? I can promise you whatever he does do is going to be the right thing. <laughs> oh, he oh. went for the uh, call. Interesting. Just call in position. That's but more like Phil Helmuth style, by the way. I can see myself just calling there. And... Sammy Besher had calling as well out of the big blind with King Jack off. So three way to the flop. The Sammy. I mean, King 10 is a little Sammy. wider than you expect most people raising under the gun. So yeah. Yeah. Got him for, um, for sure. Yeah, Ooh, like and it is a King 10 five <laughs> flop <laughs> domination <laughs> rotation. Lou with two pair. Besh head top pair. Aido with a gut shot. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, good hand for John Bornstein. I should check mm -hmm. to Sergio. Five of clubs on the turn with Sergio checking it back on the flop. Well, this is going to be expensive. He's setting his own price for now. Sammy leading turn here. Into a pot of just over a million. He bets 300k. Well, you could call 300, you could make it 800. He, he's not in love with the five because big line could have four, five suited, five, seven suited, five, six suited. Yeah, so he's like, you know what? I'm not going to flop to top two. Let a five pop off and then go broke. Sergio again, a pretty good price. Mm hmm. Turns out now his ace is good. True. Jack is his gin guard, of course. Seven of diamonds on the river. Kings and ten still good. So interesting here. Okay, so now <coughs> the kings and tens. This is going to be interesting because he gets paid if he bets 800k, 900k. James, what would you, what would you, what would you like here? Him to bet. I think. Oh wow, he checked it. I mean, something. My answer is I'd like him to bet something. <laughs> what in the world just happened? It got checked to showdown. Cautious final table play. Well, we're just going to step away from the table for a second. We'll come back to that hand in a moment. Just want to check on some of the qualifiers still alive in the 5K high roller. Wojciech Nizhevski from Poland won a gold power pass to be here in Vegas. As did Ronald Haverkamp from the Netherlands. I thought he was from Holland. And last, but by no means least, Maureen Blucklinger from Switzerland. So all of these three players 
won a Vegas Gold Pass Special Edition, a package worth 20K that gets them entry to that high roller, keeps them in Vegas for several nights, and gets them to the Formula One Grand Prix next weekend. Does that include the main event? It didn't. Okay. They came in late. So came in, I think, Sloppy. day before yesterday. This is more like a Grand Prix package. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play the 5K event at the end of the NAPT, have some fun in Vegas for a few days, then go and see the Grand Prix. That was just kind of bizarre. Hand it, <laughs> How do you check top two there? I mean, it was curious. Well, now we've got Ace Queen versus Ace King. That's why I like betting the flop. I really want to see Ping bet the flop there, right? I mean, top two just fire out something. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. opened to two hundred seventy-five, and Borenstein's made it seven hundred and fifty. Action back on Sergio. What a sick spot. Man, if Sergio is, you know, good enough to just call with Ace Queen that last hand. Maybe he doesn't think Ace Queen is that big of a hand. Thinking about it. Plays a time bank cup. Boy, it's a lot of money if he jams for the flop. I certainly wouldn't like that. Which we don't. Okay. You want to go there? You want to put the chair over there? So he's probably now mm -hmm. thinking about yeah. call I eliminated. or fold. I think it's almost always going to be a call. Call. Oh. Agree. I'm always looking for somebody that, to make that. Amazing lay down. Oh Ooh. boy. Yeah. Ace 10 4 with two diamonds. See, <clears throat> before the flop, to me, Ace Queen is you can do some crazy, weird folds if you think you're in bad shape. But on this flop, getting away from Ace Queen <laughs> is very difficult. Let's focus on the positive. How much do you love this with Ace King and the Ace of Diamonds? How about that? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so Sergio can't get away now. Now what? You hit a queen, Phil. <laughs> That's a solid strategy. You like call? I like call. Get yeah. there. Instead, it's the four of clubs. Jeez, that's just okay. awful for Ace Queen. <laughs> okay, on the other hand, the Ace King is in yeah. feeling very good right now. Yeah, look at it from Borenstein's perspective. It's like, yes. Yep. What are you going to do, James? How much? Jamming? One million? I'm jamming here, but I'm terrible. Yeah, same with me. I mean, I'm never in the spot. I'm never five-handed at the final table <laughs> of an NAPT, but... I like, if, a, I like a million. If somehow my brain was suddenly transplanted into Jonathan Borenstein's body for this particular moment, I probably would just move all in. 1.4. He goes 1.4. We're going to split the difference between going all in and 1 million. <laughs> I like that, 1.4. You know, it's, he, has to, he, has to, he has to be concerned about being the next player to bust. And you don't want to bet too cheap and let somebody with, you know, some kind of drawy hand in there. It's unlikely anybody has a drawy hand, but, you know, sometimes, sometimes your opponent has king, queen of diamonds here, king, jack of diamonds, right? You want about enough maybe to just end it. And your opponent, and now, you know, from Sergio's point of view. It's interesting, the modern day players, like, in his spot with Ace Queen, like the call, um, I kind of like the jam.
I do not think he can get away from this. As played, yep. it doesn't seem like it. They always say call and reevaluate, but the more you call, the harder it is to reevaluate. <laughs> Hey, look at this. Wow, what a fault. That, that was incredible. Heck yeah. I cannot believe it. Ah, max credit. Again, I don't mind. It's, it's, I'm, I just think differently than everybody else. I don't actually mind the fold before the flop because ace-queen is never good to, to someone who's, who's playing legitimate hands. Lots of love in the chat for that fold. No need for chat pro Saturday. Impressive that all around. Most that was the most exciting hand of the day. Good timing. That was fantastic. Really, really well done. And I think we're going to squeeze in one more hand before the end of this level, before the end of this session of play. Could you fold that? Nope. Not good enough. We can't all be as Whoa. social as you, buddy. Wow, he's going to be so happy when he... When he gets the text from his friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and these guys, you know, all five of them have spies. When the, you know, spies is a bad word. You know what I mean. Someone watching the stream. Of course. Shooting him information. On two forty. And when he finds out that he that his opponent had ace king there, he's going to be so happy. We won't have that on camera, but he's going to go, yes. <laughs> Sometimes Nikki. you can tell 30 minutes later when they get the information. Yeah, yeah, the smile. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the session, and it brings us to the end of our time with Phil Helmuth. Phil, thank you so much for stopping by. Right. I think minutes. I'm coming back after the break. You are? Yeah, I think so. Fantastic. We'll see you on the other side of the break. We will be back in 20 minutes' time with more action from the NAPT Las Vegas main event. And checking on the stacks of the five players remaining. Sergio Aido with the chip lead. 63 big blinds at the new blind level post-break. Sammy Beshead sitting in second place. And Borenstein, Coleman and Lou all bunched up around the 35 big blind mark. Now, a few moments ago, we saw Vegas Gold Pass winner Maureen Blucklinger go deep in the 5K high roller. Let's see what Maureen has been doing off the felt. here in the Fremont area and we're going on Slotzilla. This is my friend Chai who's going to do it with me. We have to do it, we're in Vegas. Hi, my name is Maureen Blerklinger. I'm based in Zurich, Switzerland and I'm actually a poker promoter. I'm a little bit scared of heights, but let's see. I'm still nervous. <laughs> My job, it varies from, you know, updating websites um, in the background, doing social media posts, and also hosting some events. I play on PokerStars.ch, which is um, the Swiss version of PokerStars, and we actually only got this opportunity July, mid-July, to play the Power Pass. I knew it was $10,000 worth, I knew it was Las Vegas, but then I didn't realize what the extra value meant. And the more screaming I was doing at the computer, the more my husband became interested. And he's like, do you realize what you just want? I'm like, yeah, the 10K Vegas package. And he's like, no, you get 10K added value on top. I'm like, what? And he's like, go to the lobby, go here, look at this, look at what you're getting. I'm like, oh my God. And then that's when I really started freaking out. <laughs> oh my God. The tickets included in the package are basically tickets you can't buy. And like I mentioned, um, my husband and I are both F1 fans. We follow it, we watch it, so I just can't wait. Jonathan Jaffe first to speak. He'll muck the 6 9. Jason Mercier has Queen 10. Jason's in early middle position. A lot of tight players would fold this nine handed. Right at 16. He makes it 1600. Pocket sixes for von Kriegenberg. 
He will call. Joe Sweeney will fold, as does Michael Raskin. Michael Pesek gives up the small blind. Eugene Kachalov has ace jack in the big blind. We should see a call here, even though Eugene's out of position. He will call. So, three way to the flop. Von Kriegenberg's sixes are best. The flop is jack three four. Kachalov takes the lead with top pair, top kicker. He has checked to the razor. And Jason Mercier makes a continuation bet of 2,350. It's not a horrible flop for two sixes, only one overcard out there. But von Kriegenberg decides to let his pocket pair go. Kachalov makes the call. I think once Eugene calls, Jason knows he's behind or at least has very little equity. The turn card is the queen of spades. Mercier moves in front. Kachalov now has a better flush draw to go with his pair of jacks. Jason's run pretty good in this tournament, and this turn card is no exception. We'll have to see if the spade is an action killer. Goes check, check. The river is the deuce of diamonds. Jason Mercier with the best hand. Kachalov has missed the bust of Value Town. Now it looks like he's attempting to get on one going the wrong direction. He leads out for 2,700. There's Eugene's dad, Alex Kachalov. And there's Jason's new girlfriend, Erica. Always good to have support on the rail. Jason's still facing a river bet. 93. And he raises it to 9,300. Okay, so I'll often give Jason a hard time for running good, but this is what makes him a great poker player. It's a thin spot for a value raise, and he's made a ridiculously accurate read. Eugene's a great player in his own right, though, and he may not want to call off 10% of his stack on a river raise. He does let it go. So Mercia wins a pot with nearly 23,000 in it, much to Erica's delight. And if Eugene's dad is anything like my dad, it's nothing but disappointment. So Jason Mercia is now back to just about even, just over his starting stack. All nine players still remain. Actions folded to Eugene Kachalov, with the blinds now at 600-1200 with a 200 ante. Kachalov is going to raise with ace, deuce of diamonds, under the gun, plus one. Kind of a loose raise from that position, but I'll cut him a break since it's suited. King Jack for Scott Blackman goes in the muck. As Ali G says, respect. Jason Mercier has a six offsuit. And he will pass. More respect. Joe Sweeney has eight, nine of hearts. Sweeney didn't get the memo. No one else is wearing the jerseys today. Awkward. Call. Cool. Well, he's going to call from the small blind, and Micah Raskin will fold the big blind. Typically, this would be a loose call, but it's not so bad early on when blinds are low and you're pretty deep. And it was a min raise, so he's getting a good price. The flop is all diamonds, the nut flush for Kachalov. Joe Sweeney's flop middle pair. He's first to act. What is he doing? I think he's looking at the flop in close up. They're all red, so maybe that's confusing him. He's not supposed to bet this at all. He's supposed to check to the razor. He's counting his chips. He's got about 28,000 behind. Eugene has to be a little confused and probably also thrilled. What? All He's all in? I call, I have a flush. Absolutely. <laughs> Good hand, brother. Sweeney drawing dead to a running full house or quad, so he might as well start running for the door. A strange move by Sweeney, and he is drawing dead on the turn, and he will be the first player out of this final table. Good job, man. Good play, man. Mr. Kachloff, go give that man a hug because he just gave your boy an absolute gift. Hi, big fella. Nice run. Yeah, but a bit of a misstep there. He will walk away with $50,000 that he earned from the first round of this tournament. Eugene Kachalov looks down here at ace seven. Just one ace, but it's suited. He raises from under the gun plus one to 3,200. Jonathan Jaffe as King Jack. Jaffe won enough money playing poker during college that he bought a house. Guaranteed I paid for some of that house. He has three back to 6,000 from the cutoff. Jason's in position. Pocket nine's on the button and he will four bet to 11,700. Micah Raskin is in the big blind with 7-10 of spades. 
He will muck, so back to Kachalov, the initial razor. Eugene should realize at least one of these guys has him beat. He wisely folds. Oh, and Jaffe shoves. Good call. And Jason Mercier will call. Looks like Jason had a plan all along in this hand, got Jaffe to think he was trying to steal it, and then snap called the all in. Thinks it. Jaffe's buddies calling for some binkage. These two are racing. Jason has the slight mathematical advantage, like peanut butter versus jelly. Jaffe looking to hit one of his two overcards to Jason's nines. The flop is 10-3-10. No big for you. Safe flop for Jason. Jaffe did flop some backdoor outs, but still really only looking for a king or a jack. The turn is a jack. So now it's Mercia who needs to hit. Jason has to hate the turn. Whatever, bro. It's like a black card. It's any, bla any black card. See, Jason gets it. You can't be too greedy. He needs a nine, but it's an ace on the river, so Jonathan Jaffe will double up through the defending champion. And don't worry too much, Erica. Your boyfriend's still in pretty good shape because he's Jason Mercier. Well, Jonathan Jaffe has taken the chip lead at the final table. Let's have a look at how all the players stack up right now. Jaffe has just under 100,000 in chips. Eugene Kachalov not too far behind him in second. Taylor von Kriegenberg in third. Jason Mercier is now the table short stack with just under 25,000. After losing that big race, Jason Mercier could very well be steaming. I think we're about to see the chat box light up. Nothing like running into the bottom of my range. Jason saying two nines is the worst hand he'd ever do that with, and apparently that's hilarious. Just, just messed around. I said. You gotta love the fun, exciting post-hand poker talk. Action is on Jimmy Ginther. Now he bubbled the main event in LA last year, and it was Jason Mercier who took him out. Says he wants Jason's bounty most of all. He's gonna buy ten grand worth of cotton candy with it. He should save some of that money for dental bills and insulin. Action's been folded to Jason Mercier, who has king nine of clubs. Jason's in late position and has about 15 big blinds. And he has moved all in. <clears throat> Michael Raskin, ace four in the small blind. He'll fold. Michael Pesek's in the big blind. With jack nine. Pesek's got a marginal hand and he is dominated, but he's got the chips to spare. And Jason's bounty adds massive equity to this pot. Pesek giving this some serious consideration. He's called. And Jason will see the good news. The bounty equity and the thought of Jason's face on his nice stand have talked Michael Pesek into making a pretty loose call, and Jason's in great shape to double up. Three to one favorite with five cards to come. Michael Pesek looking to catch a three outer. If he does, Jason won't leave empty handed. He's got six bounty chips to take home. Is it sick that I was almost rooting for a call? Is that weird? No reason to sit there short stacked, either double up or take a drive through scenic Uncasville. The flop has a jack on it, but Mercier does have a gut shot, and his king is still alive. Oh, yeah, and he's Jason Mercier. Come on, Ronnie. Summoning the spirit of Ronnie Barda. Oh, I'll take a king, too. King works. King or a 10. It's a three on the turn. We just saw Vanessa Selps go back to back here at Mohegan Sun, but now the defending champ of this event is one card away from getting bounced out of here. Are we about to lose Jason Mercer? Of course we're not. He hits on the river. He always hits on the river. Was there ever any doubt he's Jason Mercier? Yeah, I run so good. <laughs> so, so pure. Well, Mercier's been all over the place so far today, and once again, he's back to just about where he started. Actions on Eugene Kachalov. He's folded. Jimmy Ginther as Queen Nine of Spades. Ginther's been playing pretty tight. 36. 36. And now he's raising to 3,600 from under the gun plus one. Let's see if this raise gets him any respect. Ace queen here for Scott Blackman. I don't see him folding this with his stack. Well, he is virtually all in. He's left himself 75, three green chips. So the bet stands, 29,400. Ace king for Michael Pesek. We could easily see a fourth bet. He moves all in. Actually, Pesek doesn't have enough for a full raise. <laughs> I don't really see how I can fold. Just way too much equity in this pot with two bounties on the line. 
So Ginther makes the call, and funny enough, Blackman doesn't pass for his last 75. <laughs> Michael Pesek is the favorite to just about triple up here. Blackman actually has the least amount of equity in this pot, and he can't even win a bounty, so he's in very bad shape. Ginther could eliminate two players and claim two bounties here. The flop is 3-7-9, and Ginther takes the lead. Ginther outflops everyone with one live card. Pesek now must hit an ace or king to stay alive. And Blackman's dominated on one side, reverse dominated on the other. Terrible flop for him. The turn card is the jack of spades. Now Scott Blackman is drawing dead. Pesek can still win with an ace or a king. Ginther, a 92% favorite to claim two bounties. That's $20,000. But it's a king on the river, and Pesek gets the triple up. ay -ya. <laughs> All right, one more card. Michael. And he will also get Scott Blackman's bouncy. Well, Jimmy Ginther is crippled, left with just 7,500. Scott Blackman's our seventh place finisher. No bounties for him today, but he did pick up three on his way to winning his first table. So he gets $42,000. And Michael Pesek is right back in this thing as six players remain in the quest for the trophy. Remember, whoever claims the most bounties gets the bounty bonus, $20,000. Blinds are up. We're playing 1,000, 2,000 with a 300 ante. Taylor von Kriegenberg has folded, as does Michael Pesek. Action on Eugene Kachalov. He has queen three. He'll pass. Jonathan Jaffe is in the small blind. He's got king, queen of diamonds. A very strong hand heads up small to big, but man, oh man, how I do not envy him having Jason Mercier to his left. And in this case, Jason's in position also. Jaffe's raised to 5,000. Jason's got seven, eight of diamonds and will defend his big blind. I would personally just hand Jason's big blind back to him every hand. Three, seven, ace, just one diamond on board. Jason flops second pair. Let's see if Jaffe continues. He does, he makes it 4,000. Jason knows Jaffe doesn't necessarily have to have an ace to raise pre-flop or to bet the flop. Looks like he's counting out chips for a raise. Oh. He moves all in. And Jaffe calls him. Not much of Jonathan's stack from the call, and of course there's always bounty equity. Jason's in a good spot to double up. Erica very attentive now that there's all these diamonds in play. Maybe catching a glimpse of her future. There's still a better than one in five chance Jaffe will catch up. He can hit a king, a queen, or running straighter flush cards. The turn is the five of diamonds. They both pick up a flush draw. Jaffe's is better. Not a good turn card for Jason. Jaffe picks up nine more outs. Jason's still the three to one favorite to double up in this spot. I mean, how many diamonds are in this deck, really? We're little black cards, right, Jason? <laughs> No, I don't really want. Let's see the Very river. Saturated. Jason has to fade kings, queens, and diamonds. It is the nine of hearts on the river. Mercia gets the double up. Of course he dodged all those outs. Did I mention he's Jason Mercier? Well, Jonathan Jaffe still has the chip lead with nearly 121,000. And Jason doubles up with middle pair. Max Martinez, the cannon with 10-9 suited. Raises to 1,300. All right, loose cannon. Ace-9 for Helmuth. Calls. This is one of the best thing we have. Did you like it? Minieri calls 1,300 with pocket sixes. Elky out. Lock gone. Bill Perkins, 6-3 offsuit. Why not? We'll be saying that a lot this week. Italy was the first place I went where I bought pizza by the kilogram. They waited and they said, oh, you have like, you know, 180, whatever. Flop eight, man. four, seven, couple of diamonds. Yeah. Perkins checks his gut shot. It's a lock check. It's a full lock check. No, no, it's a bazooka. He's two-handed check. Sometimes he likes this. I like that little. Looks yeah. like everyone's learning to play chopsticks. You go get a ham sandwich. Martinez checking his up and down straight draw. Tell me with nothing but ace high. 42. Oh, Joe, he's got every backdoor draw imaginable. <laughs> That's true. He does have some backdoor draws. Bets 4,200. Minieri quickly out. Perkins still with a gut shot. Businessman's done. Max has two overs, and he's open-ended, even though we know his nine's no good. And Martinez makes the call. Standard call. Heads up to the turn. 
10 of hearts. Max makes a pair. Phil is also up and down now. Top pair for the loose cannon. Martinez checks. Phil's gearing up for a bet. 12,800. You heard the man. 12,800 is the bet now. It's over three quarters of the pot. I'll take this one now. You fold. I win. I know. He can probably understand complete sentences. <laughs> well, this definitely isn't a fold. That cannon showing some stones makes the call. At this point, Phil should know he no longer has the best hand. To the river. Seven of spades. Phil misses. Max's pair is still good. Looks like he's thinking about betting it. And he fires 15,500. This is a pretty small bet into this pot. It's sort of a blocker slash merge. He's trying to bet a little less than what he thinks Phil would have bet. Problem with a blocker bet, though, is that it can sometimes look weak. Raise it. 45,000. Phil raises 45,000 more. Now, Phil's the kind of guy that makes a lot of tight j calls, so this raise is pretty polarizing, which means they're full house or nothing. It's a very tough spot for Max, since he's the one guy at the table who absolutely cannot reload. If he called here and he was wrong, he'd be left with less than 25K. I know what almost every other loose cannon would do in this spot. Please don't have forceful. What you got? Huh? What you got? <laughs> to recap, Phil has nothing and over half his chips in this pot. You got fourth? I might have forceful. I might not. Sick level. Okay, call. Wow. Good call. You win. That pot worth over 160,000 bucks. Absolutely amazing call. Helmuth looks stunned. Oh my god, what is going on? What is going on? Tilt oh my juice! God. Get the tilt juice out for everyone. Nice Have Thank a you. little sip. Drink it up. Wow. <laughs> I can't make that call. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the Poker Stars North American Poker Tour live from Las Vegas. Smack dab on the strip from Resorts World. And if I got a treat for you, Joe Stapleton and the star of that last hand, Phil Helmuth Jr. Doesn't feel like I was a star. <laughs> Uh, not the winner at least, but man, I love that play. I raised him 45,000 US dollars. That's real money. Especially back then it was real money. How does he call? I gotta tell you, it was a real thrill watching that hand with you. We'll get to that in a second. Let's cover these final table chip stacks. Ping Lu, the shortest stack, but not in the danger zone. Narrowly edged out by Coleman and Bornstein. And then we've got a bit of a gap. Sammy Bahahead. 50 big blinds, and Sergio Aido, 63 bigs. We lost Sand Deep in seventh. Nick Schulman busted in sixth, as is usually the case. Top heavy structure here. You don't hit six figures until third. 168,000 for the runner up, and over a quarter million dollars for the winner. Okay, here we go. How does he call $45,000? <laughs> More. Unbelievable. I love that play as I'm watching. Uh, Max Martinez was probably, at the time, the most skilled loose cannon that we had. He really What's the name, One, he two, really three. took not just you, but a lot of the pros' money. Well, a person thinks they can bluff the loose cannon. <laughs> Normally you'd be right. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Like most loose cannons, they, I mean, who's calling that there with just a yeah. pair? Ooh, fold of the ace nine of clubs. Jack ten of clubs for Coleman in the small blind. Did Ping just fold the ace nine of clubs? Is that what I saw? 
I didn't catch who Cole it must have been. He was the player to act before Coleman. Like Coleman's in. Not three betting the under the gun raise, just calling. And more clubs. Wow, and the ace nine of clubs folded, mind you. <laughs> huh. Still managed to get one club on this flop. Queen, queen, tray. Again, the old classic seed bet, ace high, ace high is good a lot here. And you just have to fire. Could be a little 400, 500, 600. Easier said than done. All I can think in this spot, no one's going to believe me. <laughs> I always think they know I have it. <laughs> Two sides of the same coin, jack on the turn. And look at that. Now we have the flush draw and a jack. Coleman now ahead with that jack. Checks around to Bornstein. He's not going to fold the nut flush. Let's see what he does here. Oh, check, check. Interesting. Now he's going to fire. <laughs> Call this the delayed continuation bet. Yeah. Coleman's going to call. Meanwhile, I'm going to open this. What is? What are these called? Nutter butters. Nutter butters. Okay, I'm opening the nutter butters. Sometimes people will say nutter butter for uh, making the nuts in a poker hand. Mm -hmm. I got the nutter butters. Mm -hmm. Also, I have Oreo minis. You know our Oreo story, right? Mm -mm. So the first time that I ever worked on poker was in 2005. I was a card player intern, tournament reporter, not making a lot of money. Oh, no. And uh, covering your tournament. I do know the story. And we had a, 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 a blow-up, a Phil Hellmuth blow-up, and a, and a storm out of the room. It was one of the worst blow-ups. I think he might have got a penalty the next day for it. <laughs> but, and when the blow-up happened, you were snacking on some mini Oreos. It might have been chocolate chip. I'm not sure. It was a, a bag of little cookies. I'm eating, a, I'm eating a mini Oreo as we speak. Yeah. And now you do, at the time, used to blow up fairly regularly. But also, to your credit, you used to come back fairly regularly and apologize and shake everybody's hand. So, Phil leaves. He blows up. I'm like, that guy's never coming back. I pick up Phil's bag of mini Oreos because I'm an intern and I don't make any money. And I'm eating Phil's cookies. When Phil comes back into the room to apologize to everyone, Bornstein betting $1.3 I was just thinking he really doesn't have to bet this. He has ace high, which beats a lot of hands. And Trying I to fold out slightly better and does. What an unbelievable. Check the queen, queen, three, right? Jack on the turn. Fire, fire. Wow. Don't need them? Well played hand. Nice hand there from John Borenstein. 500. I mean, Thank I would have checked the ace, deuce of spades right back, thinking that the jack's going to call me and ace high is likely to be good there. You probably think more. So Phil so comes back right. into the room I to apologize it. to everybody I and locks eyes with me as I have ah. his Oreo cookies in my hands me. all over my face. And he looks yeah. at me, and I think I'm dead. I think I'm, Once you said I'm going to cause another blow up. Yeah. I think I that like, I'm going to get damn. fired. I like, and he looks right at me and he goes, it's okay, man. Don't worry about it. And that was our first interaction ever. He looked up at a very guilty look on your face and like, no problem. Yep, exactly. Absolutely right. Just, just destroyed. Nice. Behemed. Behemed, excuse me. By the way, I don't like I don't like the fold there. I mean, he folded too quickly, the jack town, right? You just just take an extra, you know. And you start wrecked last hand, too. 
Yeah, yeah almost like pre-decided if I get a bat, yeah. face a bat here, I'm just going to fold. Sometimes you there's a lost art of hand too. No, reading I had people, right? But maybe he made up his mind. Maybe he made the read and he's uh, <laughs> reaching for ships. And... <laughs> I got to say, I do the Nutter Butters and the <coughs> Oreos are something that I do pretty regularly at the World Series. <laughs> Get right, get right. That's right, Daniel. I am basically Costanza picking the donut out of the garbage. I think it was an eclair. 10 6 suited for Coleman. Out. Sergio folds. Four dues for Borenstein. And it is Baha Head's big blind. Bornstein going to try to limp in. Ace Queen for Baha Head. That has been the hand of the day today. Ace Queen has appeared by my count more than any other. just walked you, but. One one fifty thing. Since I've been in the booth, we've seen it a bunch of times. Yep. Plenty before that too. Interesting with the deuce four limping in there. You know, that's that's one of those hands which um you could fold. I it's a weird thing. I, I actually for me personally I limp one hundred percent of the small blinds, almost one hundred percent. And one re unless I have a super aggressive player in my left, then I like to make a big show of I folded the small blind. I use <laughs> that, you know, it's a tactic. But I defend a lot, but I'm also capable of, you know, limping in with ace-queen. So it's harder for them to raise me out. But I think you, know, you can fold deuce for what's the What's the counter argument against no, limping in with most things and letting <laughs> big blind realize their equity? So disrespectful. Uh, you know, I mean... None. None of the respect. I think that most people are less skilled playing poker after the flop. Okay. There's a lot more. It's a different game. Uh, there's pre-flop poker, which a lot of people are playing right now and are coached up to play a very specific way. Post-flop poker is just, there's too many variables to coach people on how to play. So, post-flop poker. Let's get them holding. past the point where they have all the practice, thinking about things pre-flop. Yep. Let's go post where they have less practice. Correct. Okay. And then where reads really come in, you know. If I limp in with 10 deuce of diamonds, uh, I'm going to fire out at every ace-king flop and just try to win it there, you know? That was like a good one. Look at that. Jack uh, nine folds really in the big one. blind. What's that? Like, Unheard of. Sorry, That's sloppy. I mean, Ping made a really tight check recently with the king-10 suited as well. I mean, he's he's now I have to, to, to think that Ping is just in super, super, super tight mode. He's just going to wait for... I mean, remember, it wasn't that, that long ago uh, where he had king-10 of diamonds. He flopped top two and he checked the river stakes. And I hate that check. Um, but it also tells you something about him. He just folded jack-9 in the big blind. So he's trying to avoid spots with weak hands or even stronger hands like king-10 on a king-10 5-5 board. And Open so he's really trying game. to avoid some of these spots and just yeah. wait Shut for up. a very Open solid hand, which is going to allow him to move up a lot. So, I, and sometimes I play that role of just being the super, super tight guy and just I don't waiting want people for everybody else to destroy themselves, waiting for everybody else to make mistakes, waiting for coolers that. to happen, and all of a sudden I have a hand I do have to play kings. Sure. And uh, well, I find we, uh, myself uh, yeah, second chip and three players left. It makes sense, too, with Ping's exact stack size, 30 big blinds, which is, you know, one where you have enough to protect by playing tight and a lot to lose. You know, losing five big blinds is a huge deal. Yep. He has jack nine, and, and you sometimes you wonder if it comes nine, eight, four. It's really hard to fold. Now, if you looked at the exact hand, sure, nine, eight, four is great because the other guy had the king, eight of spades. But nine, eight, four, when you have jack nine is a spot that's really hard to get away from. And if they just happen to have a real hand, it's a spot where you can lose a lot of chips. So then again, Ping's surrendering the button. He's kind of playing, um, you know, I really like his chances to make the top three. Action folds around to Dave Coleman.
Dave's limped in the small blind. Maybe he's read your book. <laughs> and Sergio decided to check back. Ten seven seven top pair for Ido. Not much for Coleman. Hmm? Goes so far as to say nothing. Can you pull for cocktails? Chat Pro Saturday, Neo just says, why is that guy wearing reflective glasses? If he doesn't look at his hand properly, people can see his hand through his glasses. Yeah, that's a question that that's a question that we have sometimes, but it's uh it's actually really, really hard. The way I can't think of a single time it's ever actually happened that Correct. someone's seen someone's cards in their glasses. Correct. I mean, uh, you, you see it on a movie or a TV show, but it doesn't. You know, it's not like the pros are holding their cards up in front of their face. Right. <laughs> but because of Chat Pro Saturday, great point, Neo. Just. Maybe he wants. Sorry. Maybe he wants his opponent to see his cards. <laughs> <A> double reverse. <laughs> now you're talking about some James Bond stuff. That's right. Let's see if I can show him that I'm bluffing, then he will bluff. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we've got movies and we've got real life poker. Speaking of James Bond, yeah, my, my sister Anne is here with me, right? She's a Special Olympic champion, and uh, she's actually in the booth with us. And uh, tomorrow, I love NFL football, right? So I've been okay. watching a lot, and so my sister's like, hey, um, I'm going uh, to go get myself a bag of chips because I want to watch a James Bond marathon tomorrow. I'm like, okay, that sounds really good. Perfect. <laughs> Why as don't you stay in your room and watch James Bond? As long as you have James two Bond? TVs, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she can stay in her room and watch James Bond, and I can be in my room and watch some NFL. Well, I'm sorry James isn't in here. James Hardigan, he's the biggest James Bond. I thought I was a big James Bond fan. I met Hardigan. He's like, well, in the original version of the script, it happened this way, but in the novel, it happened this way. And the, they had this actor on the set, but they had to fire her for... This sort of thing. It's coming up on three years. <laughs> he knows everything about James Bond. He knows Bond. everything. I love that. I mean, I think I think I'm a James. Well, I'm a James Bond fan. I don't know. You well, you must be too, right? I do. I like James Bond very much, and we uh, on our podcast, Poker in the Years, which you've been on before. Yeah. Uh, we had the poker consultant from Cas Casino Royale on our podcast. Oh, and, really? and so we kind of got to ask him. See, that hand from that. Now, you talk about unrealistic hands. That one wasn't so bad in the James Bond finale. And I got to tell you a couple things about that James Bond movie. OK, first of all, it's Casino Royale. I told my wife, and, and maybe I'm goofy, and here's an interesting hand where Sergio is, you know, slow playing his ace high, and he can't really fold the flop and can't really fold the turn. And, of course, I think uh, Ornstein's going to just uh, check back here. Really hard to, to bet a seven in that spot. Ten yeah. Check, check on the river. Yeah. This one's going to go to Bornstein. But the James Bond movie comes out, and it makes it into China. Okay. What are we talking, oh 2012 <laughs> maybe, 2008? Earlier, 2006, I, I think, is uh, Casino Royale. And I threw my hands up in the air, and I told my wife, I said, honey, we just made $10 million. Did you see Coles at the end of it? She's like, Did what are you, you talking about? Did you put the sound on for Coles at the end? Listen to this man at the end of it. <laughs> Why, did you have a piece of that movie? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, wait, wait, it gets, it gets better. I think my, my mic volume has stayed the same. Is there? You must probably turning down the. Wrong so the only thing I'm turning down is what you right hear. Here. Your mic volume is gonna is gonna sound the same out, out there to anybody. Oh, sorry. It's coming a little bit too loud for you me. You want so too loud for you? Okay, I'll turn it down. Yeah, I've been trying to. Sorry, guys. To come back to the story, I told my wife. I said, "Honey, we made we just made ten million dollars. Now this is '06, right? Now of course we didn't make ten million dollars from this. But I said the fact that poker got into China, oh, that I no see. limit hold 'em, that a scene unreleased." unedited from the James Bond movie made it into China, people are going to start loving No Limit Hold'em and that's going to cause a lot of people to play the game in China and 
you know, and so I was joking, we just made $10 million, although I wasn't really joking. I just thought, wow, in the long run, I'm going to end up making a lot of money, and so are all the poker players because this game has been released to 2 billion people. Got it. In China. Of course, my wife's like, what are you talking about? Is some money in the account? <laughs> so, uh, it's more know. like uh, an idea. <laughs> honey, I met in 15 years. Top two pair for Sammy the Dealer. Video is so good. And here's, the, and here's the argument for defending with Jack now. <laughs> 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 Will Lou feel compelled like, to continue after raising out. under the gun? Looks like yes. <laughs> okay, What's so that? just a very small continuation bet. And now remember, Ping just won a tournament three, four, five, six days ago. I'm going to remember that night. And so I think we can kind of say, wow, he's just playing super, super tight. His continuation risk, which I like, is 275, and that's been working for him. Okay, I like this just raise right away and end it. Of course, if we could see Ping's whole cards, we would smooth call, but he just wants to end it right here, right now. That's fine. I, I like the check raise, personally. This generation likes the call with queens and nines, like the younger generation. There's a lot more check calling uh, yeah. in the current meta than when I, I first came on the scene back in 2005, which was you would be mocked. Yeah. If it's good enough to call, it's good enough to raise. Remember phrases like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Hold it well, then what happens is, of course, the running three, four diamonds comes off, and you lose the hand, and everybody says, oh, that was so you played the hand so bad. You should have raised with queens and nines. You know, uh, you let the guy get there. And, uh, you know, and that oh, yeah, was one like way of kind of like, you know, shooting the people that weren't. Huh? I think of it as a pack. <laughs> There's a pack, imagine, of 10,000 people moving along. And now they like GTO, and then they oh, like Jack this, down. and then they like that. Now they like solvers. Huh. And at the back what of the it? pack is a stream of like people Hi. who are a little bit behind. How's it going? When mm -hmm. they miss a play Great of hand, it's you. like the pack shoots them with a the gun Virtually. and puts them right sort in the of. middle of the pack. Oh, you made a Great mistake. You've got to you gotta follow us. And I love that about poker, that everybody's in this pack together. And then Great my problem, my, my, not problem, my job is to then figure Someone's out what the pack is doing and how to beat the pack. Mm -hmm. But to go back to queen nine hand, I, I, I like the check raise. It's fine. But I, there, but this generation, right, all everybody under the age of 30, so to speak, would have just called really? with the queens and nines, right? Mm -hmm. And some good things can happen. But I don't think Ping is the kind of guy who's going to bluff a lot. So you That's basically need him to hit an ace, you know. It what certainly happened? should be a little bit more player dependent than race, some yeah. folks make it out to be. Yep. 8-0 with nines. And Lou folds the big blind. And certainly if he's folding jack nine, he's folding nine four suited. It took him an extra second to fold there. Probably a little tilted after losing the last uh, 3.6. I mean, emotions enter into this, That's folks. You people at home watching. You, you, everybody plays a little bit differently after losing a hand. Uh, for one or two, three hands, five minutes. And you have to be able to understand that that, that person is playing differently and then adjust yourself, you know. So to be very specific, all I'm saying is with the 9-4 diamonds there, he just took an extra few seconds to fold because he lost the hand before. I don't think people talk about stuff like this on the stream very much. No, you're right. It's good to get your perspective in here. Actions folded to Sam of the Dealer, who makes it 300K. Huh? Sam of the Dealer is the dealer on this hand. He's on the button. You got it. You got Home it. with King-8 suited. My pleasure. Ping snap folded King Whatever 9 you guys and Coleman want, is going to each. call with Fuck it. King David could have suited. 20 bucks too. David could have 20 bucks too. Coleman starts the hand with 26 big blinds. Five balls. I can tell you this, after watching this, the next time I play poker with Ping, I'm going to feel like he always has it. <laughs> right. If he's, I mean, he may not play as tight um, unless he's at a final table with major ICM considerations. Who knows? Yeah. I like the check back from Sammy. Good chat pro comment here from Julia who says, 
pings a mid-high stakes cash game. Aria Beast, how does Phil the Ambassador not know him? Yep, turns out Phil doesn't doesn't know him, Julia. <laughs> Chat Pro Saturday. Good stuff. I am, I am, well, that's funny, actually. I am an Ari uh, uh, representative since, like, two th since they opened, since 09, I've been wearing an Aria shirt or logo of some sort. It doesn't mean that I play uh, a lot of the, uh, I don't play a lot of cash games in Vegas, period. That pot does go to Sammy, who's still chip leader, 61 big blinds. Things starting to get a little shallower. 61 big blinds, the chip leader, 23 big blinds for Ping, who's at the bottom, and David Coleman with 25 big. So not a lot of distance between chip leader and the folks on the bottom. That was my bad. Usually uh, the guest is plugged into my area and you're uh, you're plugged into Hardigan who's got his stuff turned up real loud. You can use that one if you want. Go for it. This one? Yeah. It's just sensitive. Okay, there we go. That's perfect. Okay, sorry. I was turning the wrong knob the it whole was, time. It was, yeah, to the player, to the people <laughs> at home, like I kept saying it's my ears hurt. It's too loud. It's too loud. It's too loud. <laughs> and and he, he kept turning it down, down, down. It was the wrong one. And just then apes. I was like, well, now I can't hear anything. <laughs> All right, here we go. Queen 10 versus Queen Jack. Interesting flop. Jack 8 3. So let's see here what Sergio does. I'm going to predict he calls. I've been wrong once or twice with him already. You got to have hope of. Occasionally spike in the nine here. Yep. Well, queens and tens also potentially good. Four diamonds, however. Your born scenes in the spot. He has jacks with a queen kicker. Now the diamond hit, and so he, you know, he doesn't want to get himself in trouble by making a bet here and getting raised. But he's chosen the aggressive line of firing right out. So many hands he beats. Basically, the only hand he doesn't beat is a flush. Still, so that's a spot I think Bornstein, I think a, a lot of the pros are just going to check back there with Jack there for a lot of reasons. One is you can pick off a bluff on the river. The other is you don't want to end up getting check raised. You're also, I don't know, I think in my case, again, my limited experience, who's anything to prevent that hmm? last diamond from yeah. coming out. Wife, yeah. Girl. On the Long other hand, as, as it turns out, a diamond well, would have been maybe the kind of card that Sergio bluffs well, bluff, at. bluff, right. Yeah, right. absolutely. And the wife over there. She doesn't want to be in camera. <laughs> little round of applause huh? from yeah. Jonathan's I rail. No rail. Girlfriend Linnea out there. Oh, I'm stay home. Not yet. Too soon. I uh, spoke with David. David Lou. David Lou. Yeah. yeah he, I, was, I had dinner with him last night. Okay, yeah. He's Ready? out here? Yeah, he's out here. I haven't seen him in a while. He, he texted me about you last night. Coleman on the button with 10 8 suited. And a much bigger 10 for Bornstein. Bornstein has been the most aggressive player we've seen in the last, you know, half hour of coverage for sure. It's interesting, we just watched somebody fold ace 9 a club, somebody else folded ace 9, and now Bornstein has ace 10. All in? And jams on Coleman. Jams. Wow. Coleman with 23 big blinds. Bornstein says. Not allowed to cheer. <coughs> Let's play for all of it. We beat David in the pot. No cheering allowed. <laughs> so Bornstein is definitely the most, most aggressive player so far that we've seen. Good job, Coles. Yeah, I'm doing great. Doing great. 
think we lost the most aggressive player, Nick Schulman. The bar is wide. But of the survivors, mm -hmm. John's certainly been active. Is John a pro or what's? I what's think he's. I think he's a poker pro. Yeah, I've seen his name around. You know, I haven't covered American poker in a really long time, so I'm not super familiar. But he. I'm okay. He, thank you. Well, with this game, but I do know who he is. Can I get a the chat will tell us, right? In fact, I have some uh, information on him here. Let's see what we got on John Borenstein. Can I get a Pellegrino, please? Thank you. So, yeah, he's got 2.3 million in caches over 10 years of live poker. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. no slouch. Yep. Four six-figure payouts. Look at this. Now, Coleman raised with... Uh, no, just from it was just last hand, right? That <laughs> just last hand, he got jammed on, and now he has ace jack. And this time he's not getting jammed on, I don't think. Oh, close enough. He gets three bet at least. I mean, this is a very unlucky spot for Cole. He just got jammed on, and so he's got to be thinking, wow, this guy is. He just moved in last hand, and so now he has very serious consideration whether he wants to jam here with the ace jack or not. If he does jam, and if he does go broke, that's a lot of ifs.
Yeah. Did we get more information about Three, Bornstein? Seven. He's 2.3 million he cash for you, And he, he went super deep in the, uh, the Colossus. Like yeah, what the hell is that? This oh, year, I believe. Eighth place. It literally just Man, how many people were in that tournament? 21,000 plus. <laughs> 21,000, you made it to eighth. That's a, that's a stat you can respect. Yeah, for sure. It's interesting, though. If you look at someone's resume and they have a lot of sevenths, eighths, ninths, they're usually super aggressive players. And a lot of min caches, not so aggressive. All right, well, action is folded around to Sergio Ido. Yeah, they the made it. Blind. And they, but there are also some firsts with that, right? So more seventh, eighths, and nines and firsts. Um, And Ido makes it, oh, makes it big. Yeah, you know, the reason the reason he made it big is he really doesn't want, you know, he wants to send Bornstein a message, I have it. Being told that the stream had been down for a little bit and we're back, you didn't miss, miss major. We, some okay hands, but no major all-ins, huge pots, anything like that. They missed the battles between Coleman and Bornstein. There were like three hands that they played back to back to back, basically. But we do apologize for the loss of service. Ace, Ace, King. Pair of kings for Edo. So Edo came out before the flop. Did you see how much he bet? 575,000. Correct. Much bigger than the min plus raise of 325 we've been seeing, which is the standard. Yeah, that's almost 4x. It's a tough board for me to win on. So just to recap, dealer Sammy has the chip lead right now. 61 big. Sergio, 55. Jonathan Bornstein briefly held the chip lead. Bornstein now, had the chip lead for one hand while we were off stream. Has 52 bigs now, and then after those three, Coleman with 24 and Ping Lu with 22. Ping with ace tray suited under the gun. Makes it 325, there's that standard raise. <laughs> Two other aces folded. Slightly better pocket jacks for Borenstein. Yep. Someone in chat wanted me to use this joke. The, the Borenstein pair. Almost works as Berenstein bear. That's why I gave him credit. If it had been really good, I would have just stolen the joke. The <laughs> Bernstein bear. I mean the Borenstein bear. I mean the Bernstein bear. <laughs> Now, of course, Luke can just fold here, but uh, but I will say, since you've been gone, Bornstein has been super aggressive. Welcome back, James. Thank you very much, Phil. Hello, Joseph. Hey, buddy. We I'm actually, Phil organically brought up James Bond. No. <laughs> yes. I really did. Phil, you've got to wait till I'm here before you do that. You can't bring up James Bond in my absence. Otherwise, Anne, I feel I feel, I feel feel left out. Anne is a huge James Bond fan, and she's going to watch a, a marathon tomorrow. So so you can imagine how happy I was, because I love NFL football. And my sister's here, and she's a Special Olympic champion, so I have to spend the day oh, with her. Whoa, oh, whoa, my whoa, goodness. Whoa. Okay, let's come back to that. Yeah. The reason that Ping Lu moved in here is because Bornstein has been super aggressive. And so he finds himself in a bad spot, but he's like, this guy's been raising and re-raising and betting and raising and re-raising. And so if Ping Lu goes broke, his excuse to his friends will be, this guy was a maniac. I had to do it. So Lu, the at-risk player here. Are we allowed to make side bets in the booth? <laughs> we can make a gentleman's side bet. I mean, James, I'm, I'm like, I'll take two to one and I'll bet on Lou's hand. Oh, no, oh. I just can't do that because two aces are gone. Never mind. Oh, oh my. But there you should have trusted your gut, Phil. Two threes on the flop. This is so sick. Oh, how unlucky is this for two jacks? I mean, if he raised with ace three, the ace four and the ace six folded. <laughs> He's still somehow. Oh, my goodness. 
That is Phil Hellmuth unlucky right there. Yeah, I was about to take, I, if I would have remembered it was the two aces, I would have just beat James for like 600. And the last ace! <laughs> I would have just beat James for 600. He would have laid like five here. to one. I am How never, much would you have bet? I put, never, put the case three ever out there just so he jacks every single in the spot, hour. ever. If you thought I was ever, <laughs> ever going to take the jacks here, you are mistaken. You think I ever, oh, oh, my God! What the hell? Oh, my God! Oh my God. So, Trips on the flop, full house on the turn, quads on the river, Lou doubles up through Borenstein. What? He basically took an unplayable hand in an unplayable spot and turned it into the triple nuts. Overkill poker gods. Can I, I mean... just say, I'm so glad we got the stream back up and running in time for that hand. What the heck <laughs> is happening? For the avoidance of doubt, it was not sabotage. Sometimes you're reliant on your partners, right? And sometimes there are major tech companies. I'm not going to mention any names, but let's just say there's a big river in South America um, that let you down. But luckily, we're back up. You got to see that hand, and we get to see this through to its I conclusion. I know that river, the Amazon River. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be subtle, Phil. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, and we're down again. <laughs> you, you knew I had to tease you right back, right? <laughs> <laughs> you knew I wasn't going to let that fly, right? <laughs> All you mentioned was a river. I still can't get over that hand. Unbelievable. He, he can't, the ace is one out. Then he hits the two threes, and then there's one three left, and that hits two. I mean, put some respect on his name. That is He's wild. Well, on the turn, he hit the case ace, and on the river, he hit the case three. Bang, bang, bang. That is so silly. So Bornstein, with all of his aggressive play, found himself in just a wonderful spot there. But? But the poker guys had other plans. Now Ping Lu, he's gonna fold, but he briefly thought about just raising, re-raising. He needs your support right now, guys. He just won a pot, he needs some support. Great job, Brad. Does he deserve support after that hand? Now that Shulman's gone, yes. He needs he needs a little yeah, bit of he needs a, a little bit of uh, I mean I'd let him get a hug right now. A railing crew kind of cheer, some hollers, some whoops, some golf applause. Hold on, I'll do a little golf applause. But no, for the avoidance of doubt, I was never gonna think in a million years Jacks were gonna hold there because there's always an ace on the desk. It just happened to be accompanied by three threes. <laughs> Oh my god. What a ridiculous hand. And still five handed at this final table with 30 minutes left on this level before we put the blinds up. Oh, there goes the chat. Oh, Helmius in the chat, and he's already trying to make side bets. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, and he was right. He would have won the side bet. Except you couldn't find anyone who'd take the side bet. <laughs> I couldn't find anybody to take the side bet. Pings back to Ping's way. This Forward. is a fairly common story, Phil, in the, the I don't, you tournaments know, we've been covering. is The, the blind is getting shallower and shallower at five-handed, four-handed, six-handed even. It's what I call ICM handcuffing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's pretty normal. The same thing, same thing in the studio. A lot of times we'll start day two at, um, uh, like, what, 1 p.m. because we know the turn's going to be over by 5, and everybody wants to rebuy at 5.15. Now Ping just folded deuces. Very interesting. Hey, guess what? It's Coleman against Bornstein again. Unfortunately, uh, the stream was out, and we missed all of their previous battles. Yeah, it went out during the Queens versus Ace Jack hand when Bornstein had three bet. Ace Jack did eventually fold. Coleman yep. had Ace Jack and folded. Which was an impressive fold only because he had moved in the hand before. And these are the bottom two stacks in the leaderboard. 900. Just 
so weird. I mean, John, Jonathan Bornstein, like literally 10 hands ago, was a chip leader or less. I think less, yeah. Yeah. I'm just happy here that I don't have two diamonds in my hand and I can fold. <laughs> yeah. There's some dynamics between these two players, as I mentioned. So it does seem like you should be able to get away from ace 10. Told both Borenstein and Coleman are New Jersey legends. A couple of questions on YouTube. I want to quickly address the first is for you, Phil. Aaron Smith wants to know: Do you travel to Europe much anymore? Uh, you know, it's interesting. I found myself in Italy twice, but completely not poker related. Um, we had some crazy birthday party over there. Go ahead. I should be careful what I say. All right. Lake Como, Clooney, Timberlake. <laughs> well, name's even bigger than Clooney and Timberlake. That's why I can't say it. Well, Nick Kohler has a question relating to the charity events being held here at Resorts World Las Vegas. Wait, before says, you cut, I will say this. We, yes. did take, we did take the Global Express this to Italy. Yeah. And then we helicoptered into the resort. <laughs> now, I never left the resort, right? They're like, Phil, we, we really want you to play poker eight hours oh, a day yeah, with us. Right. Okay, oh, right. I can play poker. They're my best friends. But, you know, as a poker player, oh, know. they want me to play poker with four. the billionaires every day. Okay. And uh, <laughs> but I never left the resort. Most of them uh, went and saw the statue of, you know, these great statues that were close by. Um, but, yeah, it was kind of, of a crazy, classics. fun trip. Yeah, it was somebody's birthday party. Somebody flew in, like, the Cirque du Soleil for one of the nights. I mean, it was just every night was this crazy, fun party. But then poker started at, like, 9, and we'd play till we'd play outdoors till like, right. you know, until the sun came up, five, six in the morning. What do um, old Italian statues in poker have in common? Ooh, I want to hear this one. I don't know, Joe. What do old Italian statues in poker have in common? Stone nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated that. <laughs> uh, Nick Kohler, to answer your question, the VIP Invitational on the 16th at Resorts World is invitation only. But the same day, there is a $200 buy-in charity event, as there is on the 17th and the 18th. So the 2 p.m. $200 Where? charity events, those three days, oh, are yeah, open no, to no. everyone. Okay, so to be very clear, the 16th, uh, which I'm told you guys are emceeing, but I'll probably help out for an hour. Yeah, or absolutely. We've got to have you there. Because I emcee these charity tournaments all over the world. It's so much fun well, for me. Well, we've got two tournaments to cover, Phil. So we're going to have to divide and conquer because we've got the yeah. VIP Invitational and we've got the $200 buy-in one as well running simultaneously. Yeah. Look, James and I make a great team. Me and Phil make a great team. I'm sure that the three of us together are just going to knock it out of the park. I have fun emceeing these charity poker tournaments. Like I said, I've raised $75 million doing these. And it's just so much fun. And I get to get on the mic and I get to rap. And I get to make fun of people. I, I Look, there's been a couple of times that I've been hosting something. You come and take the mic for a while. People love it. Yeah, people seem it. to like it, yeah. And now the 17th and the 18th, those are the tournaments that everyone can play in. And they start at what time? No, as I said, there's one on the 16th as well. So, so they've got the VIP and the $200 running side by side on the 16th. And then on the 17th and 18th, right? 2 p.m. Yeah. Every day, 2 p.m. Okay. So there's three $200 open events and then on the 16th there's also the vip invitational which is a free roll but that is for invited guests only perfect i'm coming the 16th 17th and 18th i'd rather like do the garage tours and there's a lot going on here on the uh on the 18th and 19th yeah i think there's qualifying races too and yeah yeah like the beautiful thing about winning the poker stars package to come here is you're going to be able to you know, go to the lounge and watch the, you'll be able to actually be on the track watching the race. Absolutely. Uh, some of the stars, uh, some of the stars winners are going to have a chance to go to the 
garage, right? Close. For Red Bull or no? Am I wrong? The, the, we have the Red Spade Pass winners who haven't even arrived in town yet. But yes, they will be in the Koval oh, yeah. Strait Hospitality Suite yeah. with Oracle Red Bull <laughs> Racing <laughs> and PokerStars cool. able to watch. As you said, Phil, the practice, the qualifying and the race yeah. itself. Man, I was surprised all these races start so late at night. 10 p.m., 11 p.m.? Uh, this is unusual. Formula One is normally daytime. It's because it's Vegas. It's because the time difference. So if you think about it, the race at 10 p.m. at night, it'll be Sunday morning TV in Europe. Right, right, right. That makes sense. I saw something that started at like 1 a.m. It must, must be... Uh, qualifying is at midnight. Yeah, it's super late. Yeah. I better shift my schedule. We got a raise and a call with a Three big nine. hand to act in the big blind. Ship it. Not quite all in, but enough. Sergio finally stepped out with the 10 7 of diamonds and got re smacked. Couldn't even get to the flop. These players are getting more and more bunched nice. together, chip stack wise. Yeah. The shortest stack is 28 bigs. The biggest stack is 56 bigs. That is Sammy Beshahed, who has so the slight advantage over Sergio Aido, who's playing 54 big blinds right now. Flop. Is Pinglu <laughs> still in there? He was. Pinglu is still in there, right in the middle. Oh, yeah, that's right. He made quads. <laughs> he made the triple nuts, I'd like to call it. That wasn't you? Trips I mean, was good, full house was good, <laughs> quads were good. I mean, if you're going to lose with jacks, <laughs> lose in style, right? Yeah. Just, right, just lose, to lose. lose yeah. more and if more on every street. If you somehow get all of the outs your opponent We're can hit out name. of the way in one hand <laughs> and stop them from hitting another hand, you would do that. Poor, poor you. <laughs> it wasn't him. It was not him. <laughs> All right, Bornstein feels better. He took the jack speed, but now he's got a smile on his face. He won the last hand. He's back. They do seem to be having fun, and I like that. I love it. Yep. That's a really nice flop for Ping Lu. Ooh, sure is. He has dealer, as you call him, dealer Sam. Dealer Sammy drawing dead-ish. Oh, look at that. I'm surprised it's 12%. I guess that's right, two outs. That is 200. Pretty thin. Oh, backdoor clubs, yeah. It's all about the back doors. Two hundred and fifty thousand apiece. Five of hearts on the turn. Now Bash your head is drawing to two outs. Now it should go check check. Here I made all this, all this for the for the stream, talking about how Ping Lu was playing so tight. He's going to get his money in good. He's making all these folds. He jammed with Ace Three. Yeah. Okay, now Sammy might go for the small little like two three hundred blocker bet. If he checks, Ping Lu is going to bet about four or five hundred. I was about to touch that. Six hundred, too much. Ping Lu's going to call in four, three, two, one. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> okay. And Ping Lu is going to win this pot. I think and you could block her bet for a little bit less there if you're Sammy. And these two players are going to switch places on the leaderboard. Ping Lu catapults into second place and is not that far behind Sergio Aido now. Blinds going up in 20 minutes' time. I just remembered before that Ace 3 Jacks collision, we were talking Bond, James Bond. That's right. Bond. So, what, so what's the story, Phil? Well, I told I told a more interesting story where when the when that when the Casino Royal hand made it into China, I threw my hands up and told my wife we just made ten million dollars. She looked at me like I'm crazy. I said, Well, not this year or next year, but Poker's into No Limit Hold'em made it into China. Which Unbelievable, and money. that's going to cost two. It's going to a ton of people are going to see it, and it's going to be great for the game. Um, maybe we'll make ten million, but maybe it maybe it'll, it'll take twenty years. 
by 2026, James. We'll get there. Okay. You'll so, know he got there when he calls someone an idiot from northern China. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look what happened. You know, we have a we have a game that you know, Duan, Duan, Tom Duan was playing in over there, right? The and this was, you know, maybe six years after the movie, and they're playing obscene stakes. And Tom tells me that, uh, you know, of the ten richest people in China, four billionaires were in that game with them. And he said they're so powerful that one time he tried to sleep after 30 hours, and one of the guys owned the hotel. Went into his room and started tapping him on the shoulder. Oh my God! <laughs> he jumps up. Two hours sleep. His eyes are bleary. And he's like, "We need you to play. We need you to play." And Tom's like, "Yeah, of course. Let me get some coffee. I'll be down there half an hour." Wow, good sport, Tom. Dwan. Chocolates. I mean, he was probably doing pretty well in the game, also. Yeah, those are bigger than twenty. Was I supposed to tell that story? I liked it. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, go on. So in China, do they just call Chinese poker poker? Bill's <laughs> 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 nodding. <laughs> right now, Ping Lu's trying to, just starting to consider getting active here, right? No. No. No action from Lou. Yeah, I mean, calls are like pretty close. All right, Coleman on 26 blinds. He's going to call, but he's going to consider raising. Yeah, he used two times and folded. Wow. Surprised. It's one of those weird spots if you have great yeah, reading abilities. Oh, and he did it. Look at that. Wow, would never have thought that. Good job, Coleman. 26 big blinds just jammed in with ace-deuce. That's the kind of thing that I will try to do when I read my opponent for being weak. You know? If I think he's weak, I'm just moving in there. But I think it's pretty standard just to call there. I not closed. Did you shove? Sure did. All right, back to James Bond. What do you got for me? No, I want to know about the Bond marathon. So basically, you're watching football tomorrow, and, and your sister's watching Bond films? She's going to watch the James Bond marathon. Fantastic. So, yep. Um, do you know, you probably know this, Roger Moore played a lot of played a lot of poker. Yeah. Yes. Huh? That. You know who he played yeah. with? No. Uh, the Prince uh, from... Uh, well, they live in Monaco, right? Yeah. Yeah. 350? Mm-hmm. So Prince Roger Prince Albert. Moore, yeah, he played, allegedly played with Prince Albert. Um, and they would play, um, maybe it was Prince Albert's father, but I think it was, they would play on a yacht in, you know, in that area, and they played a lot. Love me some Roger Moore. Yeah. Then the story is about Roger Moore, about how kind he was to fans and what a good sport he was, um, really kind of warm your soul. It also, you know, I think that two things, and again, oh God, I want to go into a kind of massive bond rant in the middle of the final table, again, for what will be like the probably the 86th time. Someone out there is keeping track. But number one, the Connery movies haven't dated that well. I think the Roger Moore films hold up better looking through the lens of 2023. But also, Connery in real life sounds like a bit of an a-hole, whereas yeah. Roger Moore kind of sounds like the kind of guy you definitely, definitely would want to hang out with. Yeah, exactly. I tell you, I, maybe it's just me, but I think of someone who's playing in a you know high stakes poker game. Generally speaking, good people, skills to get along with other people, because you're not inviting the a hole back. Yeah, you're just not. You're like, what the fuck? My life's too short, you know. And then I think of the guys that you know, the guys that I play high stakes poker with. We just needle each other a lot and have fun. There's a lot of you know. Um, I think you have to be able to handle the needling and you have to be able to dish it out. Yep. So what's going on with that game? Is it what's, you got Calacanis, Sax, Chamath? I can talk about that game. Oh, look at this. Let's take a look. All right, Ooh. okay. Peng Lu with the Queens. Oh, nobody has anything, okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've talked about that game they talk about on the podcast. Right. They're, all, they're all in podcasts. This number is like top 20 it's in the world. It's high. It's really, yeah. In the world. I mean, I remember they were happy. Oh, we're in the top 1,000 podcasts. And it just kept going. So I tried to convince some of the higher ups here that the All In Summit should have a poker, should be an NAPT basically. 
I bet they do that. You know, I, I bet they would actually consider doing that. That's I mean, it's a perfect marriage. I mean, yeah, for yeah, sure. The podcast is called All In. I don't know if you know this, like 800 people paid $8,000 for VIP tickets for the last All In I did know that. And they sold out quick. Oh, they sold out quick. And my friends were calling me. I can't get a ticket for 8000 Can you get one for me? And they did. They did. You know, my friends. I, I could email them and get that done. But So Ping Lu has now taken the chip lead, by the wow. way. No way. Wow. Here's the shortest stack. Five minutes ago. <laughs> And all in with Ace three, but I think that's <laughs> all right. The double up, sure. The double up, but also that Must speaks to how ago. kind of bunched together they are now. Yeah. 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 We do the all in summit at an NAPT, and then we just put you guys on the TV stage and have you do your home game. Oh wow, this is interesting. Okay, so Sammy re raced with the Ace four. Sammy currently third in chips. Pretty much tied with Sergio Aido, actually. They've both got 50 big blinds. Blinds going on for 14 yeah. minutes, which means we are an hour into this level. Phil, I know you said you'd stay for an hour. I'm not trying to get rid of you. Just trying to let you know that you are, you fulfilled your commitment and then some. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I always do a little longer than I'm supposed to, so I'm staying a little <laughs> while longer. Here. Plus, I'm having fun. With the James Bond talk is fun, too. Well, you've come to the right stream if you want James Bond talk. We have established, and Statric did run it, that we have currently had zero streams in the last five years where Bond has not been brought up into the conversation. Did you already do your Bond trivia about the surrounding area on the stream? Yes, definitely. Okay. But I'll happily do it again. Do it for Phil. So the weird thing is, the James Bond film Sorry. Diamonds Are Forever, where Bond comes to Vegas, all the hotels, or most of the hotels featured in that movie, are still standing, which is ridiculous when you, you consider doing? the fact that oh buildings don't last in this city. What year was 500? that? 1971. Wow. Yeah, I mean, how many how many hotels are actually left? So here's my question: how, Can you name them? There are three hotels featured in that movie that are still standing in Las Vegas that Bond visits in that movie. One of them, I'll give you a hint. One of them is insanely close to this one. Mm. Okay, let's see here. The Dunes Hotel is gone. That's now the Bellagio. I used to play poker at the Dunes. Much closer to Resorts World. Hmm. I and just to clarify, because Mort says must be downtown. Now, of course, there is a car chase downtown, and yes, some of those hotels are still standing, but Bond Binions. doesn't visit them. Binions. Bond doesn't go into those. He goes uh, into he goes into a couple of resorts on the Strip and one that's just off the Strip. No, I thought you Las Vegas Hilton. Oh, I, I spoke to him the other day in the Which is now I called the out. Westgate. And yes, that's one of them. Yes. The Westgate was I'll the... I'll count it. it the counts. Westgate was the White House. That was the hotel where Blofeld mm -hmm. was in the penthouse. So, yes, you're one. There's two others. And Joe gave you a major clue, Phil. One of them is very, very close to Resorts World, like literally yeah, next door. Yeah, but I'm not great at remembering where all the casinos are. Riviera? That got blown up a few years ago. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, meanwhile, Sergio's <laughs> seven just held up against fours for a smallish pot. But there are no smallish pots because he goes to 56 big blinds, which is almost tied for first. Now, I have to come back to, to the Bond thing. Like, growing up in America, watching the Bond movies, every, I think, every kid fantasized themselves to be James Bond. You know, uh, oftentimes there was almost every movie, there's betting involved, right, of yep. some sort. So you wanted to be a very skilled better. There were always a lot of... Um, <clears throat> Attractive ladies... You said it, not me. I didn't get canceled. And travel was a huge part of it as well, the I, exotic locations. I was a one-liner guy. I just like the one-liners. <laughs> the one-liners, yeah. yeah. And there were some great one-liners. Yeah. Yeah. The travel, and then he was all physically fit, taking care of himself, able to just run down villains and this expert marksman. And so just, just so many things that when you're a kid, you're like, this is so cool. And you just couldn't wait for the next James Bond movie oh, no. to come out. And so, uh, this was and you grew up in, this was in, the pink in, in England. Where in England? In the London suburbs. Yeah. Oh, okay, you basically grew up in London. Oh, yeah. I'll just call you London. And so, same thing, except maybe, maybe it was even cooler because he was British. Absolutely. It was kind of like an action hero who's British. You know, it's kind of the ultimate kind of film franchise that the UK has produced. 
Would you say, and, and written, of course, too, by... Ian by, Fleming. Yeah, Fleming. All right, okay. here's a question for you. So let, let me ask you this. So would you say that James Bond is the biggest, most important fictional character? We're going to take Harry Potter out. Ooh, there's another okay. one. Though. There's another one. Oh, I want to hear his answer. I, I'm hugely biased, but I'm going to say yes. Okay. And then who do you think's up there? Up to Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Gotta be up there. I think as a movie <laughs> good franchise. Point. Good for point. movies. Yeah. I think for movies over, what is it now, 60 plus years. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything bigger than Bond. By the way, just to finish the question, because otherwise people are going to be left hanging. Circus Circus was the hotel I was alluding to this okay. next door. The third one, we did talk about the third one. Plenty O'Toole gets thrown out of a hotel window and lands in a swimming pool. Which hotel? And Joe, you've stayed there in the last few years. A hotel that was standing in 1971 that you stayed in in the last few years. Uh, sorry, and it's still called the same thing? And it's on the strip. Tropicana. Correct. I like. I have a soft spot for Tropicana. I have a Bond question for Phil. What was okay. the first Bond movie you saw in the theater? Do you remember? Probably. Uh, no, I, I'm not sure I remember. I, but I do think it was probably Roger Moore. And I think I watched the other ones on television probably with my parents or whatever. Good talking strategy. Okay, look at this. Interesting. So Sergio uh, goes for it with 5-6. And... The good word. Cohen somehow calls with Queen-7. <laughs> what were the positions with Sergio? Uh, where was he in this hand? Sergio was on the button. No, I think he, I think last hand he was either big blind or was under the gun. So he's in the small blind this hand. Okay, so he was big blind, okay. Sorry, Queen. big blind, excuse me. He's in the big blind this hand. No, he's in the small blind this hand, yeah. was in the big blind okay, last so. hand. Yeah. So Coleman limped in with queen seven of diamonds and Sergio's like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to make my move 6-5 here. And get a card. Oh. card that. Here we go again. Now remember, Sergio in this exact position had King Jack of Spades, and he opened for nearly four X. James, I don't think you were here. No. Four X. Well, he's opening into Borenstein, who has more chips than he did last time. Bornstein had 23 big blinds. Now is 30. Wow. Probably not. Still shoving on him. Wow. Thirty big blind shove with ace nine. I'm not sure what I would have done if I don't there. like it. James? I mean I wouldn't, but then again, as we previously stated, I probably wouldn't be in this situation. 30 is just, it just feels Eight, like just too much to risk Reduces. there, you know? Do you get called by worse? When someone's got 30 big I blinds. Mean, someone's got 10 big blinds, they got to call you with ace-8 and ace-7. Yeah, king queen, exactly. I don't think you get called by worse. I mean, maybe somebody plays king-queen suited, congratulations. 60, you know, 55, 45, or 54, or 46, whatever it is. I don't like it. I mean, you could accomplish the same thing by just making it like five big ones. I like it because I don't have to think. 30 big blinds, ace, ace nine. nine there. Yeah, just like, okay, well, I'm done. Yeah, you're done when the guy snap calls you with ace queen. <laughs> <laughs> I want calls to win. I want calls to succeed, just not against me. Yeah. You guys start drinking over there? Oh. So you need to make a little bet here. 300's enough. It's really your birthday? Huh? It's really your birthday? Today? Tuesday. Tuesday. My birthday party's at 8 tonight. Well, I hope we're I'm done sure in time. I'm not sure if we make it yet or not. <laughs> 
Happy, Tuesday, that's uh, my girlfriend's birthday. birthday. Thanks. Are you going to cancel? What? What? <laughs> Are they gonna go without you? What? Are they gonna go without you? I don't know. I gave the deposit for the place already. <laughs> <laughs> Are they discussing the prospect they might still be playing this final table on Tuesday? Yeah, or maybe that mm -hmm. um, he hasn't won enough money to cover the bill if there's a deposit. It doesn't sound cheap. They don't ask for a deposit at Applebee's, I'll tell you that much. Sure don't. So how long have you guys been in the booth together? How many years? It's now 13 years, so we've told this story a couple of times. I don't think it's worth repeating. The first time we met, the first time we worked together, albeit briefly, because Joe just came in to do a bit of guest commentary, was the last time there was an NAPT in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. So that was February 2010. And then so. the first time they partnered us together was the very next NAPT stream from Mohegan Sun. So the NAPT coming back is very kind of... This, this sentimental attachment for us. because So one of your contracts just expired. They said, you're going to do all the NAPTs, and you guys said yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you just stayed on board waiting 13 years That's for the right. next NAPT. Now one of you's gone, though, I guess. Imagine imagine uh, that Guns N' Roses album, Chinese <laughs> Democracy. They were like in the, – the engineer is on retainer for all 15 years it took them to make that album. Imagine I was getting paid for <laughs> NAPTs this entire time and just not doing them. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. Yes, and I remember... Um, I, I, I see you guys lasting another six, seven years together. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a lot. <laughs> I that's, thought that's, like, that's pretty incredible. You think about, like... People that have done stuff together for a TV format, it's very rare you can sure. name anybody that's made it 13 years. I, if Lon and Norm can make it more than two decades, I'd okay. like to think we can do the same. Okay. Okay, but I'm just going to say this. Lon and Norm basically box. worked, for a long time, they only worked two or three weeks. Right? That's true. We spent a lot more time together than that. Yeah, you guys travel sure. all over the world. So, I, and for the people at home listening, I said six or seven years. I thought I was going to compliment. They <laughs> laughed because they're like, no, we're together 20 more years. Phil. Absolutely. My, my mortgage has another 28 <laughs> years on it. I need to last 28 more years. You've got a long-form mortgage. <laughs> we're going to be shuffling in here with our Zimmer frames. Exactly. Hello, my babies. Look, if they, if they pay me enough, <laughs> that's right. Then everyone will actually be babies to me at that point. As long as, hey, if they pay me enough that I can retire in six or seven years, I love your prediction. <laughs> Here comes tapes. <laughs> Age it's just 78 my, years it's, old. It's my head in a Hello, jar. Hello, my babies. <laughs> Hold on. Let me put my teeth in. <laughs> 78's not that old anymore. No, it isn't. Well, it is. I mean, it's not older than they expect you to work still. Hmm. Man, I said I thought I was giving a compliment. You guys will make it the other six, seven years. They laughed at me. Folks at home, they laughed at me. Replay that. Rewind it. <laughs> They're like six, seven more years. We'll be together for twenty. By the way, how old will you be in twenty more years, James? I'll be sixty-eight in twenty more years. Okay, I can see that. Still, that's ten years younger than Norman Chad is now. <laughs> Well, well, well. I mean, at some point, you just become beloved in the booth, right? You guys have been already 13 years. At some point, you're just going to be beloved. And we get a lot of love. We're, I, I'm not unhappy with the amount of yeah. love and uh, recognition that we get. We're, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's see what Sergio does here. You're like uh, Jack 3. How can you possibly make it? Oh, wait a second. He may well check because he, he knows if he bets he's getting called by Ace Jack or Ace Queen or Ace 10. Okay. He was not called by it. Okay. Good bet, Sergio. Sergio reclaiming the chip lead. Moving back over 10 million chips. Also, Borenstein has been so aggressive that when he checked back the 854 flop, um, you, you, you know he doesn't have anything. And Ace Jack was the very top of what he would check back, right?
Bornstein back down the 22 bigs now. It was a good bet, Sergio. I like he bet 600. That's a good bet. Coleman, the shortest stack, 20 bigs on the button, pocket fives. I like it. 325, that's what Phil likes, and he is we got a weird dynamic shaping up here. Right now, see Sergio, he in, in, he has all three moves in his mind right now. Oh, wow, he went for the aggressive one. All four moves. Coleman with 18 bigs, folds the fives. Interesting. I like the raise for 325. Um, some people would say just jam the whole 20 big blinds there, which, by the way, would have worked. So something we were talking about a short while ago were the special charity poker tournaments taking place here at Resorts World Las Vegas later this week. Next week, I guess. It's the weekend. So next week, November 16th through 18th, 2 p.m. every day, PokerStars and Oracle Red Bull Racing present a daily charity poker tournament raising money for Wings for Life. There is that VIP invitational as well, but there are open tournaments costing $200 every day, 16th, 17th, and 18th at 2 p.m. Pacific. And we are blinds up. This is level 33, blinds 100,000, 200,000 with a 200K big blind ante. That means we're now playing a 32 big blind average. It's getting shallower. Pulling around to Bornstein now with 16 big blinds after having to post. He's going to give a walk to dealer Sammy. Interesting. Because the blinds have just gone up. Yeah, I mean, he's sitting on 16 big blinds. It's harder to be really aggressive with that stack. And Coleman now down to 13 bigs. After that blinds increase, yeah. it is getting to it. So when are you guys? Uh, so when are you guys going to be in the booth doing commentary again? There's tomorrow's final table for the five k. Yeah. So we've got the five k final table. Then we wrap on NAPT Las Vegas. The next event for us will be EPT Prague just before Christmas. Ah, okay. And then obviously we await details of where the European Poker Tour and the North American Poker Tour are going in 2024. We have got TV shows in production though at the moment, so we'll be doing the commentary for. Some of the EPT, PCA, PSPC events that took place in the last few months. And, of course, as filmed over the previous few days, the big game. We've got to do oh, the commentary for that as interesting. well. Interesting. So just to take the, the folks at home through the process, I used to host um, Celebrity Poker Showdown. Yeah. So I'd kind of show up for the weekend, be in the booth a little bit, and then, and then they would cut the shows together. And so they'd say, all right, we need to come January, whatever, 11th and show up and, and do two shows. And then, all right, you know, three weeks later, show up and do two shows. So I'd have to fly in L.A. Is it similar for you guys? Yeah. Similar, yeah. Okay. Um, I think normally, yeah, it's you kind of do a batch of shows at any one time. I think the plan with the big game is we're going to try and voice them all together. I mean, there'll be ten episodes, five shows from each table. And I think the idea is to just voice the entire series, and then hopefully people will get to see it in the spring of 2024. But, hmm. you know, distribution is a whole different department that has to worry about yeah. that so hopefully we can get the shows on tv and hopefully we can tell people very soon when and where they'll be able to see it this is one of the rare times where someone's actually drawing dead right uh, a six deuce flop and sammy's kind of stuck with sixes with the queen it's very hard for him to get away um let's see what let's see what you just hope you don't improve yeah So Ping Lu, uh, you know, I don't know. I like a, I like about three, four hundred thousand here. Make sure you get called. How much did he bet? 
three. Three fifty, yeah. yeah. I like that bet a lot. Sammy can't fold. Sammy does indeed call. Interesting. I think that, you know, yeah, you don't want a queen or six, obviously. Oh, oh my God. Wow. We've had some pretty unbelievable rivers. Add this one to the list. Oh, he's going to lead right out. Oh, my. Okay. Not for much either. Wow, that was just a weird min. Now, let's see. What could Ping make it? Ping could make it 1.6 million if you wanted to here. Sammy doing the thing where he's looking at his opponent's chips, hoping for a raise. Well, he's going to get it. Now, Ping Lu's not worried about 3-4. Pinglu knows he has the best hand. 1.35 million. Wow. See, that's smart. He's going to get paid. He just wanted, he chose an amount he'd get paid. Snap call. Yep. And Pinglu wins a pot of 4.4 million. Pinglu. 1.35. That is an unlucky river. Wow. Brutal. Now second in chips. Pretty much tied for first, actually, with Sergio Aido. Both players with more than 10 million. Coleman on 11 bigs, Borenstein on 16 bigs. Both players pretty short right now. By the way, Phil, I'm glad you brought up what we're doing next, because in Prague, for the first time, we're going to stream day two of a mystery bounty. There's a 10K oh, mystery bounty. That sounds like so, so we, much fun. we've got to work out how we're going to do the prizes, because that has to be a huge part of the stream, right? Of when course. people take the prizes. Yeah, we've never done one before. No. So, okay, so the 10K dealer's bounty this year, I just, I knew, I mean, the, the secret bounty, I knew I had to make it to day two. Yeah. But I made it literally like I was top, bottom three stacks. So you had no one covered. <laughs> no one covered. But whatever. I knew I had to make day two. And then early, I think I picked up ace, queen, two guys at ace, king. I just had a good feeling. Actually smashed a queen. I literally had the chip lead uh, an hour and a half into it and started busting people. And I drew the 50,000 bounty. Whoa. I drew uh, two 10K bounties. And I picked up 70. And then we got all the way down. Now we're what down to... What was the buy-in? 10K? 10,000. All right. Big tournament. And now we're down We're down all the way down to 11-handed. And we had five at my table, six at the other. One more spot to go to the 10-handed final table. And then I'm really good because I can just fold a lot and move all up four or five more spots, right? And I just couldn't somehow. I ended up finishing exactly 11th. Uh, that really hurt. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Lou shoving on Coleman, all into call. Yep. Jack-10 suited in the bag. Uh, this might go in. It 11 does. 11 big blinds, I mean. Coleman calls it off. Coleman at risk and behind, but he does well, have Vaughan, live so cards. 2.55. Jack and the 10, same color. Yeah. King and a queen. Been yeah, a, uh, a long time since our Number last one. elimination. Yeah. One of them to lose. Yeah. 40, 38%. Hmm. Yeah, you don't want him to have two overs. You Ideally have, not You four. want him to have ace-deuce. How do you have king-queen? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I was thinking. How does he have exactly king-queen? Maybe he can hit two pair. Hey. Something. Wow. Top pair is a very good start. King of Hearts makes it fun. Phil. I'm not rooting for or against anybody, but. <laughs> He's just rooting for Carnage. Oh, 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 oh. any no paint. paint. Any paint. Lord. Kings, queens, and jacks. I don't know, man. The rivers have been too devastating lately. I don't think I can watch this. <laughs> He literally, Stapes has his hand in front of the screen. I don't think I can watch he this. doesn't want to see the card. We're not making up, folks. He's like, I, don't, I can't see this. It's another tag. All right. It's trips for Coleman. It's a double up. I think that's right. Bro. And Coleman now playing 26 bigs, leaving Borenstein as the sole short stack. Uh, question to Joe from Hedge Is there any chance the big game is coming back? That format with the loose cannon was very fun to watch. Yes. Sorry, John. Thank you for your question. <laughs> I you were we just shot the big game. Try. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the big game is in the can. 
I was rooting yep. for you to lose. It has Dan, been filmed 10 new Top episodes. Ball. By the way, no, no. the producer on that show the is hand. the legendary Matt Morantz. Matt Morantz was the guy who came to the World Series of Poker. He did not know As a friend. what a straight or a flush was. But he knew that he could highlight the personalities. And so right away, you had the World Poker Tour and the World Series of Poker both launched very close to one another. One of them, the World Poker Tour, was more about poker on the cards. Right? Sorry? And then the WSOP was all about person. Went, went, went on ESPN, by the way. And when the ESPN's numbers were massive, and it was all about personalities. And so, and so it was kind of good to have both of them here. This one's more about the poker. This one's more about the personalities and the backstories. And Matt Morant sent camera crews to people's homes to do backstories. Oh, we used to play in this bar league. Oh, and all these people. Yep. And really got you engaged in the outcome as the World Series of Poker main event went, what, seven weeks do you remember how long it was, Stapes? Seven weeks of, you know, of them kind of like, you know, tracking people. Oh, we made it to the next week. Well, we kind of knew the results. And so he would choose one of the guys at that final table. And you, you do, do the backstory. Uh-huh. Yeah, and we're going to bring uh, a lot of that to the big game. Uh, the big game was always about personalities. But I can tell you, Phil, that that's why we chose the loose cannons that we did. One in particular had a very interesting backstory. Uh, Lily had a backstory that really wowed Matt Morans, and he was like, "That's a that's a story. That is a, that is a person whose story needs to be told." And I invited my friend Stanley Tang on the show, who started invent started DoorDash. We would have loved to have Stanley. Stanley said he would play, but unfortunately, um, you know, I invited him on a Wednesday, and it turned out that uh, that it, it just didn't quite happen. But Matt was immediately excited. The guy started DoorDash. Not gonna... the first time someone's DoorDash hasn't shown up. <laughs> I'm not gonna say. Would it be weird to say that I'm lucky with DoorDash when my wife isn't? Whenever the order's messed up, it's always her food. <laughs> Sorry, honey. She's not listening. She doesn't care. But it's always her food, and I just I can't help but you know I mean I can't help but chuck a little bit. But she gets so mad. I mean, when your food, you're waiting for your food. You're hungry, and it shows up. And yep. DoorDash is a great company. They rarely mess anything up. Once a month, maybe once every two months. But when that order comes and, and hers is messed up, I, I can't even chuckle out loud because she's going to get mad at me. I'm like, oh, hon, I can't believe that happened to you. Don't mess but up in my, food. But in my mind, I'm like, of course that happened to you. Here's the genius thing about DoorDash <laughs> is that, and not just DoorDash, but all mm. the delivery services, is that the food gets messed up so oh. much that I order lots of extra stuff. <laughs> Just because I know something's going to be wrong. Oh, boy. Let's and by see. the way, that's not the fault of the company. It's the restaurant, obviously, and or the driver. Now, here we go. It's Ping Lu against Bornstein again. Remember, it was ace three against Jax last time. This time, this time, Ping Lu figured it out. He did not jam with his ace nine no. versus Queens. He did jam with the ace three of diamonds against the Jax a while back. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, sometimes the order will show up where it's a switched order too, right? Like, you get somebody else's order. I didn't volunteer for this train. <laughs> yeah, that happened. That happened in Dublin. I, I oh, Griffin, I could have killed him. <laughs> and I'll know it's from we me. We clearly got somebody else's order, and I'm trying to figure out how to deal with it. And Griffin's like, Are you "Come saying on, man! Like they're never, they're never gonna track us down. Like, let's just eat it." Yeah, and I'm like, "No, nah, I don't that think works. so." What is that? <laughs> I don't think we should do it. He's what like, "Come on, say? let's just eat it." So I'm like, all right, and I take a bite of the food. Then the phone rings. My hotel room phone rings. Hey, I got the DoorDash driver downstairs. Oh, it doesn't work out for you. You can get you later. He gave you the wrong order. Can you come down and switch it? <laughs> it's already worked out. So now we're like pulling stuff out of the food, trying to make it look like we didn't eat anything. <laughs> Spreading the fries out. And I get down there, and the guys whose order it is, they give us our order. They haven't eaten anything. They did the right thing. <laughs> and I go, guys, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, we ate some of the food. I didn't want to. My friend made me do it. Okay, here's an interesting hand where I just think uh, Sammy's going to re-raise, and I think Ping Lu's going to find a way to get away from the king, queen of hearts here. Oh, we all ended. Okay. We know you're folding, Ping Lu. Come on. 
Oh. Oh, I'm surprised he's, I'm surprised he's taking any time here because Sammy's been playing pretty tight, right? I had a haircut this morning. Appointment. I had a haircut yesterday that I rescheduled to today. And then I had a haircut today that I just didn't show up. All right, Samson. <laughs> yeah, of course you're folding ping low. David went to him? It's so pretty, the oh, nice. king, queen of hearts. Oh. Also, gonna do? good fold. Nah, I like my yep. barber. He's good. Good fold. Yep. Give him a shout out. <laughs> Where does that leave <laughs> ping? Still over 30 ping lines. Like, tied with Sammy now. I can't just be like filling him up and like talking myself. I'll be able to get a, a little finder seat. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. I'll be Don Barber. To come back Royal to the door Cups. dressing, if they if they Everyone if go. they do it in Palo Alto, I'll like, be Don Barber. Like uh, it's Cups. very rare they mess up. <laughs> there you, you go. Know, but uh, Dude, but shout I out to my guy. I think they brought me the wrong coffee What's order like name? a month ago. And uh, they don't come back and get it in Palo Alto. They just let you keep it. You press a button that says missing or incorrect items, and then they bring you a your new real one. order. Yeah, yeah. That day I ended up with three cups of coffee, two of them for free. <laughs> That's a lot of coffee, Phil. I don't think you need that much coffee. I did not, and I couldn't get my wife to drink it, so it kind of went to waste. I, that's the other thing, and I'm not. I'm I, the right thing to do is to complain and to you know to press the button and get the thing you order. Yeah. I, I just don't complain I, I, ever. I'm just like, dude. I order from them three times a day, <laughs> every single day, and I'm not exaggerating. People are like, "What do you mean? It's impossible." No, I ordered I sometimes four times a day. Unless we're still five. Now, uh, now I'm taking a little bit of that uh, mujarin. Have you heard of this? I don't take anything my whole life. Now I'm taking a little that's mujarin. The, uh, it's like the Ozempic thing, right? Yes, Mujarin's it's like the Ozempic the thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's I, this drug exchange that people just inject themselves with, and they just lose weight without working yes. out. Have you okay. heard of this? No, I haven't come across so this. So all the Hollywood stars are taking it. Charles Barkley's lost 150 pounds on it. A couple of my um, friends has changed their lives. But, but, Elon Musk has gone public saying that you know he takes it. How does it work? What does it do to you? It's an anti-diabetes drug in theory, but but if but but Americans, well, let's just speak to Americans for a minute. Americans. You know, there are some Americans that have some weight issues, and and uh, and maybe we have a, a different diet than the Europeans. Maybe you guys have issues too, but we all know that carrying a lot of weight can lead to, you know, diabetes, yes, heart absolutely. disease. Okay, and so and so they came up with with so basically, not just the celebrities, but all the billionaires. Like a lot of my friends are taking it. So you have four or five different, it's called, as everybody knows, so a lot of people know about Ozempic, and that's the standard one. No, no, and no, I was no, told no, by no, my no, friends no. to take Munjaro. So I started about seven weeks ago, and I lost 13 pounds in the first four weeks. And I'm on the minimum dose, though, so I haven't really lost much since then, but you're just not as hungry. You don't have to do anything. It and also it seems to curb other, other addictions that people have, too. Correct. Not, not just food. They're saying that people that lose uh, 100, 150 pounds... Uh, on on these drugs, or even 50 pounds, they gamble less. They drink less. They do less drugs. That's all interesting stuff, right? Thank you, yeah. I didn't think I was going to go public saying I'm taking Munjaro today, but there you go. My DoorDash orders are now down to two a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stanley's like, we got to do something about this Munjaro. Yeah, we got to get rid of this Munjaro. And it's pretty simple to take, James. You take once a week, you just do this quick little injection. Oh, uh, no, I no don't pain. do needles. No, don't there's do no needles. pain. Like, at that, I don't do needles either. You got to do it in your eyeball. That's the drawback. I'm okay. So, but there's no pain. And I'm like, I guess I don't like needles either. It's only once a week? Once a week. Mm -hmm. But my doctor thought it was smart that I'd be on it. Even my wife greenlit it. My wife's a doctor, too. All these years, Phil, I've never met your wife. I look forward to it one day. I'm going to try to get her to, if, 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 I go to, if I go to the Monte Carlo Poker Stars Tournament, which I'm really considering going to, then uh, I'm going to really try to get my wife to go. Cool. She can't make Barcelona if I do that one. She has this thing called Burning oh, yeah, Man. Your wife's a burner? Yeah. 
Huh. I like seeing their eyes, Dave. All kinds of revelations coming out. Yeah. I'm the Howard Stern of uh, poker commentary. I just get people to open up. Mm hmm By the way, I think Howard Stern watched the original Big Game because I heard him talk about watching poker on TV once, and I'm pretty sure he mentioned you, and he mentioned Daniel, and he mentioned something about an Italian amateur, which I think is season two of the Big Game. That's amazing. You know who else has been interested in poker? Snoop Dogg. Interesting. Mm -hmm. He's been watching the Hustler stream, and he told another rapper that plays on the stream that he wants to play on the stream. Oh, How do you man. like to get Snoop Dogg playing a little No Limit Hold'em? Absolutely. We'll get Snoop Dogg on the next season of the big game. Yeah. We'll have to do it in Holland. I think it's interesting they're pulling some, some interesting players out of... Uh, you know, I think Hustler, Hustler Live's done a pretty good job. I don't have a piece of them. Um, but I think they've done a pretty good job of bringing celebrities in. Sure. Not that uh, it's somewhat easier to do in Los Angeles, right? I it's think it's a lot easier. Than to get people yeah. to get on a plane. Mm -hmm. Did you guys see that influencer game we did? Yeah. That was pretty crazy. That was crazy. That was kind of like the big game for you. We had three <laughs> top pros on that game, and the three top pros could not beat the three rank the five rank amateurs. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sick. Well, Besha has gotten punished by a river, but not this time. Well, he had the best hand anyway. True. I wonder what Sergio's thinking. Ace high hero call. You know, I mean, it's in, in Sergio's mind, he, he could be thinking that uh, Sammy has a 10 and he can raise and move him off of a 10. Oh, my God. Hero call gone wrong as Aido gifts an extra 1.75 million to Sammy Beshahed. Wow. I just absolutely hate that call. Well, Sergio's probably not a big fan now either. Man, oh man. I mean, I've certainly ma certainly made hero hero calls that have gone wrong in my life, too. Wow. But so if you rewind the hand in your mind, um, what is you know, basically Sammy bet the flop so on the 10-8 deuce. Now Sergio decided, but it was it's a big bet, so Sergio could have gotten away there, but he decided to call. Okay. okay now, check, check, and then the nine of clubs oh, pops bad. off. You're just not beating much with the ace three there anymore. You know, like the nine hit, the potential straight, the you're not really worried about a backdoor flush. So Sammy has the chip lead right now, but no player at this table has a 50 big blind it stack. 49 bigs for Sammy, roughly 35 for Sergio and Peng. Oh, David Coleman playing around 25 bigs, and Jonathan Borenstein the short stack with 16 big blinds. <laughs> it's funny it does affect like it does affect you know when Sergio loses that pot you kind of want to stay out of his way <laughs> you're worried yeah. he might be a little tilty I mean that's the way we think as poker players at that table we're like you know what let me stay out of his way he might do something unpredictable soon a reminder that this is chat pro Saturday so all analysis is valid Real Madrid 2023 writes, imagine calling and you have no pair. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I know. Terrible. I, how, do you, how do you even get this far in a poker tournament? Hmm. Doesn't even know he didn't have a pair? <laughs> Wild. I think that was a big misstep for Sergio there. 4-7. Again, I can even understand calling on the flop. Although I think you can get away on the flop. Sammy, I haven't really seen. It's not like Sammy. Sammy's been playing really tight 
That's what I think. I'm tripping. I think I have 3.1 or 3.2. 4.25. See, now Ping Lu, he has to race with A6, but he's also thinking I've got Bornstein, who's been super aggressive behind me, and I've got Sergio, who just lost a big pot behind me. And here we go. Bornstein only has 14 bigs. It's going in. Bornstein calls the race. A7 versus A6 going to the flop. Ten four deuce. I don't know. Uh, it seems a little out of character for Borenstein. He's been super aggressive and yet just called with A7 with 14 big blinds in the big blind. And playing in flow, Three checks 50. to Lou, who continues. 350,000. Dean folds to that C-bet onto the next hand. 107 hands played at this final table so far. Just the two eliminations. One on the very first hand of the day. That's when we lost Sandy Palampati. What seems like about three hours ago, we lost Nick Shulman. And we've been five-handed for some time. Yeah. Wow, that was interesting. Now, I don't blame Bornstein for not moving in with the A7, but it just seems like the way he's been playing it was within his character to do yeah. it. It would have worked wonderfully well. But now he's sitting on 2.6 million, and you're starting to think at that point... You know, like can someone go broke easy. before me and I can move up, what is it, $20,000? Yeah. yeah. See, I thought I was exaggerating for effect when I said it felt like we lost Nick Shulman three hours ago. Yep. And actually, I was only like 10 minutes out. It was two hours, 50 minutes ago. Wow. It was. That's how long we've been playing. Five-handed. First hand was a quarter. Was the first hand? It was jack four. I mean, he kind of overplayed it. Yeah. He had a full three. Okay, well, he's back to his aggressive quarter nature quarter. there. Yeah. Into yeah. six? Ah. Christian P on YouTube says greetings from Germany and to the poker Did goat you? Phil Helmuth. If you had two pairs. That's a cool one. Yeah. Hello, Germany. I assume they had two parents. It's super late in Germany. A lot of great poker players in Germany. I guess super late or super early, depending on which way you look at it, right? Three in the morning. <laughs> I, give, I give a lot of clues. You give me a lot of clues. Wow, that's sick. Lucky early. Sergio back in action, opening with ace nine. Um, Melvin's cut 16 bigs. Go ahead and three big and eight seven off. Who's sending? I think Sammy will call. What do you think? Ten three five, ten three four. Rainbow. Yeah. And we have Ping Lu still to act in the big blind. He folds. So ace nine versus ace ten heads up the flop. Uh, he played it even better than I thought. He three back to one point. Oh, yes. Well done. What's the worst? 
Observation. Well done, Sammy. The weird thing is, I, I'm not colorblind. That's how you do it. But I do find those pink and orange chips really I hard to differentiate. I could see that he raised, it looked like. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, think the, I yeah, like that. That move. would go viral, uh, for sure. Stay aggressive. Yeah. Can do it. Well, I can see a lot of worlds Sorry, where I might 70% of the time just call with Ace 10 there, personally. <coughs> I'll save the joke. John, can't you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, do you so get a I, coffee? Yeah, I, I got a coffee. I like what Coleman's doing there. He has a banana. We all need to kind of re-energize a little bit. And he's telling jokes and laughing. Big tip on stream. Bananas are your friends at the poker table. Some people would say nutter butters are your friends at the poker table. Yeah. Some people would say that. A banana is something you don't want to have in poker. And the nutter butters is something you do want to have in poker. <laughs> True. See, I like that call with sevens. It's like a like a limp trap. If you get shoved on. Well, a lot of good things can happen too. Exhibit A. Yep. No, oh. There's no way Ping Lu can lead out here. <laughs> Ping Lu will not get a bet in until the river if he. <laughs> now Coleman's thinking, I have king five high, maybe I'll just bet a little bit. Okay, good check back. Oh, interesting. Five, six, seven, eight. The Bob Fossey straight draw for Coleman. <laughs> now Ping Lu should check back here. I mean, should check first. Two fifty. Mm. Okay, min bet's min bet is not so bad here. Actually, according to David Perry, he needs a four. Chat pro Saturday, everybody. <laughs> he needs a four to go broke. Ping so. needed a four. Yeah. Wow, Nikki. Yeah. I'm not in the hand. I don't care what's happening. <laughs> There's the river bet Holy Phil predicted. Man. Yeah. Reinar asking how many players played in this main. It's on the screen, 1,095 total entries. I appreciate that is not the number of players, it's the number of entries, but... Each entry represents a $1,650 yeah. buy-in. I feel like we just always say the number of buy-ins and rebuys, and we just call those entries. Exactly, entries. exactly. So I, I think 1095 is yeah, fair. Try him. Prize pool of $1.6 million. First uh, only one of those was Phil Helm. Was I was going to my next question. Just the one bullet, just the one bullet. <laughs> but I think that there were several players that represent five buy-ins. A few that represent six or seven buy-ins. Now when Phil says I can dodge bullets, he means that he only enters once. It was kind of fun to only enter once. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay. 15 big blinds with two fives. Oh, boy. But Bornstein, who didn't move in with a seven a minute ago, 
finds the fold. Wow. 15 bigs, huh? Folds the fives. I guess maybe yeah. any other position. Yeah. He was just in the big blind with a7. You were away for the chat for a second. Didn't re-raise all in. He only had 14 bigs. And Ping Lu had a6, actually, that hand. And I think this is the point where Jonathan Bornstein is thinking, you know? There's five left. Fourth place looks awfully good, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Globby Flay says, did anyone fire max bullets? Well, there was no max. Like the game of No Limit Hold Them, there was no limit. Unlimited re-entries in this tournament. I think I heard of someone being in for nine. Wow, this is interesting, actually. Actually, a friend of mine was at the final. Oh, my, I forgot about this. Sergio was at the same final table that Ping was like four or five days ago at the Aria. Oh, no. no. Yeah, huh. and Sergio uh, moved in with Deuce 3. This is interesting. Sergio moved in with Deuce 3. My friend Snap called him with Ace 10 for a big pot, and Sergio hit the Deuce 3. He's not going to get away with it this time. He loves a dirty diaper. No, there's no way Sergio's given up. You, one thing he could do is check and then bet the turn. Mm -hmm. Now, if Coleman checks, Sergio is betting the turn. Can Coleman find the check? Uh, Go on then. Sure. Go on then and check. Go on then. <laughs> Don't do the accent. I'm hitting James as I say. Go on then, <laughs> mate. Go on today. then. I, I, I was thinking, why, why is Phil doing an Australian accent? That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying one more than just... 350? Yeah. Gotta, go, gotta go home. Nope. That's worth it, though. Yeah. It's okay. I, I don't blame Coleman I'm for betting. He just wants mm -hmm. to fire out and end this thing. But we got, a, we got a trivia question for you, Phil. Well... It's not so much a trivia question as a hashtag fun fact because we've no, no, got... No, no, quiz man who, who finished who, on the okay, third name Okay, okay, okay. So basically we have Patrick who does all our stats, so we call him Statrick. Mm -hmm. The I tournament bet. you're referencing, Ping uh, Lu won, yeah. Sergio Aido was second. Who came fourth four in that hours? tournament? Yeah, four and a half, yeah. Depends. I don't know. Uh, uh, I think Brennan Cantu was fifth, though. Yeah. So well, interestingly, it was Nick Shulman. Oh, that's so right. So three <laughs> of the finalists <laughs> from oh the NAPT God. main event were at that final table. Oh, my. No, you, I was saying ones. earlier, the hot players tend to do well. The new one? Yeah, the new model. Wow, that's crazy. That's wild. I know I know the Cantu finished fifth because uh, I happened to stake him. <laughs> and, uh, and, he, and, he, and Sergio moved in with deuce three, and Cantu called with ace ten, and I thought Sergio put in too much money. And we just saw Sergio jam in 30 big blinds with ace nine in the small blind. You can't, you can't put in too much money with deuce three. Now we have to reference our dirty diaper guy. <laughs> well, I like that guy. But I'm bad with names. Who is it? It's a Pittsburgh the guy. The person who invented the dirty diaper? The guy, yeah, the, the guy, the Pittsburgh guy. Really nice guy. Who's a Pittsburgh guy? He's the guy that's playing the dirty diaper on the WSOP. Yeah, no, I just I know the reference, but I don't. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I don't consume a ton of other poker content. Fun flop here, yep. middle pair for Coleman. <coughs> the nut flush draw for Besha Head. Four twenty-five. Rigby, people are saying. Yep, that's right. Rigby, is it Nicholas Rigby? I think Rigby just. Uh, Won something this week in Tulsa, Cleveland. I like Rigby. The poker world likes Rigby. And well, did, Coleman's going to call. Did Nicholas Rigby knock you out of the main? As a matter of fact, he did. G Money remembered that. Good work, G Money. Oh, well, there's another way to get there with Ace Queen. Wow. I missed that. The gut shot. Nah, what are you going to do, Sammy? <laughs> you know you have the nuts. You know your opponent's likely to be drawing dead. What do you do? Don't bet too much. Yeah, he's going for all of it. 
Coleman might get away. 9.50, oh boy. It's that balance, James, right? You make the nuts, you're sh you feel like your opponent's drawing dead. What are you going to do? Wow, we got him. Wow. Whoa. Gets him to put 950,000 into the middle, going to the river. He does not want a nine. It says tournament over. Six of clubs pairing the board. So Coleman, the effective stack here, three million, less than pot behind. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd like to see Sammy somehow bet a million, but I have a feeling he's going to bet it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we saw a hero call with ace high. Are we going to see a hero call with just a 10? It would be a hero call that would nope. cost David Coleman his tournament life. He faults. Nope. I mean, the blinds go up again in 35 minutes. and <laughs> I mean, then even the biggest stack is uh -huh. 50 bigs. As I like to say, jokingly, the bonds are going to one million, two million. <laughs> Not sure we can skip the levels in between, but they will go to 125, 250. Ravalo says, the bond talk earlier got me in the mood to watch my favorite, Goldfinger. Wait for the dinner break. You can watch an hour of Goldfinger when we hit the dinner break in 30 minutes time. I'm gonna ask my sister off stream here. Hey, hey, Ann. What's your favorite Bond movie? Skyfall. One of the good Skyfall. ones. Skyfall. Skyfall's a really good and one. And we tumble. No, 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 and we fell. 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 We're gonna get. We're gonna get blacklisted because they'll pick up on the tune and then, like, we'll get sued. So. No, we're allowed to sing exactly a lyric and a half before we can get sued. You In know America. That, right? But oh. unfortunately, on a worldwide broadcast. This is, this is global distribution, and you've no idea how tight UK copyright law is. Okay, I'm just going to say Skyfall. Equalizer 3, I haven't gotten to see that one yet. Love the first Equalizer. The second one, James and I saw in Toronto together, and I did not care for it. And the third one, I'm, I'm waiting until I get home. I'm not allowed to sing songs <laughs> on the live stream. You can't I'm not allowed to sing songs on the live stream. So tomorrow, everyone, when you're asking where is the VOD of the main event final table, we'll know why. <laughs> Looks like Ann does some caddying in her spare time. One four. One four. Big hand. You like golf? Sammy, can we, look at we this. All object, can we... This is a good question from Ono's GG. Really Does James have a Bond film that irks him when people say it's their favorite? Yes. I'm, I'm up with it, sorry. And but when Joe know. tells so me his favorite Bond film is The Man with the Golden Gun, I just shake my head. Like, <laughs> how? How is that possible? And my, sec favorite? my second favorite one also really tilts him, which is Live and Let Die. Live I mean, let it's die. a better choice than The Man with the Golden Gun. No, I I'm like singing. the man with the golden gun. I like Scaramanga. <laughs> I think we really pissed him off <laughs> over here. I think Christopher Lee is an awesome villain, and that little fun house of horrors that he yeah. has, I think, is super cool. And the one bullet? The, the golden bullet, and the, uh, uh, the you've best. got Knickknack. Yeah, a little yeah. sidekick uh -huh, there. Uh -huh. That's got, her, uh, her, there, her. Is, there is so much in that movie that makes zero sense, and it falls into the trap of being boring for a lot of the time. Good okay, night. Okay, wait. Okay, yeah, I, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm on the opposite side of the Bond expert over here. <laughs> Don't we <laughs> also, isn't that the one where they, they turn the car into a plane? Yes, it has a car plane. <laughs> You're in, it's, it's like a station wagon or that, something. The stunts. And they turn it into a plane. That was so cool. That car stunt that was they so do cool, where they're ruined by the side whistle. That's true. But the stunt is incredible. Yes, and they ruined it. I thought that stunt was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> We're fist pumping You're over here. You're just repeating everything he says. Yeah, because he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is poor James. 
That's the worst one ever made. Okay, A6. <coughs> How many big blinds do we have for Dave? Oh, 12. Oh, here we go. In all honesty, the Casino Royale remake is probably the best Bond movie. Yes. Yeah, I agree. It is. Yeah. I think that's the best one. I think it's objectively the best film. Oh, my God. And that opening series. scene? The opening scene. The, oh, the my God, where they're running through the, like, the construction yeah, site. Yeah. Now we're in a break. Can you please figure out <laughs> when you're going to eat? The song like, is my favorite Bond here. song, even though Live and Let Die was before them. I'm a huge Chris Cornell know. fan. Yeah. That Bond song I'm is, is oh. fantastic. No, Chris Cornell did Live and Let Die? No, no, no. Chris Cornell did Casino Royale. Yeah, yeah. In 30 minutes. Yeah, I will. Yeah, that scene like where the they're running yeah. through the like the, uh, you the know, levels. Oh, the crane yeah. and the oh, they're running through the half-built buildings. Oh, I just realized that Amazon series dropped in the last 24 hours, right? Which one? The James Bond game show where they've got these people like reenacting scenes from the movie to win prize money, hosted by Brian Cox. And one of the challenges is they have to climb the crane, just like from the beginning of Casino Royale. Brian Cox. Oh my God. Yes. The guy from Succession. Yes. Yeah. What does he have to do with Bond? He's he, the host I, of the game show. He just hosted another show. I just saw him like two nights ago. I thought he did a good job. It's Brian freaking Cox, man. No, he's great, but... No. Weird. All in. The all in with the King 10. Let's see. Who does he have behind <coughs> him? Ping loves a king. Two... Sergio has 30 bigs. Wow. How much you got, Cole? Uh, I did Three not one? like that move from Ping Lu. I mean, everybody's like, you, you know, they, they love to say this, and you guys know this is a global thing. You win every all in till the last one. For those guys who just keep moving all in, keep moving all in, keep moving all in, and they look like geniuses, and then bing, bang, boom. Sergio has 5.9 million, and he was in that hand in the small blind. Wow. Well, you might as well do it again, Ping Lu. This time you have King Queen suited. Hmm. Well, he does have Sammy in the big blind this time, right? That's what he just called. Coleman folding the A7, round two. Sergio Aido on the button with ace three of diamonds. Yep, he's making his move. Here we go. 1.1. 1. 1. It doesn't look like much, but those chips are half a million each. Yep. Sorry, what, six? I mean, if Ping Lu has some kind of crazy read, he could move in here. He could also easily fold, or he could call. Interesting spots. No King-10 suited. <laughs> he just put in call. six million with King-10 suited. Yeah. He does call. Considering that, the, you know, seems fine. I guess everybody would say standard. Nine, seven, Trey with two clubs. Yeah, Pingu's going to check raise all in. If Sergio even bets it. I'm not sure. Cut off? 9-10 for sure, obviously. I'm not sure. I'm just thinking about my range. I'm not sure about that. 2.7 million in the middle. 8-0. That's 8-0. Oh, oh. I have 11, so. Oh, oh. I haven't really passed a bit of spots. What do you think, James? What's going to happen? We're not really in the prediction business. We usually just hmm, see what happens and then tell people about it. I mean, he's right now Ping Lu's caught between moving in and calling. Just used a time bank. Yeah. Even if uh, Sergio has jacks, Ping lose a favorite over jacks, or it's very close.
Well, I don't mind making a prediction. On Two million long. fifty. Yeah, I thought he was going to raise. Although I'd like to see him. If you're going to take that line, just move in. What if Sergio Aido now moves all in? Bingley will snappy. <laughs> Lou playing ten and a half million, just behind chip leader Sammy Beshahead, who's got twelve point five million. Two short stacks: David Coleman, fifteen big blinds; Jonathan Borenstein, ten big blinds. And the blinds going up in twenty-four minutes. Well, actually, <coughs> in twenty-four minutes there'll be the dinner break. But on the other side of that sixty-minute break, the blinds will go up, putting greater pressure on the short stacks at this final table. You know, there's also some other stuff that we haven't, we in the booth can't really talk about, and that's it. I mean, because we don't know. But if Sergio and Ping just finished in, a, uh, in the top four together, or the top three together, I guess it was, they've been playing together a lot. Yeah. It's a great point. And so there's if, a dynamic there that we're not aware of. Right. And if Ping Lu is like, is, all right, Sergio knows I always have it, then he has to make that raise. <laughs> 24 minutes, not all five but players will winning. make it the next 24 minutes. So maybe Ooh, we should reconsider. That is a bold stance. prediction. We are going to lose someone. Maybe two. That is a very bold minutes. prediction, Phil, because I have seen nothing to suggest that we're going to lose anyone anytime soon. <laughs> That's my prediction, and I'm standing by it. And I'm leaving in 24 minutes. It's dinner break. You guys will have to handle it after the dinner break. Just what will we ever I, can do? Can I sing anything? You can sing. Yeah, you can Once sing. Once you're off the stream, you can do whatever you want. You want to go karaoke tonight, Phil? Sing no, with your I, heart's content. Phil. I can't sing just the two of us? No, you can fill royalty-free music. So, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, Ba Ba Black Sheep, <laughs> the Happy Birthday song, <laughs> um, uh, Jingle Bells. Remember what I said. Here we go. Yep. Mary had a little lamb. All the hits. <laughs> Mary had a little lamb. Oh, rock. rock. Wait, how, what's the song about the boat? Not that one, probably. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, row, 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 row your boat? Row, row, row yeah, your boat. Yeah, absolutely. Go for down it. down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Row, you row. Aren't you supposed, I don't know how to do it like no, that. No, no. You, like from you Star start. Trek 4. No, no, I... Dirty Harry did it first. Okay. You start, Phil. I'll join in. So go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, row, merrily, row, merrily, row merrily, 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 life gently is down the stream. Row, 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 row your boat gently, gently down, down the stream. What the hell is happening? Where the hell did I do to the stream by singing stupid songs? <laughs> I've never just, just 21 more minutes, gang. <laughs> I've never seen this stream so derailed in its existence, and I've worked with Joe and Griffin. <laughs> well, ooh, here we go. Ball in, ace four. No, oh, I told you. Here goes somebody. I will be shocked if he folds. Wow, what is going on here? Good hold the two. This is fairly common in the tournaments we cover these days. Wow. That things get shallower and shallower and shallower, and then people got to get it in with worse hands they folded when they were playing tight. That ace 10 hand would have been called by all the, in all the high rollers, they would have snapped called with ace 10. 
Thank you, MacGyver Man, for the score of 7.1 out of 10. We'll oh, take that's it. That's pretty good. Oh, that's great. Yeah. We didn't gonna deserve that. We got to thank. For yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> None of us have any singing. Well, I'm going to speak for myself. I have zero singing. Zero comments. here, too. No, yeah. we're, not, we're, not, we're not singers. We have many things, but we're not singers. Oh, Josh. <laughs> I'm still going with the, although, you know, that could have been it right there. Wow. Just lays it down. Not even a defend. It's, I mean, he, he defended with king. If you go back in time two hours, he defended the big blind with queen nine. And did, it came a queen and a nine. Did he have 11 big blinds then? Queen nine six. Yeah, that's a good point. No, but I, it still seems pretty standard to defend out of yeah. that stack. Yeah. Well, especially from a guy that defended so often. Ping Lu's the only one who was, you know, consistently folding jack nines and queen nines in the big blind to this point. Here we go. All right, ace check. Come on now. There's a part of him thinking, this is a pretty strong hand too. Do I really want to bet all of it? Oh wait, I have to. Okay, I'm all in. And I'll do it before the 30 second clock hits him. 1.9. Oh, a committing raise of 1.9 yeah. million. Sammy looks interested because he's got jacks. Shoves on Coleman, who calls all in. Anyone have a pointy card? I did not. Nope. <laughs> what counts as pointy? Wow, Sammy, if he wins this, he's up to 15 million. Crucially, if. <laughs> if he wins this. I said if. Number I one, it. it's jacks. Number two, <laughs> anytime there's a pair, anytime there's an ace, there is always an ace on the desk. <laughs> That's true. The last jacks okay, versus ace three of diamonds, okay, the guy hit everything, remember? No. And I tried to bet you right before. Oh, boy. Here comes the ten of diamonds. <laughs> I don't know. Just the best card <laughs> for drama on the river. I do have this. <laughs> All right, I take the ten of diamonds. <laughs> it took a minute, but yeah, you want the ten of diamonds. The Ooh, nine of wow. diamonds. Wow. <laughs> Almost the same value. All right. Now they tie with the straight, so three tens for the tie. I mean, it's a diamond or an ace. Three aces, da da da, eight diamonds. The river is a ten. Chop it, chop it, chop and it. And that means it's a chop. Now, Phil, this is an occasion where Everyone you can does. sing, but you might not know the song. So this is your one time to listen and learn, and the next time we'll bring you into it. Okay. This is a chop pot, and you know what they say. Everyone loves a chop pot. <laughs> Except for Dan. No yeah, but that's not a song. David, David. It's a jingle. A jingle. Wow. Jingle. Yeah. Oh, I, you guys both immediately no, said jingle. Well, I, get it, I like that. Fuck. Oh, I don't know. I don't know where I got Dan. I don't know where I got Dan. Yeah. I, mean, I was calling Daniel the whole time. I don't feel like correcting people. Maybe at this you point. put it. Maybe you put it. I don't know, I don't know where I got that. Choppy. And that means we are still five-handed with 60 minutes to run on the level now. Everybody loves the shot pot. Uh, Phil did predict we were going to lose somebody. Yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> Time is running out. Well, <laughs> yeah. I still think it's going to happen. Even after the ace jack, tied jacks. Uh, Gerald Neal, watching on YouTube, does not believe that everyone loves a chop pot and says about that hand, what a waste of time. It is chat pro Saturday, so I have to say, Gerald, you are 100% correct. Huge waste of time. They should have just flipped a coin and given it to someone. Here it's these two guys that were both at a front in the top five together merely a week ago. Here we go again. Number one and two. Not just the top five. Ah, yeah, yeah. So Ping was like, yeah. 1.1. So. Oh, he did it. He did it. He did it. Wow. That's the second move Ping Lu's put on him. 
So uh, what, what that tells me is, is Ping Lu has a read on Sergio. Um, that's, what, that's, mm. what, that's what I deduce. And he raised enough 1.1 million where if Sergio moves in, he can fold his king four. So he risks one point, if you think about it, he risks 1.1 million to win more than I realize. about 900,000, mm -hmm. right? The 400 raise, the 200 big blind, the 200 small blind. No, I'm not it. Never mind. Here comes Sergio. Let's see if Ping Lu. Uh, Eh. You need a, you're a hundred short, Tori. Get back there. No. Close enough. Peng Lu made his hand move the hand before, but not this time. I mean, Wallace has a point. You can argue the whole thing is a waste of time. Just do a raffle. <laughs> <laughs> you get first, you get third. <laughs> There's a lot of skill left, I can tell you that. Coleman. A lot of skill. He's going to peel out of a 14 big blind stack. Hoping to flop some equity. That is some equity. That's too bad. <clears throat> he has to check. Let's see. Min bet. What are you going to do, Coleman? Yeah, in his mind, there's already 1.4 million out there. And he only has 2. Point, what, 2.6, so. I could understand if he wants to raise here. 850. <laughs> I'll search your phone for 550. You might find the fold button. Coleman's not very likely to be bluffing, right? Yep. And Aido. I, I, I think you feel like he had to call. Sure. It sucks for him, but he only can win with the queen. That's what I was about to say is that you might be in a situation where the ace or the king, like, if you aren't being bluffed, which is not very likely, hitting an ace or a king is not going to be enough. Yeah, but you could be check race with queen jack or jack nine, jack eight, something like that on the flop. I don't understand why Coleman's hesitating too much here. Oh, yeah, it's All a in. spade. There it yeah, is. Yeah, he has to move in. About now, Sergio's realizing, hmm, maybe I'm beat. Yep, that's the right face. <laughs> that's the uh, I have ace king, but I I have to fold, I think. Face. I've been wrong about him every time, but it's a tough fold here. Really good, fold. really good fold. Let's so it go. Wow. Sergio left with nine big blinds. I would have been wrong again. It wouldn't be the hand. I would have said Some he like would call, but I thought it was real close. two, ace four. Sergio is going to post the big blind and the big blind ante this next hand. 
A significant percentage of his stack in before any cards are dealt. Jonathan Borenstein, the second shortest stack with 10 bags. Didn't you predict that Sergio was going to finish first or second? I did. It ain't over yet. I think almost every player here has been the shortest stack. I have to tease. I have to tease him, James. Come on, you got to count yet? A little, <laughs> little tease. Remember, I predicted that Ping Lu was going to finish five. first or second, but Looks to be like fair, he was all in with five. ace three yeah. against Jax. <laughs> so I don't know if I get credit for that. <laughs> but he won. That is true, and ultimately it's results that we track. Yeah. <coughs> wow, what does Ping Lu have? He has. No. Uh, Coleman still has 22 big blinds. You know, you can't move in. Can I get through Coleman? I wouldn't get it from me. I got it. Sergio's got to be sick right now. Yeah. He had 10 million in chips, five-handed. Yeah, but that was the better part of four hours ago. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Because <laughs> we are still five-handed at the final table. And ticking towards the dinner break. How many minutes do I have to lose one? Eight minutes. Mm. Quarter short. Would you like to revise your estimate, Phil? Um, I mean, not a bad. There's a, I think I think I have to stick. To you got to. You have to. You got to double there's, down. There's a guy yeah. with eight big blinds. There's a guy with seven big blinds. Yeah. You, it, it, yeah. it, it tracks. Yeah. And they're both in the blinds of hand, right? <laughs> yeah, they're both in the blinds of hand. This is a weird spot. This is where when I have a seven and a six blinds behind me, I don't want to raise with, I, I, I want to just kind of stay out of the way and let nature take its course. Well, Coleman is going to push things with 10-7 suited. It doesn't matter either way. But I wouldn't have called 1.6 either. Oh, so somehow the all-in is not going to stand. He won it doesn't it. matter. Yeah. Wow. No worries. I would not have won that hand. Not enough upside. You have a guy with an eight oh, wow. and a guy with, what do you have, you seven and six lines behind, behind you? Shut the fuck up. I would if I wouldn't get in trouble. I'm not That's on Rail's job. And you only pick up 500K by moving in. Don't like it. Not with tons of spades. Plus. I think the thing that would, I have one six. He has that I would fear about that is one four. doubling up a short stack too. Exactly. Not even the chips I would lose, but the chips they would gain. Yep. They would just fold to Sammy. Six and a half minutes. I mean, it still does seem pretty likely that either eight or seven big blinds have got to go in. Not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, again, I'm never in these spots, so I don't know. But the thought of, like, going to dinner break and coming back with five big blinds doesn't sound that appealing. Although, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'll do that. Yeah, you will. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I like it. The chip leaders. No. Right. Um, I had one point. Seven fifty. What a what a disaster this yeah, would be if I it mean, came ace jack five. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, we think of these unlikely scenarios. It happens. Sammy's also very aggressive. He could re-raise big here. He has re-raised. Yep. What? What a play. 2.5 million. Now Ping Lu has to fold. Sammy kept himself out of trouble. 
Wow, limp with Ace Jack and just re smash it. 2.5 million. <laughs> he Remember, kind of he's, <laughs> he's the guy that just re raced with Ace 10 when someone raced with Ace 9, so. Wow, did anyone see that coming? And 130 of the final table. Joe wants to see the rabbit cam, just in case it came jack 5-4. For sure. Sergio's just shoved under the gun with jack nine of hearts. Queen nine for Lou in the small blind gets folded. Coleman in the big blind. King five of spades. It's not very much. But fault it. Too much with 22 big blinds to your name. Yeah. Yep. Probably time for one or two more hands. That's it. Well, the next hand, it's the two short stacks and the blinds again. You know, making making it till after the dinner break is a, is a thing, at least for me. And I remember we were uh, three-handed, and I knew the dinner break was three minutes away. And I never st stall, but I stalled like two and a half minutes just to make that dinner break. And I came r right back and picked up ace five on the button, <laughs> jammed it, ran right into kings, and made like its aces and fives, and wanted to win a bracelet. I mean, you, that speaks to what you were talking about earlier, that you just want to get through day one. You, you, want, you want to get, get through exactly. day two. It sure does. you want to make it to dinner break. It sure does speak to that. And I will tell you, I did it recently, too, where I did it actually in the last tournament I won at the World Series. I had two big blinds. You probably did, right? Two big blinds. And I said, you know what? And I never stall. And I looked. There's two and a half minutes left. And I took a minute and a half to fold a hand just to make sure that I made the break. Because it meant something to me, like no money difference. How much on? And I came back, back and uh, moved in, and I ended up winning that. That was my last trophy. I had That's two big blinds. Pretty 30. wild. Yeah. And I, I wonder if I didn't stall that extra minute. If I mean, it's hard to imagine I'd won it anyway with two big blinds. I'm not a staller, but I do think that it, it helps to get to a break and clear your head. Two minutes on the clock as Lou raises to 400,000. Coleman on the button with King Queen. Matt Miller asks, what's the prize distribution top three? So first gets the most, second gets the second most, and third gets the third most. Thank you for your question. Very good answer. Very good. Completely accurate. Yep. Yep. Wow, folded king queen. Oh, man. See. Bornstein with six bigs is going to put in one more. Yep. Try to catch a piece of this flop. Nine. That is a big piece. Six, four. Now, can he check? Takes a little, a little courage to check here. No check. Hang loose, trying to see. Do I have the king of spades? <laughs> you do no. not, sir. So that means we're going to squeeze in one more hand Big before pop. the break. That was massive. Boy. Was boy, oh boy, if he just checks, Penglu's going to say, I'm all in. I disagree. There's some dancing going on here, boys. A little dancing. 
with just 10 big blinds. It's interesting because remember Bornstein exactly around to go folded queen nine in the big blind. This time defended with jack nine. Payne going to get some din din. Rounds the blinds. I don't think we're going to see an elimination, Phil. No, nothing. Just big hand. Sorry. All in. Oh. All right, let's sweat. Bornstein shelves with ace four, eight five nice. for Beshad, and he folds. So we will be coming back from break with five players. We are still five handed at the final table of the NAPT Las Vegas main event. Phil, thank you for spending an extended amount of time in the booth. Pleasure today. to be here. I really enjoyed hanging out with both Pleasure. of you guys. It's Absolutely. Really fun. Great and to our, see you. Our conversations range from James Bond to Nutter Butters. We covered everything. Some poker. And we'll do it all again soon. So we will be back in 60 minutes' time. And these are the stacks that they will be playing with. Look at Aido. Five bigs. Borenstein just 10 bigs. 17 for Coleman. Now, while we are on break, a chance for you to get to know Trevor Woods. The 5K high roller is down to 23 players. Sadly, Trevor's not one of them, but hear about his experience as a Vegas Gold Pass Special Edition winner. I'm Trevor Woods, live in Leicester, work as an electrician. 1977, I started my apprenticeship and I've not done anything else since. Oh, love it, love it, fabulous job. Once the online started, I just started playing poker. I've uh, played a couple of live tournaments, but not much at all. I've played poker stars for 20 years, maybe, probably more. I always check my challenges. Every day, whatever the challenges are, I'll see if I'll hit them, play 10 sitting goals or whatever they might be over the years, it's always changing. So when the power path showed up, I just started playing the power path. You, you, you play your regular tournaments and there's a half dollar ticket there. Half a dollar becomes a dollar and a dollar becomes 11. And then, <laughs> unbelievably, a hundred and nine dollar ticket and you're thinking, wow, you know, biggest tournament I've played and <laughs> you're second, you've got your tournament. I've got a gold ticket, I've got this and this and this and I'm like, wow. It's just unbelievable, I mean, the good luck messages I've been getting and, you know, everyone's just so jealous, you know. I've been offered wives and children and everything to come along with me, you know, but, you know, there was never any, never any doubt who was coming with me. My partner, I've only met her in the beginning of the year. I thought I'd gone. I thought there's no love for me now. I thought just, I love my work, so that was always enough. I've got nice friends and that, so. My life was good, but it's just so much better now. So really, this is just, what a year. Thank you, Poker Stars. Brilliant. <laughs> Lines are up to 1,200, 2,400 with a 400 ante. Jason Mercier looking down at the King of Hearts and the King of Hearts. What? No way he thinks he has kings, right? Well, he's raising to 4,800. Actually, some of these guys have played so much poker that they can tell what the card is just from the tiniest sliver of a squeeze. Wow, I've no idea what Taylor von Kriegenberg's got. It wasn't paint and it was a club. Um. He's shoving with it, whatever it was. The blank of clubs. Interesting hand. Yeah, we've got some blind man's bluff over here. Only one card revealed. Eugene Kachilov has pocket aces. I hope for Jason's sake he hasn't got kings. Um, I call. There is the call. Guess it doesn't matter what Von Kriegenberg's hand is. He's way behind. Jason has King Jack off suit. Jason could potentially win two bounties, but he's almost never ahead in this spot and could easily be dominated in both spots. He folds, and we now see that Von Kriegenberg had pocket fives. He's got two birds. Von Kriegenberg reporting back to his fans that he is a four to one dog. And maybe if Eugene wins this, he'll upgrade his dad to a Bluetooth. My old man won't stop wearing that thing inside either. Eugene always has two aces. That's why I like to play. <laughs> That's what I like to play, right? 
Von Kriegenberg is about to get Von Kriegen doubled through. Okay. That's a real thing, trust me. The flop is 739. Kachalov now an 88% favorite to double up and cripple Taylor Von Kriegenberg. Or a four or a six? No, you want to see paint. Stick the ace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's option C, it's a five. Von Kriegenberg now a 95% favorite to eliminate Eugene Kachalov. Sorry, Dad, I'll try to run better next time. He's drawing to an ace. Two outs in the deck for Kachalov. And there's one of them, an ace on the river! <laughs> That's so cruel to Von Kriegenberg. <laughs> Kachalov's dad lived in the former Soviet Union, and this is stressing him out. Von Kriegenberg left with 15K. I thought I had one out when you made that face. How about Von Kriegenberg's face? He's got to pick his jaw up off the floor. Well, that was a roller coaster of a hand. Eugene Kachalov now has nearly 129,000. That means he has the chip lead at this final table. Jason's under the gun here with ace nine. 48. And he's raising. He doubles the big blind, makes it 4,800. Ace nine is a trouble hand, but we are playing four-handed. Seven six for Jonathan Jaffe in the big blind. Cool. And he will defend. This is a pretty loose defend against an under the gun razor, but then again, he was priced in. The flop is nine eight king. Second pair for Mercia, an up and down straight draw for Jonathan Jaffe. And Jaffe leads out into the razor, 6,100. Jaffe's donk bet, which usually means you're looking for a fold or a raise. In this case, Jaffe might be okay with either. Looks like he's going to get a raise. Mercia makes it 15,500. Normally, I'd say we might see all the money get in here, but Jason's re-raise so small, Jaffe can just call if he wants to. He does call. And we go to the turn. The Jack, Jack of Clubs. Clubs. Jaffe missed, but the board got way worse for Jason's hand. Plenty of other draws came in and or picked up outs. Jaffe checks. And Check. Jason checks behind. Jason check. The river. Ten of Clubs on the river. There's the straight for Jaffe. Jaffe's made his straight, but it's the dummy and And Clubs got there too, so this would be a pretty thin spot for a value bet. He still sticks 15,000 out there. It's a pretty tough board to get called with a worse hand. Should be an easy fold for Jason. This board takes away more of the action than watching Die Hard on regular TV. Jason Mux. Jason Mux. And Jaffe will win that pot. A little diamond, five of diamonds. It's possible. Maybe. Well, this has been an up and down table so far for Jason Mercier. Just when he gets a little bit of momentum, he seems to lose it. Yeah, but when he gets it in bad, he still runs like Jason Mercier. He even runs good on the rail, especially compared to Jaffe's Motley crew. Hey guys, sorry if I've been harsh on your boy. Let me buy you a drink. Let's see how the final four stack up in chips. Kachalov leads the table with just over 150,000. Michael Pesek behind him. Jason Mercier has the slight edge over Jonathan Jaffe, who is the shortest stack with just under 90,000. Blinds up to 1,500, 3,000 with a 400 ante. 8-5 of hearts under the gun for Michael Pesek. He'll fold. Kachalov is on the button with Jack-10 of clubs. It's a juicy hand in position. He will raise it. Makes it 6K. Ace-9 in the small blind for Jonathan Jaffe. Jaffe knows Eugene is likely to be raising pretty wide from the button. We raise. It's a three bet. Almost all in. 71,500. And now Jason wakes up with ace queen. Here we go. Come on. So he shoves. Smell you later, Eugene. That's enough to put Jaffe Jesus. all in. And he makes the call. You calling? Kind of unlucky for Jason to wake up with a bigger ace, but Jaffe is dominated. And Jason Mercier is in a great spot. He's a three to one favorite to bust Jaffe, collect his bounty, and get this table three handed. Flop is 8-6 king. Ace-queen still good. Jaffe looking for a 9 or running straight cards. Just to lock up the bounties too. 
Don't jinx me like that. Jason knocks out Jonathan. He will at least share the bounty win. The eight of diamonds on the turn. So now there's some chop outs. A king or a six will chop it. Jaffe can win and double up with a nine. Anything else and Jonathan Jaffe will be jettisoned. It's a five. Mercia's hand holds. Jonathan Jaffe is eliminated in fourth. He'll take home a total of $54,000. Jonathan said he'd rather be liked than envy, but I gotta tell you, I'm envying the 54 grand he's walking away with. Sure. So how many bounties do you have? Four? Don't worry, you're, you're locked up. I no, think. I'm, not, I'm not locked up. If either of you guys run the table, you get your own bounty and then you tie me. Mercia is correct, but he's got a commanding chip lead. Three players remain. Michael Pesek and Eugene Kachilov have got their work cut out for them. Mercy is leading the way right now. Pesek and Kachilov are neck and neck behind him at the moment. Mercia has also locked up at least part of the bounty bonus. Kachilov and Pesek can only tie him at this point. Remember, that bounty bonus is worth $20,000. Pesek's first to speak here. He has five six of diamonds. Under the gun is also the button when you're three-handed, so Pesek's in position. And he is going to raise it. A min raise to 6,000. 10 9 off suit for Eugene Kachilov. He'll fold. Jason Mercier has 10 3 of clubs in the big blind. Not a very good hand at all. Jason knows Pesek's button range is going to be pretty wide, though. And he will 3 bet to 15,800. Pesek, who's a little embarrassed over his garlic breath, knows Jason knows this as well. So he will call in position. Jason actually bluffing with the best hand here. Well, my guess is he's got plans for this hand after the flop. Well, that flop is ace, five, three with two hearts. A pair of fives for Pesek, a pair of threes for Mercia. Jason will probably want to keep repping a big hand. He is counting out chips for a continuation bet. He makes it 11,800. If Jason were three betting light pre-flop, he'd have to continue now, which he is. And typically, if you flop a piece in a three bet pot, you don't fold. Pesek makes the call. Jason might be ready to shut it down at this point. FBI expert Joe Navarro says most players give away mouth tails. It could be what Pesek's trying to cover up. The jack of clubs on the turn, so Mercia picks up a flush draw. This changes things a bit. Jason's equity just went up considerably. Will he fire again? No, he checks. Jason's given up the betting lead, but mm. if Pesek fires, I don't see him giving up a pair and a flush draw. Well, Pesek does fire. He bets 17,000. He does have the best hand. Oh. Mercia shoves on him. This is a six semi bluff, and Jason knows his equity's got to be pretty strong here, even if he does get called. Pesek lays it down. Jason Mercier catches rivers sometimes, but this move was pure B.A. As in Baracus, the man in the black van with the red stripe. Very similar. Wonder if Pesek's puking into that thing right now. His chip stack isn't all that healthy. On Mercier's side of the table is getting taken over by bounties and chips. It's a good problem to have. So three-handed action continues. I once tried to give Eugene Kachilov the nickname Silent But Deadly because he doesn't talk all that much, but now I'm thinking maybe that's why Pesek's always covering his face. Ace five off suit on the button and he raises to 6,000. Mercia mucks the five deuce. Pesek has a six in the big blind. Pesek has Eugene pipped, which means exactly one card higher. He moves all in. Eugene knows Pesek could be shoving pretty wide. He's got bounty equity and he's got him way covered. So he makes the call. Eugene, Eugene is dominated. Pesek's at risk, but he's ahead. There's also the tie for the bounty bonus on the line as well. And what's worse for Kachilov, Jason Mercier folded a five. Obviously, those percentages take into account these split pot possibilities. The flop is ace, queen, five, two pairs for Kachilov. That's so sick. There were only two fives left in the deck. Pesek is now reverse dominated and needs to catch a six or running clubs or a counterfeit. Pesek on the verge of elimination unless he can improve on the turn or river. He might need both the turn and river. He's almost chewing that thing now. Let's see the turn. 
Turn, Turn is the seven, seven of clubs. clubs. And your queen, and your seven, Fighting and your six, yeah. and your club. Oh, thanks, Eugene. Steal our work, why don't you? I have no problem with that. If Pesic misses, it'll be Catchlaw v Mercier, heads up. And Michael Pesic is down to his last card. Let's see the river. The river. Is the king of diamonds, and that will do it for Michael Pesek. He's eliminated in third place. He did pick up three bounties today. That's four in total. Plus the money he got for winning his first table means he walks away with $68,000. I guess triple draw, right? Let's make this nice and long. Oh, no. I was trying to catch the red eye. So here we go, the blinds are 1,500, 3,000 with a 400 ante. Action begins with Jason. He's on the button, he's posted the small blind. He's got five, six off suit. Jason's under the gun, which means he'll be in position after the flop. He's raised to 6,000. And Eugene Kachilov needs to move his chips because the camera can't see his hole cards. So we're having an unintentional sweat with Jason Mercier hand. Well, that's cool. Let's play it from Jason's perspective. The flop's ace, ace, five. Kachilov called from the big blind, and Jason has flopped a pair of fives to go with the aces on board. Kachilov's checked to him. Eugene didn't three bet, so Jason's five is going to be good most of the time. Looks like he's planning a continuation bet. He makes it 4,800. Jason's got what's likely to be the best hand and the pre-flop betting lead. Eugene is called. That call's got Jason on red alert. Hard to think Eugene called with total air, and there aren't a ton of draws on that board. Jack of hearts on the turn. Eugene checks a second time. A bet here would be fine, but personally, I like to keep the pot smaller with a hand like this. Jason does check behind. The river is the deuce of hearts. Backdoor hearts just came in, which makes Jason's hand even less likely to be good. Kachilov giving this serious consideration. He will lead the river. He will bet 8,600. I'd have to say Eugene's range is pretty wide in this spot. He could have busted diamonds with a jack. He could have an ace, really. Jason may feel his range includes a lot of bluffs, which may cause him the call. He's counting out chips for the call. They're not in play until they're across the line. He has called. And Kachilov shows a seven. Seven, seven plays. <laughs> Eugene checked the turn to set up the river bet. Very nice. 1-1. One, one. Right. <laughs> Keep it going on that rate. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll, give, I'll give you my small blind. Let's not, guys. I bought my plane ticket online. It's not refundable. Well, the blinds are up. They're now playing 2,000, 4,000 with a 500 ante. Kachilov is on the button. He'll be first to speak pre-flop. <clears throat> And he will look down at <laughs> eight, seven off suit. He managed to find the whole card camera this time. He min raises. Jason has nine, ten. And he will call. Jason's the slight favorite headed to the flop. These guys are sharing a lot of outs, though. And what a flop. Seven, eight, nine. Two pairs for Kachilov. Top pair and an up and down straight draw for Mercia. Jason checks to the razor. This board is so wet, Eugene can start betting this right now for value. 12,000. And for that same reason, Jason may not be able to give him credit for having a hand. What does she have about? Jason's likely to be ahead, but with an open ender, he knows even if he's not, he can't be in terrible shape. I have about 150 total with the bet. On. Jason puts Eugene all in. And catch it off calls. 10-9. Hmm? Yeah, flip. It is almost 50-50. Jason looks like he's going to be sick. That's all they needed. <laughs> so many suck outs to get here. He's going to need at least one more. Eugene will be one step closer to a number one son t-shirt. And either way, Jason's going to have her waiting for him afterward. So that's sort of a free roll. The turn card. Yeah. It's the three of spades. Kachilov now a two to one favorite to double up. Jason can hit a six, a nine, a 10 or a jack. <laughs> And if he does, yeah. he will win this title for the second year in a row. Yeah, let's see the river. The river. It's a 10! Another river suck out for Jason Mercier, and this one gives him the win. Only fitting that it ended on a suck out. If I had to sum up Jason's win, I would have to say it's because he's Jason Mercier. He played great and ran even better. It's a pretty deadly combination. 
Once again, he's the Bounty Shootout champion and the overall Bounty winner. That Bounty bonus worth an extra 20 grand to him. Actual start here on Phil Helmuth with 9-7 offsuit. Limps again. Phil's been limping around all week. Hasn't really worked out for him so far, but he should probably keep trying. King Trey of Diamonds from Minieri. Raises to 1100 over to Elke. Folds. Locke, who just got caught bluffing. I played that hand poorly. Calls. In I so get many unstuck. Ways. I get off the tilt juice. Hard to get off that tilt teat. 6-8 <laughs> for the cannon. And he's going to defend. Pretty loose, but decent pot odds. Phil's got to call now. And he does. Four-way action to the flop. Seven king, seven rainbow. Helmuth hits trips. I meant to say Phil Helmuth's a genius. <laughs> Martinez checks and Helmuth checks. Dara's got top pair and he had the pre-flop betting lead. This could get ugly for him. Bet's 2,600. Lock is out. Martinez out. For Helmuth, this is probably a spot to just call. It would be easy to chase away action on such a dry board, even though we know Dario wouldn't fold top pair. Even a call would look pretty strong here, though. There is the strong-looking call from Phil. We'll see a turn. King of spades boat for Dario. I don't know a lot of Italian poker terms, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, go! Oh! Check from Helmuth. Really, really tear a bad card for Phil. Especially since this looks like such a great card for Dario to keep barreling on. Minieri bets 5,300. Almost impossible for Phil to get away since Dario has such an aggressive rep. And Phil will not get away. Makes the call. Well, he's not drawing dead. I mean, he could hit quads. <laughs> River, nine of spades. No quads for Phil. And Minieri's got it locked up. Totally inconsequential card. Phil checks. How big will Dario's value bet be? $17,200 worth. Nearly a pot size value bet. A lot of players would feel forced or frustrated into calling here, but great players, they fold here sometimes. Oh, man. That's only sometimes. Let's see if Phil can get away. Calls. King, I only play the nuts like you, buddy. Dario wins a $55,000 pot. If I have it. Oh, boy, that's going to be the one. It's just f***ing unreal what happens to me at this f***ing place. I mean, it's just, I'm just so f***ing sick of it, you know? I mean, I just... I mean, I had the best hand on the turn, I had the best hand on the river. You guys have two outs every pot we yeah, play. Yeah, that's the best hand pre-flop. And I had the best hand pre-flop, unless you're yeah, seven. Nice hand, buddy. Thanks, Chief. I mean, what the is going on in this place? They don't make what is going on on the river? How do you I call it? Always trips? take a bluff. I only wait for the nuts. Oh, please, Dario. You know, I mean, you just cooled me off. You hit a two-outer, and, you know, and now you're a genius, I, mean, I, I just betted my hand. I don't feel a genius. That was pretty dirty, but not Dario's fault. This has nothing to do with you. I, I mean, I, I, I know, you know, I, 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 I want to just trap you. I mean, I think you have I two know. outs or you're drawing dead. So I yeah, just go. Yeah, but I'm not, uh, I'm not make this in bet if the other theory. king doesn't come. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you don't lose any more. Right, right. You don't lose any more on the hand, right? Of course. Yeah. Chance for Dario to go back to back. He'll start the action here. What are they doing to me? I mean, this is un. Talk is that you think I'm stupid. That's the only thing that makes me crazy. Phil had Queens cold decked by Bill Perkins Kings earlier in the week. I see virtually no way Phil could lose with these Kings. And he min raises over to Minieri. Makes the call with the ace five suited. Elky out. It's usually where you raise it up on me, Dario. Yeah, he wanted Dario to three bet. No such luck. Queen four for lock. Folds. Cost me four bucks to play. Perkins calls with the 10 7. I get to play against. My new target. <laughs> How many targets you have? Target! OMG, I think Phil's jealous. To the flop, ace, ace, queen, and Dario has run down Phil again. Bye-bye, kings. I check. Perkins checks. As does Helmuth. I know. <laughs> checks around. Dario trapping the trapper. Turn, five of diamonds, full boat for Dario. Now even if Phil hits his king, he still loses. Check. Perkins checks. I better bet. I got a 
That's you better bet something. 1200. Helmuth bets 1200. Helmuth runs worse than a 78 pacer. Dario could raise here, but he has virtually nothing to protect against, and he doesn't want to chase his action away. Minieri calls. I better fold. And Perkins is done with it. Phil's soon to be done with this whole game. Jack of diamonds on the end. How much will he fire into the abyss? 28. Phil now guaranteed to lose at least another $2,800. Dario knows he's raising, and he knows how much. He's just mentally preparing himself for the verbal abuse he's about to incur. Dario makes it 6,600. It's just a really kind of unreal night, huh? Wow, how can this happen every time I'm in the game here? Phil doesn't do himself many favors, but he runs worse than a hot chick in a horror movie. And the carnage is unfortunately just as entertaining. I guess you got me. Let me say I'm I got you, I got you. I never bluff. Dario takes it down. Ace five. That's good. Phil shows the kings. Good, the king didn't come on the river. Look at that silver lining, huh? It's unbelievable. This kid was drawn to a two-outer on me, and a three-outer, and a four-outer. You have pocket kings? Rest. Yeah, pocket Showed kings. It. I only lost 10,000, so it's pretty, like, good. That's astounding. It's astounding? Then you only lost 10,000. You, you think I ever win in this game with kings or queens? They always hit their frickin' weird card. You know that weird card, the ace? Dario Minieri, Jack-9. Makes the call. Elky with Jack Trey of hearts. Looks like he wants to play. And he'll call out of the small blind. Helmuth's practically priced in the whole table. Queen eight for lock. And he'll call. Let me look. 10 deuce for Perkins. Go, please. See, this is so sick. I limp with this hand for a specific reason. I'm sure you're gonna tell us. It's a good trapper hand. Says the man with only one leg. Jack, four, nine, rainbow, two pair for Dario. Elkie's flop top pair, but it's not the best top pair. Dario has top pair with a kicker that's also a pair. <laughs> Elkie bets 2,200. Lock folds. Over to Perkins. I'm scared of you. I'm scared of that guy. Folds. The guy, the guy in the middle. He looks too serious. Dario looks too serious? He looks like a lost puppy. Helmuth calls 2,200 with a gut shot and one over. Gut shot to the nuts. Action back on Dario. The serious guy. 11,000. I knew it. Saw that face. That's a serious raise to 11,000 from Minieri. Great spot for a raise. He can get called by draws and maybe even someone like Elky with top pair. But Elky folds. Phil doesn't have a ton of money left behind. He does have one over, but this would be a pretty loose call. It's for a quarter of his stack. We know Phil's stuck and steaming, which doesn't always lead to the best decisions. All right, I call. And Helmuth will make the call with the gut shot. Helmuth's really gambling now. To the turn. Queen of clubs, and this would be a bad time for a snack break. Phil hits his gut shot. Yahtzee. Checks. I like the check by Phil. Dario's pretty likely to keep firing. That queen wasn't a good card for Dario, but he's still pretty likely to think he has the best hand. He does. Bets 14,700. Now this would be a pretty good spot for Phil to raise, since Dario's probably got something... And like Michelangelo's David, Phil's got the stone nuts. <laughs> Phil's been waiting all week to get a piece of Dario. And Phil does not have very much left behind. Now raise. He's gonna raise. We're likely to see it all get in here. 29-9. And Phil's all in. Hi, right, Cole. How many times do you wanna run? Dario makes the call. Well, you might be drawing dead, so I'm hoping you're drawing dead. I hope you have 10 I might be drawing dead. You have 10 king? Yeah. Nice call on the turn. On the flop, sorry. I'm not drawing dead anyway. Well, let's see what you have. Good call on the flop. As you say to everyone, that's the only reason why I say it. Was a pretty ridiculous call on the flop. Tilt juice! He's getting a little bit of his tilt juice here. Yeah. Dario's taking it pretty well. Look at that smile, he's adorable. Phil might finally have a hand that holds up. Dario looking for a jack or a nine. They're only going to run it once. River, five of spades, and Phil will double up. Five of spades, it's over. I wish I could call river cards like that. <laughs> 26. 29, nine. 29, nine. Phil, you're up after that hand.
that too. But it was, it felt pretty obvious to me. Even though I wouldn't do that, I, I kind of respect it. I can. Three, <laughs> Pocket 10s really for Sergio Aido starting this final <laughs> table, respect. second in chips. Opens yeah. under the guns at 200,000. Yeah, Sergio definitely going to be one to watch on this final table. Certainly a very familiar face from the EPT circuit. We're used to seeing him a lot out there. A lot of deep runs, high rollers, main events. Queen Jack suited for Ping Lu. Flats on the button. Jack four. Sandeep Palampati in from the big blind, and we're going three ways to the flop. Huh? Oh my god. Jack <laughs> ten four on the flop. Looks like we have a cooler <laughs> at the very first hand of this FT. Palampati with two pair. A set for Sergio Aido. This is so sick. This is the actionist flop they could have possibly put out there. Yeah, going to be very difficult for Palampati not to go broke here. 40 big blinds, you know, <laughs> this is going to be played as a bet call from Lou on the button here, which is going to create this opportunity for Palampati to check raise in the sort of area of around a million plus. Yeah. And with three million behind, you know, you can't really get away from two pair. I guess the four of clubs is the only way this could have been sicker. So yes, Lou with one club, but has paired his jack, does indeed call Aido's continuation bet of 300,000, giving Palampati the opportunity to make a move here. Yeah, it's just a scenario where it's going to be so important to protect this particular kind of two pair on this texture against two opponents. You know, all those king-queen, ace-queen, eight-nine suited type hands you don't want to just give a free card to. It's a very exposed two pair. Yep. And uh, Edo's just licking his lips knowing he has... Oh, literally licked his lips. Yeah, effectively the stone nuts probably would have seen a squeeze from the big line with pocket jacks. So is going to be aware this is going to be Something like pocket fours or maybe jack ten a lot of the time. Probably doesn't think a lot about jack four very often, but when it is suited, would be something that players will be third man in for the one big blind. And since Sergio probably thinks that he's going to be strong a lot of the time here, wants to probably get it in. 1.6 million. No point in trying to trap. Ping Lu is going to be like, what? <laughs> Top pair, no good, I guess. Later. So, Palampati made it 900,000. Sergio Aido has made it 1.6 million. Probably so excited to start this final table a great opportunity for palampati and just the first hand is just being put in it right now i mean it's not really the sort of board people are going to be semi bluff re-raising with the mate does he ever get away from it well the other thing is is sergio what sergio is repping is is frankly always better than than what Palampati has. That's what I mean. Ado wouldn't yeah. be three betting this flop with aces, kings, or queens, or ace jack. Would just be calling the check raise. I think isn't just going to want to get in forty big blinds. So Palampati is a little concerned here. Certainly. Come on, oh. Palampati moves all in, gets snap called by Sergio Aido, and there is a 95% chance that Palampati is KO'd on the very first hand of the final table. Yeah, remember, a jack was folded by Ping Lu on the button, so big, big trouble for Palampati. No backdoor spades. Man. Single out. This is an ICM nightmare. Maybe when he wakes up, the real funnel table will begin. <laughs> Maybe we're just a part of his nightmare right now. Spin your token. <laughs> Only the Jack of Diamonds on the river will save Sandy Palampati from elimination. 
I think the eight of diamonds means the jack of diamonds could potentially come. That is how it works. It's on its way. It's in the vicinity. Are we going to get a one out of here? No. And Palampati is eliminated. Cash is for forty-two thousand dollars. Seventh place finisher in this NAPT Las Vegas main event, and Sergio Edo taking the chip lead now with eleven and a half million. The taking of Palam, one, two, three. And I guess one thing we should highlight is the laddering for David Coleman, Jonathan Borenstein, and Ping Lu, who were all shorter stacks at the start of the final table, Griffin. Yeah, ideal start yeah, for those short stacks, but a very unfortunate oh, turn of events for Sandeep Palampati. Very, very unlucky. Never how you want to start a final table. Quite like this raise here from Ping Lu. Just really putting Coleman the pressure on him. This sort of high card, mid card combo. It's gonna be tough for Coleman to continue with a lot of hands. This is not one of those hands. This is gonna play very, very easily as, I mean, really a call or a shove, but but much more often a call. And Coleman rightfully does that. Nine eight six. Open ended straight draw versus top pair. You think when they invented poker, they knew, they knew it was just always going to be top pair versus a straight draw, top two versus a flush draw. Who invented poker? I think they think the it's French. Andre Pokel. <laughs> right, like all the cards are French royalty, right? Right. And I do think it was pokier at first. Maybe I'm just making that up. I think it was like P O Q U E was the game. Yeah. Poke. Oh, so that's Poke. why he's that on Poke it, Your yeah. Stars. Exactly. It's an old French site. I got it. Coleman sitting on the 18 big blinds to start the hand. 16 behind here. Oh. Curious to see if he plays this as a sort of let's just get this in. A lot of bad turn cards for Coleman's hand. Like that Ooh. one. Like the glove. That is a bad one. It's always coming seven, unless the seven is trying to make it straight. Then it comes to five. I mean, I know chat pro Saturday, but this sounds made up. <laughs> After the game, no, it's a new thing. Can someone write it down in the chat, please, and canonically uh, add it to the. After the game is spread through Texas, Hold'em was introduced to Las Vegas in 1963 at the California Club by Corky McCorkadale. Poor Coleman. Just when he thought he might win a live tournament, that five came on the turn. Is going to call here. I don't blame him. Too high up in your range here. You're just hoping for a brick river and Ping Lu to shut down. Oh, wow. And that is a brick river, but I don't see him powering down. It's a shame that Lu doesn't have 10 sub because then he'd get paid the ultimate fortune bonus for the seven card straight. <laughs> You need the seven card straight flush, don't you, for the for the big one? For the really big one, yeah. Now, do they count a royal with two more cards as the seven card straight flush? They must, right? Oh. So, Ping Lu doesn't go for the jugular. No. And this is going to be very difficult for Coleman to fold because, you know, had ping shoved here i think coleman would be able to find a big fold at, at a decent percentage of the time because it's kind of it's difficult to just find three barrels here if you're ping lu right because coleman could just have a seven and you could just be blasting in to to the effective nuts so but this bet right here that will leave coleman with you know five and a half big blinds you know an opportunity after going through the small blind to have a rotation if you're wrong to to try to build it back up it's just, it's very inviting. So it's a very, very intelligent, very measured bet here. I think a lot of players would often just shove here for, you know, 60% stack to pot ratio. But Lou says, you know what? My opponent's going to have something like a nine a lot of the time here. Maybe I can just 
give him a chance to call. Coleman has played one time bank card so far. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds per decision on the shot clock. You have to play time bank cards if you need more thinking time. I would pull this. People love playing a seven. Thanks to us, really. We popularized the seven. Yeah. I think seven's guy might have something to say about that. No, we popularize sevens guy is what I mean. Yeah, we're like the good place, and the sevens guy is like, you know, the guy that we put the thing on the wall. That, Doug? Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think yeah. so. So fold from David Coleman. Great fold. He'll now be playing just 10 big blinds. Ping Lu up to 38 big blinds. Officially third in chips. Aces for Coleman in the small blind. Here comes a punt. Yeah, and what's great about the, the King-5 limp earlier, small blind to big blind off 10 big blinds that I was a bit surprised by, is that Coleman has now established that he does have a sort of pretty big <coughs> 10 big blind limping range, right? So he can now do that again with these pocket aces. And if Sergio looks down at something like, you know, a King-8 offsuit even, might just shove in these 14 big blinds um, whereas otherwise maybe would be playing a little more defensively. But Coleman's actually going to go for the raise. And I think Queen Jack would have been interesting to see how Sergio would have reacted to the limp, whether he would have shoved or just checked behind. Sergio. Too strong to fold on pre-flop here. Defends with the Queen Jack, and we have a King-10-6 oh. flop. Open-ended draw for Aido. Coleman's still ahead with aces. Three to one favorite. And Coleman's got, what, 11 bigs behind? Yeah, about two to one stack to pot, pot ratio here. Great spot to bet. When you you don't even really have to bet right. that big. Really likely actually that Sergio is on board, on base in some capacity with this particular texture, being prepared to call a raise preflop. Gonna be a lot of queen jacks, you know, your king nines, 10 jacks, hands like that. And is this always just a bet and not uh, a shove? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's two to one in, in the pot, right? There's 600K out there. He has 1.1 million. No reason to shove. You don't want to fold out a 10 or something. You want to bet that 30%, keep him in there. You know, if Sergio even has, like, jack nine of diamonds here, he's going to fold to a shove, but he's going to... He actually shoves it in. Yeah. And, yeah. Look. Aido shoves on Coleman, who calls all in with the aces. And it's going to have to fade an ace or a nine. response. Anywhere no response. but Joker stars, I'd say the aces are probably super safe. Six outs for Sergio Aido, six cards. But David Coleman's going to have to fade because he's officially the at-risk player here. Four diamonds on the turn, that's safe. Just a 14% chance that Coleman gets done here. Cards to avoid, aces and nines. The river is a deuce. That is a double up for David Coleman. And it sees Sergio Aido drop down to second place on the leaderboard. Coleman now playing around 30 bigs, pretty much tied with Nick Shulman. Sergio Aido now has fewer chips than Sammy Beshahed. And the dream to win his first Live poker tournament. It's alive and well for David Coleman. Jonathan Borenstein firmly the shortest stack with 10 big blinds. Blinds going up in six minutes. Borenstein in the danger zone. Danger zone! Oh, Griffin, he stole your line. <laughs> I gave it to him. To be fair, I stole it. From Archer. No, 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 no. Your version is a homage. Griffin's version is stealing. <laughs> I didn't even say it, and I'm getting <laughs> eviscerated now. Yeah, 
The worse shape my voice is in, the harder it is to do the danger zone. Yesterday was non-existent, so. 230. Four raises to A lot of ace-queens today, and I think a fair few of them being dealt to Ping Lu. This is a suited ace-queen. The strawberry flavor. The raise is to 230,000. Come around to Borenstein in the big blind, who, as we've established, is the short stack at the table. Borenstein, more like Borenstein. Yeah, you know, not someone Ooh. we've... Oh, wow. I was just going to say, not someone we've talked a lot about on this final table because he's been incredibly card dead. And to finally get this massive hand here for 10 big blinds just in time, it's going to be thrilled to see what Lou calls with. So, all in and a call and a domination situation He's in quick. Borenstein's favor. Oh my god, how can he Why call there? Borenstein hasn't played a single hand. He's a professional poker player. <laughs> you guys have screens over there? You got screens? <coughs> Five Not a good flop. Domination confirmation. Domination average continuation. Mm. Opportunities. Ace, king, holds. Domination, finalization. Borenstein gets the double up. And this is girlfriend Linear on the rail. Queen nine for Borenstein in the small blind. Starts the hand with 16 big blinds. A bit tricky here. You know, far too many chips to shove. Not a hand you would feel comfortable raising in this situation, and you are limping into one of the chip leaders who can put max pressure on you, as far as ICM is considered, with those two other stacks around your stack level. But Beshahed happens to have a hand that has really good playability post. And it's just going to check back, and we'll see. Oh, baby! Wow. Baby! Borenstein flops a boat. Beshahed with a no good straight draw. I guess the less than 1% is running cards to make a straight flush. Very good. And I do not fault Beshahed for betting here. This is a pretty favorable flop against a lot of ranges. And for Beshahed's sake, I hope he doesn't hit a king or an eight. 125,000 each going to the turn, which is the three of clubs. Sure. Take the free card. Rut row. 425k chunky bet from Bashahead with his no good draw. And not surprised to see Borenstein putting on a little dog and pony show here on the turn now that it represents, you know, about 25% of his stack. Really wants to make it look like it's a tough decision here. As we established yesterday, Griffin, slowly, slowly catchy monkey. You established that. <laughs> yeah, one of those spots you're prepared to burn one of those time banks. Not every day you flop a full house on a big final table. Morenstein calls. River card coming. It is an eight. Oh 
Yeah, this is really bad news for the Frenchman here. Because you have to think your opponent is going to have a lot of 9x, the occasional queen x. Some flush draws. So maybe you don't want to shove. Maybe you do just want to bet six, seven hundred thousand and make an incredibly brutal fold facing the check shove. One point two. No, he's he's, he's going for the jugular here, and he's going to hate life when he sees him go all in for that extra two hundred thousand. <laughs> I mean, Besha had knows that he's just given away two big blinds here. Wow, indeed. Double up for Jonathan Borenstein. Borenstein now playing 35 big blinds, and that is a bit of a dent in Beshahed stack. He drops down to 64 big blinds. We now have an overwhelming chip leader in Sergio Aido. Two and a half hours is a long time. To uh, well, this is Sammy Beshahed shoving on Nick on, Shulman, Nick. small Thank to big. You. And Nick's called it off. Nick Shulman is all in and at risk. King seven is the hand for Beshahed. Wait and see next cards. I just have a king seven in the course right now. <laughs> oh, it's a flip. It is. It's, be flippy. Right it's a flip. We are flipping, right? Yeah. Like Phil Helmy with versus Magnus Carlsen. One of these two top of their fields has a slight mathematical advantage. What does Nick's hat say? Haven't made it out. I, I, my guess is it's some. It says 160. I guess it's some. My guess is it's some kind of brand I can't afford. <laughs> One six zero IGO. Oh boy. There is a king on the flop, and Shulman is going to need a four to survive. Well, if we lose Nick, we lost some style. Anybody have one? <laughs> I don't think so. Do you remember, Ping? Any four? Right. Okay. Right. Four's alive. Four Two outs fours. in the deck for Nick Shulman. <laughs> That's your story from yesterday. You're fast. You picked up on that. I'm not that dumb. Sometimes I am, but... Needs to hit on the river. And misses. On, so we lose Nick Shulman in sixth place. He cashes for $54,680. And we are down to five in the NAPT Las Vegas main event. Oh, and now he's coming in to do guest commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I guess I'll just go take a nap. You might not be in a good enough mood to do that. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. Slido opened to two hundred and seventy-five and Borenstein's made it seven hundred and fifty. Ugh. Action back on Sergio. What a six spot. Man, if Sergio is, you know, good enough to just call with Ace Queen that last hand. Maybe he doesn't think Ace Queen is that big of a hand. Thinking about it. Plays a time bank cup. Boy, it's a lot of money if he jams for the flop. I certainly wouldn't like that. Which we don't. Okay. You want to go there? You want to put the chair over there? So he's probably now hmm. thinking about yeah. call I eliminated. or fold. I think it's almost always going to be a call. Call. Cool. Agree. I'm always looking for somebody to, to make that. Amazing lay down. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Ace 10 4 with two diamonds. See, before the flop, to me, Ace Queen is you can do some crazy, weird folds if you think you're in bad shape. But on this flop, getting away from Ace Queen <laughs> is very difficult. Let's focus on the positive. How much do you love this with Ace King and the Ace of Diamonds? How about that? Yeah, beautiful. That is 
Okay, so Sergio can't get away now. Now what? You hit a queen, Phil. <laughs> That's a solid strategy. You oh. like call, I like call. Get yeah. there. Instead, it's the four of clubs. Jeez, that's just an awful phrase. <laughs> okay, on the other hand, the ace king is in yeah. feeling very good right now. Yeah, look at it from Borenstein's perspective. It's like, yes. Yep. What are you going to do, James? How much? Jamming? One million? I'm jamming here, but I'm terrible. Yeah, same with me. I mean, I'm never in the spot. I'm never five-handed at the final table <laughs> of an NAPT, but... I like, if, a, I like a million. If somehow my brain was suddenly transplanted into Jonathan Borenstein's body for this particular moment, I probably would just move all in. 1.4. He goes 1.4. We're going to split the difference between going all in and 1 million. <laughs> I like that, 1.4. <coughs> you know, it's, he, has to, he, has to, he has to be concerned about being the next player to bust. And you don't want to bet too cheap and let somebody with, you know, some kind of drawy hand in there. It's unlikely anybody has a drawy hand, but you know, sometimes, sometimes your opponent has king, queen of diamonds here, king, jack of diamonds, right? You want to bet enough maybe to just end it. And your opponent, and now, you know, from Sergio's point of view. It's interesting, the modern day players, like, in his spot with ace, queen, like the call, um, I kind of like the jam. I do not think he can get away from this. As played. Yep. It doesn't seem like it. They always say call and reevaluate, but the more you call, the harder it is to reevaluate. <laughs> hey, look at this. Wow, what a fold. That was incredible. Heck yeah. I cannot believe it. Ah, max credit. Again, I don't mind. It's, I'm, I just think differently than everybody else. I don't actually mind the fold before the flop because ace-queen is never good to, to someone who's, who's playing legitimate hands. Lots of love in the chat for that fold. No need for chat pro Saturday. Impressive all around. That was the most exciting hand of the day. Good timing. That was fantastic. Really, really well done. Ping with ace tray suited under the gun. Makes it 325. There's that standard raise. <laughs> Two other aces folded slightly better. Pocket jacks for Borenstein. Yep. Someone in chat wanted me to use this joke. The, the Borenstein pair. Almost works as Berenstein pair. That's why I gave him credit. If it had been really good, I would have just stolen the joke. <laughs> the Bernstein bear. I mean the Borenstein bear. I mean the <laughs> Bernstein bear. <laughs> now, of course, Luke can just fold here. But, uh, but I will say, since you've been gone, Borenstein has been super aggressive. Welcome back, James. Thank you very much, Phil. Hello, Joseph. Hey, buddy. We I'm, actually, Phil organically brought up James Bond. No. <laughs> yes. I really did. Phil, you got to wait till I'm here before you do that. You can't bring up James Bond in my absence. Otherwise, Anne, I feel I feel, I feel left out. Anne is a huge James Bond fan, and she's going to watch a, a marathon tomorrow. <gasps> so, so you can imagine how happy I was, because I love NFL football. And my sister's here, and she's a Special Olympic champion, so I have to spend the day oh, with her. Whoa, oh, whoa, my whoa, goodness. Whoa. Okay, let's come back to that. Yeah. The reason that Ping Lu moved in here is because Bornstein has been super aggressive. 
And so he finds himself in a bad spot, but he's like, this guy's been raising and re-raising and betting and raising and re-raising. And so if Ping Lu goes broke, his excuse to his friends will be, this guy was a maniac. I had to do it. So Lu, the at-risk player here. Are we allowed to make side bets in the booth? <laughs> we can make a gentleman's side bet. I mean, James, I'm, I'm like, I'll take two to one and I'll bet on Lou's hand. Oh, no, oh. I can't do that because two aces are gone. Never mind. Oh, oh my. But there's two threes. You in your gut, Phil. Two threes on the flop. This is so sick. Oh, how unlucky is this for two jacks? I mean, if he raised with ace three, the ace four and the ace six folded. <laughs> He's still somehow. Oh, my goodness. That is Phil Helmuth unlucky right there. Yeah, I was about to take, I, if I would have remembered it was the two aces, I would have just beat James for like 600. And the last ace! I would have just beat James for 600. He Get would have laid like five here. to one. I How never, much would you have bet? I put, never, put the case three ever out there just so he jacks every single spot, out. Ever. If you thought I was ever, <laughs> ever going to take the jacks here, you are mistaken. Think ever, oh, oh, my God! What the hell? Oh, my God! Oh my God. So, Trips on the flop, full house on the turn, quads on the river, Lou doubles up through Borenstein. He basically took an unplayable hand in an unplayable spot and turned it into the triple nuts. Overkill poker gods. Well, that was the most ridiculous hand of the day so far, and the action now continues. Here on the Pokestars North American Poker Tour in Las Vegas. We are at Resorts World Vegas for the final table of the main event where we are still five-handed. However, we do have two super short stacks right now. Three, I guess, if you include David Coleman. The chip leader being Sammy Beshahead with 53 bigs. Ping Lu, 43 big blinds. And then Coleman on 17, Borenstein on 10, Sergio Aida with just five big blinds. Hyper danger zone. I am James Hoskin. He is Griffin Benger. Hello, everyone. And we are kicking things off at the 125, 250 blind level. 250k big blind ante. We lost Sandy Palampati on the very first hand of the day. We lost Nick Shulman about four and a half hours ago. We have been five-handed since, but something's got to give soon, especially with those super short stacks, which means someone will be cashing out in fifth for 71K. The winner will get more than a quarter of a million dollars and will receive the first NAPT main event trophy in more than a decade. Yeah, something does have to give, James, and it's money. We want to give them money, but they refuse to bust, and then we can't give them money. Welcome back. Good luck. Get some back from the dinner break. Cards in the air once again. Five playing down wow. to a winner. Starting the trend. I'll drink heads up. Saw that incredible fold from Sergio Edo, the ace queen against the Bornstein ace king there. Cool. You said I in the highlights. How does he have five big blinds, James? Yeah, it wasn't updated. <coughs> well, the reality is, Griffin, the blinds have caught up with these guys, so every pot is now a massive swing in stacks. All in. And there is Sergio all in on the first hand back from break, king three of clubs. Ace ten of clubs. The Jonathan Barstein. 1.425. Great spot here for Jonathan to reshove with exactly 10 big blinds. Hugely ahead of Sergio's range here, shoving five bigs at the cutoff. Any ace going in. There is the call Please. on the button. No. He's called. I'm sorry, called. Small blind out. Big blind out. Showdown. All in moment. And Sergio the best of it. does not have a live suit, but he does have two live cards. Yeah, same shapes. He's a two to one dog here. You know, king high flops are the most common flops. If that sounds made up, it's because it is. Do you know what the most common type of flop is, Griffin? What? Paired board with a flush draw. Really? Oh, mathematically. That is a hashtag fun fact. Oh. <laughs> Threes have not been kind to me. <laughs> Edo asking for the quads. That one's okay. 
not that's, looking good for Sergio Aido. An ace high flop, okay, and he's that. down to 2%. What do we need for a sweat? A king three or a king. Three. Yeah, that's yeah, it. That's it huh? Could be drawing dead on the turn. There's a king. Well, has picked up outs. Pairs his king on the turn, so needs another king or a three on the river to survive. River card Oof. is a well, deuce, God. close, Sergio. but no cigar, and we lose Sergio Aido in oh, yeah. fifth place. We are finally <laughs> down to four players. <laughs> the Spanish pro cashing out for $71,000. Yeah, yeah, no cigar indeed, but 71 k Not bad, not bad. So four remain from the 1,095 <laughs> total the entries in this NAPT <laughs> main event. <laughs> The no sider is sick. The red no sider. Red no red no sider is top. That's real sick. That's top. Dejan's talking about the uh, what the river card was. No sider could have been a two three. I had my oh. <coughs> you need a table. Get this man a table for his beer. No, I have one. I have one. Yeah. I just wanted to have my yeah, beer in hand in case I lost. Let him hold uh, his beer. No, in case he I doesn't drink beer, he needs to hold the beer. You can't drink beer if it's on a table. <laughs> blind v. Blind. Ping Lu in the small with 10-4 off. 800. 800. Raised 800,000. Raises to 8 Hundred thousand. Queen six for David Coleman. I love this race from Ping Lu. <laughs> it's not the kind of hand that has playability as a limp. You don't want to be given walks to, you know, the, the 15 big blind stack here. So let's just make it a little over three X. Yep. See if our man Coleman can do <laughs> anything about it. He can't. Queen six in the muck. John, what do you got now? Five. Ping Lu, a player uh, no. with two and a half million dollars um, in live tournament earnings. 58th place finisher in this four, year's World two, Series of Poker main event. Four. 4.3. Yeah, of course, got very line. lucky in the ace three suited against the pocket jacks hand, but it, it is very telling. A player that is prepared to make that kind of stand with a hand of that nature, yeah. usually someone that is really prepared to sort of do what he needs to do to to win a tournament. Sometimes you need to, you know, hope that your opponent's bluffing pre flop and, and get a hand so like that in the middle the and then get lucky just, sometimes. And like, look what right. he's doing with it, right? Until you move your hand. 11 million chips here, four handed. Optimus Kai on Twitch has a good theory. Guys, you need to take breaks more often if players are going to bust on the first hand back. Just take a break every single hand, and then we'll lose a player every single hand. That's how it works, right? You got it. You 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 got a lot of experience doing this, James. I trust you. There's Sammy. Sammy boy. Other people recognizing Sammy from his work as a dealer on Hustler Casino Live. He's also racked up a fair few results, approaching $1 million in live tournament earnings. Once again, it's a battle of the blinds. Borenstein in the small. Five three of clubs. Four, about four. Completes. Maybe a tiny, maybe 3.9. A six for the chip leader in the big blind. Good awareness there to, to shove in the 16, yeah. 17 big blinds there. No free flops for you. Not when I have an ace. You have 3.9? 3, 3 I have 3.8. North American Poker Tour 2023. It already has a theme tune, Griffin. It doesn't need <laughs> whatever that was. <laughs> Six five for David Coleman under the gun. Folds. 
Round two, the blinds again. Sammy Beshahed in the small. Pocket nines. That's a general rule in these ICM Might situations for Ping Lu. He really needs to sort of Might have to miss Musashi. bend the knee a little bit to Sammy Beshahed. He really can't be you looking could to play any big pots against the chip leader. Oh. Um, well, that's... Unless you pick Joe up queens, coming. right? That is interesting. Here. Sammy's raised 800,000. Ping Lu with queens in the big blind. Likely to re-raise. Yeah, it's actually it's kind of interesting because it's unclear you would even want to induce here. 2.4. You know, to get to to sort of even get it in against an ace five suited or something, with the ICM considerations of the of Coleman and Bornstein both having under four million, and this is the kind of hand these two nines that Besha had sitting there thinking, well, this is a really good hand. But it is 40 big blinds, so yeah, just a call I think is is wise. Yep. We go to the flop with five million in the pot. Queens versus nines. Nine nine. Oh, it is a nine high flop. Oh, do you see what I did there? And this could spell disaster for Ping Lu. An overpair to the board. Sammy playing in flow, checks to him. And this is so sick. Coleman and Borenstein, 15 bigs each. They're going to be loving life in a second. This is exactly the situation you were talking about, Griffin, where the second biggest stack needs to avoid getting involved in massive pods yeah. against the chip leader. And here we go. Yeah, I would, I would love to talk to someone like Sam Grafton about the spot, but I feel like maybe you're supposed to, to shove or just call pre. I know it sounds a little strange, but really can't finish fourth here. Two point and two. now it looks like you're about to. Well, this is a committing bet. 2.2 2 million. I mean, it is committing in the sense that, of course, he's going to call off at this stage, but... You know, if Beshahed just calls here, I mean, you're so strong there with top pair. If Beshahed just calls and the turn is a king of diamonds and it goes check, check, and the river is a, you know, another diamond or a, a jack. Not a jack, actually, but, if, you know, if it were to go ten of diamonds and then jack, or that's a straight for the queens. There are, there's a couple ways, but... Yeah, Bushhead's going to recognize that if Lou is strong here, he's going to have to call. Shoves on Ping Lou. <laughs> Who doesn't love the situation, but kind of now has to call it off. Does call, and we'll see that he has been outflopped over pair against set. Ping Lu drawing to two outs. Absolute incredible turn of events here. Ping Lu has played so well on this final table. has been willing to push against, edges Ping, and just gets nine. cooler here blind on blind. 21.7 million in the pot. Borenstein, Coleman loving this situation. Not even a backdoor diamond to his name. Looking for... A 10 and a jack, or one of the two queens remaining in the deck. One last chance to hit. Two outs for Ping Lu. A 5% chance of survival. And, and really, Ping is really wearing it here. You can't blame him. Just feels not good when you're in such good position. Ping Lu misses the river, and we are down to three players. Great playing with you. Play great. And what an interesting really dynamic really we now have at this three-handed final really table. Really Ping Lu, for that fourth place finish, gets $92,410. David Coleman and Jordan Borisini. All right, Jonathan guys, I'll Borisini even chop it ladder. right now. I'll do it. 
I'll do it. And Coleman and Bornstein with a combined 27 big blinds left. Sammy Bejahed with 100 big blinds at 25 million to the 3.8. Lose and one 3. player, 3. 3. 5, respectively. Hours, two players between in between Jonathan minutes? and David. Wow. Right now? I mean, they have laddered. Uh -huh. Now guaranteed a six-figure yeah. score. Now guaranteed 120k. Wolfpack just went up. Wolfpack but yes, has gone <laughs> Sammy up. has such Wolfpack a stranglehold now up. and can basically just open jam on these guys, Griffin, and leverage well, the fact that they're well, both playing 50 the picks. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, how about a winner's photo instead? That's gonna be tough for us. But it's not gonna be impossible. What is it? Ne it's never impossible. Low? My chips are in play. That was a bold shove you made there, bro. Uh, Surprised you did that. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty convinced he was very strong. It's <laughs> a good read. You got the turn and wasn't gonna matter, but yeah. Well the turn would have mattered million. if it was the King of Diamonds, right? And that's what we talked about. So Besha had really aware. Let's get all the money in now. But who had it? But right away, <coughs> finds a shoving hand in the ace jack. He said that. He like, said that. I knew he was wrong. Certainly, you can induce this particular hand. You knew he had it. Into the two players, try to get something like an ace seven to shove from the small blind. But you're welcome. Probably wants Thank to you. just establish the shoving early and, uh, and keep things simple. <laughs> now we have been playing at this final table with 75 minute blind levels. Now we are down to three players. We are playing with 40 minute blind levels. The pressure is on. How much do you have, Colts? 3.35. Pressure is on, but as far as three-handed um, situations oh, go, pressure isn't as high as it usually is, right? I mean, a chip leader that is so lax with back. Thank you. Ten times the stack of the other two. And two players that are really free rolling seen. being final three right now. Sure. After. So, you know, to be in this six figure pay bracket all of a sudden. Bash ahead with the king three suited. I think this is a hand definitely you can just consider shoving for 13 big blinds. Now giving Bornstein an opportunity to flop some equity here by f flicking in this one chip, and he does do it. Yeah, and advantage, Jonathan. Club on the turn. Sammy looking a little better here after being way out of it on the flop. Small bet from Bornstein, kind of price setting and also wanting to extract from value some value from some ace high type hands well we now have three sevens out there because it's always coming seven Borenstein with a full house Sammy missing his flush draw yeah, and obviously it doesn't appear to be the strongest hand you can have just having this six but Jonathan's going to be really aware how strong this full house is here and I imagine is going to go for some value in the range of sort of six to 900K. And actually, you know what? Goes quite small. Oh no, it's 700, right, sorry. Nice There's a different John. colored chip. I got it right. I did say 700. So Borenstein now with 18 bigs. Happy birthday, John. David Coleman, 12 bigs. The he rest the is Sammy Bechahed, close to 100 big blinds. And obviously a little unlucky to lose to, make dinner. to six five there for Sammy, but I did, do think it is a good example of why it's important to shove there. You're putting yeah. so much yeah, pressure on these players to, get to, dinner, <laughs> to really only call very tight because if you call and lose there, you're you're, you're missing out on a you know near fifty thousand dollar pay jump. Sure Instead, you wow. let them sneak in there for the one big blind, out flop you, and now suddenly, Bornstein closer to twenty big blinds.
funny though, you know, with 13 to 15 big blinds, this is always just going to be a shove. But now Bornstein's kind of in that 18 big blind territory that, where, you know, you can't really risk running into a better hand. You kind of have to defer to the chip leader. So he's just going to limp in and Beshahead checks behind. Jack A3, Sammy flops best. Bet from Sammy, a fold from John. Bershahad maintains his dominance. As we continue to play three-handed for the final table, the NAPT Las Vegas main event. A reminder that once things wrap today, once we have awarded the main event trophy, two, three and a half, four, and paid our winner more than a quarter of a million dollars. We will be switching things up tomorrow and bringing you the final table of the 5K High Roller. That's playing down to the FT today. Last time I checked in, there were about 25 players remaining. <coughs> yeah, they must be going late <coughs> to get down to that final table we need. Going to be a lot of heroes left in that thing. I've seen a lot of great players playing that event. Really don't like this limp from Besha Head here. Just so much pressure can be put on by Masashi? shoving. What? It's not that big a deal if you get called and, and even lose. It's like your, your edge is still so huge. see I'm gauging a little bit of inexperience from some of these spots I mean having 10 big blinds here Coleman deciding to you know take a stab on a king high board a lot of king highs would have been shoved pre-flop good queen highs would have been shoved or checked back here on the flop so very difficult to rep what he's pretending to have Even though I think I would have preferred a shove pre-fall from Betcha Head, playing it as a check, clearly um, the thing is that's working out here. I mean, Coleman finding two barrels. It's, it's been pretty amazing, actually, to watch Coleman play this these 10 big blind stacks because he really tries to get every single chip working. And this is a, a large bet representing, you know, 30% of his stack. And it's going to work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. You guys can cheer for goals if he doesn't win versus me. If he doesn't win versus me. It's a bit of a slow if start he here. If he doesn't win a pot versus me. Oh, okay. If he wins a pot versus Best me. And in, his, in his defense, Silence. you know, not a lot of people have experience with 100 that's plus right. big ones when you both your opponents I have. I agree with those rules. 14, 15, you have to have a lot of MTT experience to, to be in a situation like that. Yeah. It's a very studied spot. But uh, I would like to have seen more aggression from him. And um, how much John? Sorry, I forgot. Hmm? Sorry, I forgot. How much you got? Uh, just checking live updates from the 5K, Griffin. The event we're going to be streaming tomorrow. 22 well, players remaining right now. John Andres with the chip lead. Nadia Magnus well, well. is a top five three, stack. Five, three, six. What a boss. Nine. And Arden Cho sits inside the top yeah. 20. Oh, three, Matt six, Salzberg's five, in the three, top 15 there. I chatted with him this morning. Careful. He said some very nice things about the stream, by the way. 
started the day with 57 big blinds and it seems to be doing quite well. So the plan is to return with a single table from the high roller, playing down to the FT today. Nine. You have three six. So nothing's really changed since we went three handed. Sammy Beshahead with close to a hundred big blinds. Borenstein and Coleman, fifteen big blinds each. High roller, by the way, currently on dinner break, so don't expect any further updates soon. I referenced a short while ago, Griffin, that now we're three-handed, the levels go to 40 minutes. I mean, no to be had here. we might not need any more levels after this one. It's a good hand. Kind of feels I'm after... I'm trying to keep my chips as easily identifiable as possible so that we don't keep asking each other at all available opportunities. Appreciate it. An extended a, period of time. Stand. Yeah. Well, we played five-handed, and now suddenly, I have. Boom. You guys can figure out what I. Have. Yeah, it's hard for me on sitting one and nine, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to put it. I'm pretty okay at counting. The blind is, is that like an important thing? You need to be a dealer. Of course. <laughs> we'll get you eventually. Here we go, Bash ahead, getting some shoves through. You didn't have to do the words all of it and come with a decision here because he is the bottom stack if he had Bornstein covered I think maybe it would be easier to fold if he had the 15 big blinds and Bornstein had the 12 but because it's the other yeah. way around he is the bottom stack gonna be ahead of hands like ace four ace three ace two ace five Pocket twos through fours. So definitely a plus EV call, but a difficult one to make. And interestingly, with the strength of his of with of Sammy's hand there, you could justify 
even inducing with Ace-9 there, and I think that would have got the money in against Coleman, but instead gets the shove, shove through and keeps them on the defensive. Ahead, just shoving on both opponents. King five. Leverage that chip lead. Look at a king. I got excited. Leverage the payout difference. So let's highlight that difference, Griffin. 120k for the next player out. 168k if you can ladder to second. So any decision that Coleman or Borenstein makes could cost them an additional 48 grand. Yeah, and that's why I really wanted Sammy to up the aggression, and he started doing that because yes. he's but also because he's been getting some pretty nice hands to do it with. But you can't be letting these short stacks win post-flop poker against you when you're folding mid-pair to their 9-high. I think um, he's going to have to to get more aggressive in some spots like that. Coleman with a pretty good shove candidate here. But we've seen from Coleman, you know, taking some unorthodox 10 to 13 big blind yeah. decisions and doing it again I'm not surprised to see the min raise as opposed to the shove even though quite frankly I think that a shove is going to be a lot better in this spot see you've now given Besha had an opportunity to call here and realize some equity a hand that would have otherwise been folded for the 10 big blind shove you need to pick up pots Well, Queen-10 flops a gut shot. King-high, still the best hand. And Coleman's C-bets have usually been on the smaller side, so if it's made small enough, I think Beshahed can continue here, drawing to the nuts, as well as backdoor clubs. But if Coleman bets 500k here, Beshahed might fold, but it is going to be that minimum bet, I think. A little more in between. And the reason you need to call this 350 in this spot is because, you know, Coleman also could be sort of block betting small with something like two eights, where your queen and ten are also alive. So you need to realize your equity. And Coleman isn't always going to bet twice or three times, you know. Could check this turn back, and then you have an opportunity to bluff the river. Yeah. Difficult, I think, to, to rep an ace, but could certainly rep a jack. Or especially if a club comes, certainly, you know, also represent a flush. Coleman finds another barrel. Very, very uh, nice work here. Recognizing that he's the one with all the aces and is going to fold out hands like queen 10, king 10, um, some jack x's. So, I mean, pff, I've, I've been a little... I guess I would say suspicious of some of the short stack play from David you. Coleman, but he's proved me wrong. He has a lot of, feels very com confident, comfortable post flop and making some really nice bets. JQ watching on YouTube says, Sammy's gonna win. Based on the chip stacks right now, I'm going to say that's not a particularly bold prediction. And it also better not be a spoiler if somehow you know anything. So, yeah, another example. Besh ahead needs to shove here. This is just going to be so, so nice against Coleman. I see that Coleman actually woke up with it here and would have called. But, I mean, you have 30% equity with this hand anyway, and you're folding out so many other hands. Yeah. going to be tough to knock these guys out if you're just All in. only shoving your ace tens and ace nines and ace jacks and then letting you know them win the big blind on blind battles where you don't have a shovelable hand thank you or at least one that you deem shovelable sammy's still playing 100 bigs coleman with 17 borenstein with 10. poker's boring poker's boring i forgive you Oh, you're well, it's, exci yeah. it's exciting right now, for sure. 
You synced it. You synced it. Significant. How much you have, John? Two oh, there's some sword on the rail there for Coleman. Someone that is seeing the excitement of poker now that he's playing for over a quarter million dollars. <laughs> Railing is not always the, the funnest thing when you don't have, have cards up coverage. But when you're on a final table, it is thrilling. Every pot so meaningful. Great spot here for Coleman with the ace nine of spades. Blind on blind against Bornstein. Bornstein just with 10 big Coleman. lines behind. That's why we see the shove. Oh. oh, and an insta-call ah. from Borenstein with a dominated hand, oh, although yeah. plenty of opportunities, Griffin, ace-9 versus ace-8. Yeah, not as many as Borenstein would like, though. Eights and nines are two pretty high cards. Back. Of course, just we can also case. get some double-paired situations. I mean, James just brings it up because he, he loves singing the song with me. We'll watch it, kid. Together. Let's watch it. Because Show I us some cards. You guys are so cute. This is my homie. I know, I know. Show us some yeah. cards. So, Borenstein and Riska behind. Uh, Jack 7-7. Seven, seven. Jack 7-7. Seven, seven. Seven. Yeah, Let's go. Give us some chop opportunities. Hey, didn't you trademark that? Is he allowed to say that? The flop is king, queen, 5. 26% chance of a chop. Yeah, a little 5 ball king, on the queen, turn. King, queen, 10-5. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. King of spades. Spade. Huh? King of spades. Did you have an eight? I don't remember what. Uh, jack four. No, jack four. Oh. oh. Wow. It's fair. You can root. Domination okay. rotation. Borenstein now a 93% favorite to double up through Coleman. Yeah, which would leave Coleman with just six big blinds. What a turn of events. Sorry, bro. Felt like a, a, a wake for Borenstein, and we were just going through the motions, but you can still get lucky. Borenstein survives, doubles up to 24 bigs. David Coleman now playing six bigs. Two, five. Two, nine. Sorry, bro. Shut up. I am. Say sorry again. Never, never All right. sorry. Fine. Even if you feel so. But still, the so. ridiculously it dominant chip lead for Sammy Bashahad. Huh? No crying in baseball. We know what we signed up for. No. Not the moment. Sorry. Line 125, 250. Action on Coleman on the button. Oh, yeah, that'll do. Queen Jack, six bigs. Jobs are good. Now, if he finds a min raise with this hand, now then I'll be very confused <laughs> at this stack depth. 1.05. Raised to 1.5. Virtual all in from Coleman. Team with King Ten in the small folds it. Did you see anything when I, I, I did that? I thought you folded. No, I didn't see anything. No, because my hand is very bad. I was going to fold out of. Turn. I might not have folded if I saw you do that. <laughs> okay, good. Good to know. No. Joe. Yeah. King Ten offsuit. Sorry. Queen Jack. King Ten off. Yeah, quite a tight fold there for six big blinds. Being honest. Well, he has 1.5, but he has five back. Four bigs, I call. King 10 is going to be dominating no. so many of the king highs that will show the button around six bigs. I think the clock's wrong. Can you? The clock is wrong. The clock is not wrong. Blind to change because we're now playing 40 minute levels. Can we get the floor before you deal? Yeah, don't deal. Yeah. Maybe unaware that the levels. Yeah, there's no way it's been, yeah. Unless they shorten the levels three-handed. Well done, David Coleman. Um, you're not going to like it, the though, because changed. if the blinds it's are going up, you're going to have fewer than six big blinds. You're playing 250 big blinds. Are we playing 40-minute levels? 
From three handed, we're going to 40 minute levels? Oh, okay. Did not realize that. Did not realize that either. I, I didn't, I didn't Thank know. Yeah, that would have been nice to know. Yeah, that would have been nice to know. Yeah, it definitely said 75 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Like the clock said 75. Okay. So with yeah, the blinds so. at 150,000, 300,000, Coleman playing five John, how bigs. Yeah, it seems to be a little bit of a miscommunication. Six, Maybe one. a clock mm -hmm. that was okay. not reading Six, the correct one. time. I appreciate it's something that we employ on the EPT and all the players on the European Poker Tour know. Shouldn't expect these guys to know. Probably yeah, should have been communicated we have made to them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good luck, David. Oh, wow, look at this. A Five. snap call. Live. Live. Sammy waking up with ace, queen, and the small blind shoves on One David point. Coleman, who calls it off with king six. seven and strawberries. Yeah, especially with blinds going up. Just six big blinds. King seven suited is going to be a snap. 1.875. Pretty fair fight as far as being behind is concerned, uh, ace high to king high. I think I win this one. You think I win this one? I, I actually asked you what you wanted. I, I do think you win this one. What you have? I, I don't remember. Very bad cards. Nothing that interfered with you. I don't know why he's lying. He had pocket sevens. Well, 9-4 deuce with two clubs. Not looking good for David Coleman. 12% equity now. <coughs> Non-club kings and sevens working for him. Four of hearts, pairs the board. Same outs required for Coleman. Four cards, Four cards in the deck that can save him. River card is an eight. Ace queen holds. And we say goodbye to David Coleman, third place finisher for $120,130 as we go heads up in the NAPT Las Vegas main event. David Coleman should be very proud of his performance today in this tournament Let's go. on this final table. Really played well, really interesting play style, finding little edges. So comfortable post flop. Some really savvy bluffs and some short stack play. But ran out of lives there at the end. Unlucky with the ace nine suited against the ace eight of Jonathan Bornstein. And Bornstein on borrowed time here. Well, Borenstein has laddered. That's the key thing to say. Mm -hmm. Borenstein's now locked up 168 grand. But yes, there is a 100k difference between second and first. It's a 100k heads up battle. And I doubt there's going to be any deal discussions, Griffin, when you consider that Sammy Besh has, has such a chip advantage right now. How many? How much do you have? Like 26? So Chapo, two. I have no idea. Yeah. Roughly 90 big blinds for Sammy. Fewer than 20 for Jonathan. Heads up. For all the marbles. Thank you so much. And then when we come back, I'm just going to stand over there and the camera. So, so Sammy, okay. part-time poker dealer, but also an accomplished poker player, will break $1 million in live earnings with his result here in the NAPT, regardless of where he finishes. Right now, he's the firm favorite to win this. John Borenstein already has 2.3 million in cashes, having been playing on the live circuit for more than a decade. That was a zero like eight. Career high score like you like all, all came from a 5K in Atlantic City yeah, and 368 grand. <laughs> also made the final table of the Colossus at the World Series of Poker. Outlasted oh, more than 21,000 okay. entrants in that one, Griffin. Okay. I'm going to stand just over there, and when I cue you guys, you can shake hands. Okay. Yeah, if you can navigate a 21,000 player field. <laughs> Look at that smile. Just happy to be here. So we are going to verify the chip counts and color up some of the lower denomination chips before we get the heads up battle started. Did you tell you about the, the handshake cue that we're going to do again? We have to shake hands. Yeah. We have to fake it? Yeah. That's 
Yep, you have What's to fake to being friends. What if I'm more of a hugger? How was the button last hey guys, you want to hug? We'll allow it. So this is what we think the chip counts are. 26.9 versus 5.9. Huge advantage for Sammy right now. A reminder that we still have 35 minutes to play at the 150k, 300k blind level. 168 okay. grand for the runner-up, 268 grand for the winner, more than a quarter of a million dollars. Plus, that trophy you see, to the side of the graphic there, the first <laughs> NAPT main event trophy in more than a decade. We talked earlier on about the history of the North American Poker Tour and previous NAPT champions. The tour officially started in 2010 at the PCA, where Harrison Gimble won the main event. There was an event in Vegas in February of that year, won by Tom Marchese. Vanessa Selps, the winner at Mohegan Sun. Joe Tehan, the winner in LA. Only two NAPT events in 2011 before the tour went on hiatus. Galen Hall winning the PCA and Vanessa doing the repeat, going back to back and winning the Mohegan Sun Great. main event for the second year in again. a row. <laughs> Make sure you do. So one of these two guys is going to add their name to that list. Las Vegas 2023 main event will be either Sammy Beshahed or Jonathan Borenstein. So a place in poker history is in the running. As well as adding to that list, there is also a chance that we can invite the winner onto the Poker in the Ears podcast. If you're not aware, Joe and I do host the official Poker Stars podcast. There are new episodes most weeks. Interviews with winners, behind the scenes stories, <laughs> on air contests, AKA Superfan versus Stapes. Available for you to subscribe to and download from all major huh? podcast apps, including I I Apple, I Google, one, Spotify. I was getting the better of you, but I was going to do it. <laughs> Downcast, never heard of it, but apparently that's what our producer uses to listen to the show. <laughs> so we'll be recording a new podcast next week, and then we'll be back from Vegas post-Formula One. New episodes most Thursdays or Fridays. And of course, before the year is done, before we close out 2023, there is another live stream, and that will be from EPT Prague, the final stop of EPT 2023. So the festival runs December 6th through 17th. We're going to be streaming from the 12th to the 17th. We're going to have six days of live coverage, streaming the final day of the Mystery Bounty and the last five days of the main event. If you're thinking of going to Prague, Just check out details on the PokerStars live app. If you're thinking of watching Prague, we'll be live on the PokerStars Twitch and YouTube channels That's from one of the three December 12th. Yeah, man. Easy. See out the season in Prague. A great time to be in Prague. Always. Ooh. Christmas markets. The snow. Stand by. I think we're almost ready. Apparently, we're oh, almost yeah. ready to start playing heads up. Um, this has the prospect, this has the potential, yeah. rather, Griffin, of being a relatively short heads up battle, considering the chip disparity. Yes and no. If Bornstein is able to find the first big all in confrontation go his way, you know, we could be here for a while. Get him up to nearly 40 big blinds, and then, you know, it'll be, it'll be a battle. So that is going to be the really the turning point whether it ends the tournament or goes in Jonathan's way. All right. Okay, let's do this. The handshake, the hug, the heads-up battle begins. <laughs> Sammy Beshead versus Jonathan Borenstein. 90 bigs versus 17 bigs. Oh, that was sweet. You see how he said, good luck. I don't mean it. He said, I don't mean it either. Oh, you're just so authentic. Floor. Floor. Good question, please. Does the ante go down heads up? The ante does not go down heads up. Does the ante go down heads up? No. It's friendly. 
I just find it hilarious because obviously these are just standard protocols that everyone knows on the APT, and now everyone on the NAPT has to adjust to it. You know what pisses me off? It's these dumb Americans. <laughs> now, of course, first event here in 10 years, going to be a, a lot of changed. questions. A yeah. lot's changed. A lot has changed, yeah. And a little shot of the trophy, maybe? Thank you. I'm not going to ask because I don't want to know. What? What just happened to my direct left? Oh, this. First hand, a heads up. Sammy has called on the button. And John is going to check his option in the big blind. Go to the flop. Five, four, three. So open-ended straight draw for Sammy. Yeah, big old advantage for Bashad to get first blood here. Sammy wins the first hand of heads up. Which happens to be hand at 156 of the final table, so let's keep track. That sounds like a lot of work. Can you do it? I was written down 156, so then I know whatever hand number we're on, I can just subtract, and then we know how many hands of heads up we've had. Oh my god. Here's the trophy. It's been waiting in a storage locker for 10 years, like a genie's lamp. I actually think the NAPT trophy had a different design back in 2011. I mean, we've been through many iterations of main event trophies since then. I like my story better. <laughs> I mean, the fact that it has 2023 engraved on it, Griffin, I don't think they predicted back in 2011 that the next event would be 12 years from then. You can add inscriptions, right? Bajahad putting on the pressure. Borenstein calls and he raises to one million. Yeah, and this is not the hand you're looking for. Borenstein, he knows it. Right to the muck. Ogre on YouTube says, I still have hope for Jonathan. Well, that's what you were saying, Griffin. If he finds a good double-up spot, has 30 big blinds, then maybe we've got more of a battle on our hands. Well, here we have Sammy completing. Calls with 9-7 offsuit. Jonathan with 6-5 offsuit. And I like Jonathan's instinct here, maybe considering uh, finding a little raise here. But it's so difficult to do when you're on 15 big blinds. You don't want to be wrong this time and put in four bigs and then be limp shoved on and suddenly you're only with 10 or 11. But Bishonhead has been really limping pretty liberally. Sammy pairing his seven on the turn. Borenstein with the straight draw. The old gutter ball, which doesn't get there on the river. Pair of sevens is good. Borenstein betting 500,000. Yeah, this is, uh, I think this is a mistake from Borenstein here. Only really repping a jack. Um, Besha had having checked out of the river does have showdown value. You know that turn check designed to call on rivers once he's hit that seven. So maybe sort of a bit of an entitlement to the pot, feeling like okay, I flopped this gut shot. He's shown no aggression, no aggression. Maybe I can get 
away with one, but that's going to drop Bornstein now down to 12 big blinds. Bornstein is getting into closer into shove or fold territory, but with this particular hand, I would, you know, Alem. like to see Call. a limp. But instead, did shove and got quickly called by the ace. -10. Wow, Borenstein shoves from the button with the 10 9. Beshahed wakes up with ace 10 in the big blind. We're not. Borenstein doesn't even have live cards, yet. Griffin. No, but nines have been hitting today. A domination situation on the fourth hand of heads up. And it could be the last hand of heads up if ace 10 holds. Sammy Beshahed, who has dominated short handed play, is on the verge of winning a North American Poker Tour title. And Sammy thinking over there, oh, I deal so much faster than this guy. Can we just do this? <laughs> Well, it's a king-10 trade flop. That doesn't change anything. The nine is the card that Borenstein needs. There are three of them in the deck. Sammy on the verge of sealing the deal. Ace yeah. on the turn, and it yeah. is over. Borenstein drawing dead. We have our winner. We have our first NAPT Woo! champion. In 12 years, Sammy Beshahed has taken down the Las Vegas main event. He'll lift that trophy and he'll collect $268,000. And bring out his newborn baby. <laughs> what a performance. So cool, calm and collected. I'm not sure it's hit him yet. Very emotional. Uh, wow, yeah, that feeling is something. It is. It is something to win a big event like this. Now it's hit him. Not my phone, please. Yeah, you need to tell everyone. Okay, Meanwhile, congratulations to John Borenstein for laddering up to second place and cashing for 168 grand. Yeah, what a brilliant result for Borenstein. Played a great final table, but it was a heck of a hill to climb at the end there against. Sammy Mountain. And we what a moment. Did we fucking did it. I just won an NAPT. No one's been able to say that for more than a decade. Man, Beautiful moment. I don't know. I'm Let's recap to how today went down. Right. The final table of this Vegas main event. Huge cooler on the first hand of the day, which saw Sandy Palampati eliminated. Nick Shulman got into a race against Sammy Beshahed. Did that king on the flop seal his fate? Nick Shulman, out in sixth. We played five-handed for forever before Sergio Edo fell to Jonathan Borenstein, taking home 71K for his fifth place finish. And then we had that huge clash of the two biggest stacks. The set of nines against the pocket queens and the elimination of Ping Lu. David Coleman got it in with King Seven. Lost against Ace Queen. And then Sammy made short work of Jonathan giving us our new NAPT champion. And he is down on the floor with Joe Stapleton. Sammy, first of all, European winner on the first NAPT back in a long time. Whatever, we're just going to skip over that. You came into today as the chip leader, but it wasn't exactly an easy ride. What were you feeling throughout the course of the day today through those ups and downs? Uh, I was kind of uh, 
in a weird spot most of the time. I, don't, I didn't know where I have to be more aggressive or less aggressive. So most of the time I just let it go and waited for, for good hands because I, I know throughout this tournament, like I faced like some incredible players and my, the final table was an example of it. Like, and I was the least experienced the second least experience in this final table. So, yeah, I had to go th manage this carefully, take my time, and that works, works out pretty well. And I had very, um, I won the very important spot, like the pair of nine against the pair of queens, uh, which was like the most important spot of the tournament, yeah. Pretty scary stuff for sure. Yeah. We know that you just said you don't think you're very experienced as a poker player. We know you're quite experienced. No, compared to them. Compared to them, but yeah. you're quite experienced as a poker dealer. Which one of them is harder work? 100% uh, player. 100% <laughs> player. A dealer, you, 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 you just work and you, know, you, have no, you face no variance. Poker tournaments is brutal. Like, it's been a ride since March. I haven't won pretty much. I mean, I won a, a little tournament in between, but I haven't won much. Lately, it's been like... It's, it's stressful. It's stressful when you go some through some downswings like I did, but I'm back. I'm well, hopefully it's some consolation. I mean, you just won, first of all. Second of all, you've got a lot of fans out there, people that are fans of your dealing. Is there anything you want to say to them? Oh, I want to. I didn't, I didn't know I had like a fan base. I didn't look at the chat, but like. A, I want to say thank you for the support. I received millions of messages. My, I can't even read them all. Like it's just crazy what's going on right now. First win in Vegas. Like I won a couple of tournaments here and there, but first, very first win in Vegas. So that feels that feels good too. I like to, I, I like that too. Yeah. And finally, I know that you have a child on the way. This is going to be some kind of story for them, huh? Yeah, that's for him. I, I'm doing all that for him. Like. He's coming like anytime soon, within like a few weeks, and the, everything I, I do right now is gonna be for him, and it's it's good. It's the baby run good. It worked out. Excellent. Hey, let's get a big round of applause for the NAPT Las Vegas 2023 champion. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. I'll stay right here. Congratulations to Sammy. Here's how the main event ended. But remember, guys, we're not done with NAPT Las Vegas because we have got the 5K High Roller final table tomorrow. That stream tomorrow, but right now it's all about these guys who made the FT of this $1,650 buy-in event. And we do have a champion in Sammy Beshahed. 268K plus the trophy. And it's time to present that trophy as we go back to the tournament floor. Sammy, first of all. Champion here on the NAPT, and boy, have we missed it. Here to help me present the trophy is Charlie Cerisi, tournament director, Cedric Below, associate director, live events, operations, poker stars, and Leon Wheeler, director of poker operations for Resorts World. Before we hand over the trophy, Cedric would just like to say a few words. Thank you, Joe, and good evening, everyone. Just a few words, just one minute I want to take. 12 years, Joe said that NAPT hasn't run in Las Vegas in the US. It's an absolute pleasure to be back in Las Vegas. In Resorts World, an amazing venue. Thank you, Leon. A big thank you to Charlie, to all the staff involved. It was an amazing main event. We still have the 5K final table tomorrow. So yeah, amazing to be back in the US for Poker Stars. We have a lot of events to come. We have also events running in Europe currently. So yeah, amazing actions, amazing to be back in the US and a big thank you to everyone. Thank you, Cedric. <laughs> and now there's just one thing left to do, outlasting a field of almost 1,100 and walking away with a massive first prize of over a quarter million dollars. Please put your hands together for your NAPT Vegas main event champion, Sammy Beshahed. The first player to lift an NAPT main event trophy since Vanessa Selps to Mohegan Sun in 2011. The North American Poker Tour is back in style. Updates and stories from the tour at the PokerStars blog, including updates from that high roller that we will be streaming tomorrow. So make sure you join us at 1 p.m. Pacific for the FT of that 5K event, closing out our series of streams 
from here in Las Vegas. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching today. For Joe Stapleton, Griffin Benja, Phil Helmuth, and me, James Hartigan. For now it is, good night from Las Vegas. Falling short, you talk the talk of you. Walk the walk.